So guys how are you this best story ever what if Naruto was banished from Sasuke in high school DXD movie? Phew finally all done moving in, Naruto looked at his room new room proudly as he wiped a bit of sweat from his forehead, taking a seat on his bed he thought all about the events that transpired before he arrived in this new world as he looked over a strange device that he picked up off of his new table. Flashback, he had been banished after all of his hard work had been for nothing, saving the village from Gara. Finding Tsunade to become the next Hokage then it all got thrown for a loop when Sasuke decided to abandon the village in exchange for the power that Orochimaru offered just so he could beat his elder brother that killed his entire clan except him. Sakura had begged him to bring Sasuke back, and like an idiot he did just that and brought Sasuke back, he carried Sasuke into the village where he was assaulted by Sakura who hurt him all because Sasuke had a few bruises whereas he had taken a Chidori through the chest. Being a man he didn't retaliate, and just walked away as Sakura and the others threw words of insult his way. As he was on his way back to his apartment Anbu suddenly appeared in front of him and whisked him away to the council room without even so much as a word as to why he there. Once in the council room they had a huge argument about why he should be killed but it mostly just amounted to it hurting their precious Uchiha and him being some kind of devil spawn that would rip out their jugulars when they were asleep. In the end he was given a banishment order that was also signed by the fire daimyo due to him being too dangerous and hazardous to the village's overall welfare, he was given until later tonight to get whatever he wanted and to get out of the village and never return unless they called for him like a dog. As he went back to his home, news must have traveled fast as shops all over the village were closed and villagers were out celebrating his banishment. Stepping into his house he grabbed some old bandages and wrapped the few wounds that haven't healed yet and lifting a hidden floorboard in the room he took out some kind of strange device. The device itself was some sort of unknown contraption that had a strange gem in the center of it but for the most part it was mostly white he found it in his apartment one day. It came with a small note from a mysterious person, this was a gift from your mother I am sorry for not giving it to you earlier but this device also came with a letter I hope that you can understand what it means and once again I am sorry for not giving it to you sooner, and a letter was from his mother, this is what it said. Dear Naruto, you may not know me but I am your mother Kashina Uzumaki, there are so many things that I wish I could say to you my child but if you are reading this letter then it means the worst and that I have passed away due to some unknown circumstance. I hope that you will never have to read this letter but this is just in case, I have to tell you about our clan in case no one ever does, I and to a certain extent you were from the Uzumaki clan this clan was known for its sealing jutsus which made us feared during the second shinobi world war but due to other powers that feared our power we were all wiped out except for me because I was in Konoha at that time and the knowledge of our sealing arts were also lost. The device that is included with this note is a device that was said to have belonged to a human who could transform into a being of light with powers that any military in our world would have given their entire family trees to own it was called an evil thruster. This device was passed down from my father's father to him so I leave it in your care and I hope that you will use it to protect the innocent and those close to you, and if you cannot then get stronger for those that you want to protect so long as you have the courage to say that it is the right thing to do then know that you will always have my support. And last but not least I hope that you can forgive me and your father for not being there for you I know that you must hate us for not being there but know that your father and I do love you no matter the choices that you make in life. Love, Kashina Uzumaki, Naruto had tears in his eyes as he read the letter. After being told so many times that he was not loved, abandoned for being a monster or that his parents were just a bunch of deadbeats that never wanted a child, he was loved by his mother. He didn't care if she was some deadbeat the letter proves that she loved him and would always be watching over him it's just that she wasn't here watching him, no she was watching over him in heaven and she loved him but hated herself for not being here for him. Picking up the evil thruster, he always felt warm whenever he held it in his hands but now was not the time to be thinking about it. Grabbing a backpack he stuffed whatever he need be it food, Clothes or tools he made sure that he took his mother's memento as he left the village not caring about the people that laughed or sneered at him as he walked out. I am not being banished by the village, I am leaving the village to find my goals in life outside this is my choice in life and I will walk it all the way to the very end. After being banished he went around the elemental nations doing a little bit of mercenary work or just a few odd jobs here and there. While he working at a bread shop he heard a rumor that there was a cave that was said to be a sort of tunnel to a place where shinobis could not use chakra, and that for hundreds of years people who wanted to live peacefully used it to escape the nightmare that they were in. 
At this time Naruto had officially given up on any mercenary work due to all the killings that he had seen and caused, so he quit his job and took the tunnel. Walking through the tunnel he could feel himself grow weaker with each step that he took when he finally made it to the other side he saw that it was sunny with trees but his vision was beginning to blur, stumbling into an area with people he suddenly felt faint and fell to the ground unconscious as yelling could be faintly heard. When he woke up he found himself in a hospital of sorts, where there were very nice people who asked him a few questions, it was mostly his name, place of birth and so on so forth when all the administrative stuff was done. He was given a chance to go to the restroom it was here that he saw that he had apparently grown somewhat shorter or to be exact he had become younger. As he was flipping out inside of the restroom a knock was heard on the bathroom door, excuse me but are you alright? Naruto answered yes as he calmed himself, and when he came out he saw a nice lady sitting by his bed, she introduced herself as Yumal, she was from an orphanage nearby and they were taking Naruto there to stay since according to them he didn't have any parents or living relatives. But a few days before he left the hospital, the hospital had apparently sent his information over to the government who also didn't have any information on Naruto so they made an identity for him, he was now officially known as Naruto Uzumaki in this world. While staying at the orphanage he found that it was much better than when he used to live at the one in Konoha, the kids there were generally helpful and nice there were a few troublemakers that emerged once in a while but the staff would always reprimand them whenever they did something wrong. While staying at the orphanage Naruto made many friends and they had many adventures together. Until the day came for adoption, a very nice couple saw Naruto and decided to adopt him. For Naruto it was a teary separation as he made many friends in the orphanage and he didn't want to leave them so he promised them that he would visit whenever he had the time. Naruto's adoptive parents, Jin and Sophia Kazama showed him their home and it took them a while to get close to Naruto but he eventually started calling them Ka-san and Tu-san finally, when he did that his parents were so happy that they all went out to eat that day. They lived in that small town for a while before Naruto's dad got a promotion and they had to move into the bigger cities for him to be closer to the main headquarter. Naruto cried a little that day but his mother and father promised that they could come and visit during the holidays. End Flashback so now it brings us here to Naruto in his new room, and honestly if he could make it a point he was much happier here than he ever was in the elemental nations, Naruto it's dinner time. Come on down if you're not done moving your stuff then you can continue later on. Naruto looked up and saw the time, oh wow it's been that long already huh? Alright it'll be down soon. Naruto called back as he placed the evil thruster by his bedside where there was a photo of his friends back in the old town where they used to live in and went downstairs for dinner. Time skip. Months have passed since the Kazama family moved into their new home. For Naruto he went to a nearby junior high school for a while to finish up his final year of junior high and as he went through his final year he also had a part-time job at a bread shop, cafe which was visited by girls from an all-girls school called Kuo Academy. Now he wasn't a pervert, okay he was a slight pervert with a stash hidden somewhere in his room like most teenage boys he knew in school but at least he didn't take the job just cause of the girls. The shop called oddly enough the cafe paid really well for bakers and it just so happens that Naruto used to work as a baker's apprentice back in the elemental nations when he was in the odd jobs phase of his life so he managed to pick up some skills from that baker and it helped him here. Occasionally he would also work up front as a server or cashier when the baking was done. While working up front he always noticed that a black haired girl with a big bust was always around whenever he was around. According to the girls that visited the cafe she was Akino Himahima the second most beautiful girl at the school in Naruto had to admit she certainly did stand out with her long black hair that almost reached the ground and big bust but he was in his final year of junior high while she was in her second year of high school and they had never even exchanged a word of dialogue so maybe it was just a coincidence that she was here whenever he worked up front. Yeah that had to be it, thought Naruto as he delivered coffee and buns to Akino's table before getting behind the register. As Naruto was clocking out for the end of his shift, he saw Akino waiting on the outside of the cafe, um I was wondering if you were the one who made the buns. Naruto saw that Akino was holding her skirt in a way that made his heart stop while also holding a bag of buns. Well yeah I guess I did, Naruto replied as he tried to keep his blush and thoughts under control. They are really good and they always keep me coming back for more. Naruto thanked her for the compliment and went back home while Akino returned to the academy. With Akino, President I am back, 
Akino chirped as she closed the door to the club room to see a girl with a slightly smaller bust playing chess all by herself. Ah Akino you're back so did you bring back more of those buns from that cafe? Akino nodded and placed the bag in front of the red-haired girl. And what about the boy does he still have that power that you talked about? Yes president, this power that he has is truly a mystery it is not of devil, fallen angel or even angel origin, it is truly a mystery, are you planning to recruit him president? The red-haired girl shrugged her shoulders as she picked up a bun, I am not sure yet but we should keep a watch on him nonetheless a power like that could be useful to us, the red-haired girl looked over to Akino who had a dazed look in her eyes, and if her look says anything then this boy is also quite the looker, she took a bite of the bun, and a great baker as well. Time skip. It had been a few months since Naruto graduated from his junior high with some pretty good marks. With his grades he was able to enter quite a few good high schools but he heard that Kuo Academy which had previously been an all-girls school just decided to turn into a co-ed school all of a sudden deciding to send an application and he was easily accepted into the academy with the grades that he had. This was also where his parents started acting fairly weird especially his dad he was always looking for time to have the talk with him but luckily for him he always managed to weasel his way out of those it still didn't stop the checks for his stash from his mother, thankfully his hiding skills always came out on top of things and she was still clueless as to where he hid his stuff, he loved his adoptive parents but he needed his own personal space sometimes. Anyway back to Naruto he was a first year student at Kuo Academy dressed in the standard academy attire. A black undershirt and an average pair of shoes, currently he was friends with one Shinji and Kaiba or just Kai for short since no one really called him Kaiba and Kai didn't seem to care about it much so everything was alright, Naruto still worked at the cafe and every once in a while he would have a little chat with Akino whenever she came by to have something to eat and on his days off he, Shinji and Kai went down to one of the arcades in the city, which was where they were now, so Naruto you planning to pick up the new Fallout next week? Shinji asked as he performed a combo that sent Naruto's character flying backwards, of course I'd never miss out on a chance to play one, Naruto replied as he punched the sky signifying his win. What about you Kai? Naruto looked over to Kai who had a headset around his neck, meh RPGs aren't my thing, Naruto laughed as Shinji pulled out a picture of an anime girl and did a poor imitation of her voice, of course not Kai-kun would never betray a snake Kai-kun. Kai quickly tore the picture out of Shinji's hand and cuddled it, idiot. Don't worry Mira-chan that brute won't harm you anymore. Sai Kai really does love his visual novels doesn't he? Naruto asked as he checked his watch and jumped out of his seat, oh man it's already this late. I got to go, homework and all that you know right, Kai and Shinji nodded as Naruto picked up his bag and waved goodbye to them since they wanted to play a couple more games before heading home. With Naruto. As he walked home he opened his wallet to check how much he had, oh man going to the arcade so many times a week really does clean someone out, I probably should cut back on going there so many times a week but then again hanging out with Kai and Shinji are definitely worth it, Naruto laughed at all the fun times that they had together when suddenly he heard a name call out to him, wait, wait please, turning around Naruto saw a young girl that was probably around his age, she was wearing a school uniform that consisted of a dark red jacket with the letter P embroidered in gold, a white undershirt, a red bow and a green skirt with a thin white strip around the lower end of it, wow she certainly is cute, thought Naruto as a blush came across his face. Um are you Naruto Uzumaki of Kuo Academy? Naruto dumbly nodded as she heaved a sigh of relief, can I help you with something? The girl began to finger her skirt before finally squeaking out, are you seeing anyone at the moment Uzumaki-kun? Naruto shook his head which made the girl heave another sigh of relief. That's a relief. I I was wondering if you would go out with me. She asked as a blush came across her face Naruto had to pinch himself for a moment to make sure that he wasn't in a dream and when it hurt he himself blushed. I've always seen you working at the cafe but I've never had the courage to talk to you until now so will you be my boyfriend. Naruto was taken aback by what she said and was stunned. He unconsciously scratched his whisker marks before he began to babble, W well um I don't know what to say but um I think that we should get to know each other before going any further, would that be alright with you? Naruto prayed that his response didn't send the girl running away in tears but she smiled and nodded. So Naruto decided to take a detour from his way home and walk the girl home, as they walked to her home Naruto was told the girl's name, 
Yuma Amano which he thought to be a great name and they exchanged simple small talk which ranged from dislikes to hobbies and so on so forth, he even got permission from her to call her Yuma-chan provided she could call him Naruto-kun. When he finally reached home and told his parents what happened, his father once again tried to have the talk with him over dinner but he quickly finished it, rushed upstairs to the bathroom had a shower and rushed to his room where he spent a few hours doing homework and sending messages to Yuma before turning in for bed. The next day he woke up and met Yuma on the way to school there he introduced her to Kai and Shinji both of their reactions were priceless but they gave Naruto and Yuma their blessings nonetheless. As Naruto waved goodbye to Yuma he felt a pair of eyes watching him turning to one of the clubhouses he thought for a second that he could have sworn that he saw a hint of red, maybe Shinji or Kai know something, Naruto thought as he went to class. Hey Shinji, Kai do you guys know of any student in the academy that have red hair or to be more specific bright red hair? Shinji and Kai put their hands on their chins as they thought about it, Hum well I have heard that one of our senpais in the third year has red hair and a great body but nothing more, Shinji replied as he took out his notebook. You're really asking the wrong people Naruto if it's information on girls you're looking for then you should go find either Issei, Matsuda or Motohama senpai, rumors from girls around the school say that they're the biggest perverts the world has ever seen. If you're looking for information on girls then they're the ones that you should be talking to. Naruto raised an eyebrow at what Kai just said, you were eavesdropping on girls. Kai shrugged his shoulders, well technically I was playing on my phone when the girls that were talking about it walked by. Naruto nodded understandingly as the teacher walked in and their class began. During lunch, Naruto wandered around the school looking for the three boys that Kai mentioned. Now if I was the biggest pervert the world has ever seen where would I be hiding? Suddenly yells of screams came from the direction of the girls kendo club room. Should have guessed, Naruto headed in the direction of the scream to find his senpai lying on the ground. Um senpai are you alright? Naruto asked as he helped his senpai up. Uh yeah I am alright thanks for helping me. I am Issei Hayadu. Issei turned to Naruto. Sorry but who are you? Oh I am Naruto Uzumaki from the first year and I was hoping to ask you something. Issei gave him the thumbs up. Sure but let me find my friends first, he replied as he began to nurse his bruises. Few minutes later, Issei, Matsudo, Motohama and Naruto were crouched outside of the occult research club's clubhouse, so you guys decided to bail on me huh? If it wasn't for Naruto here I probably would have taken longer to find you guys, now let's listen to our junior's question, Issei reached over and patted Naruto on the shoulder. Well I was just wondering if there was anyone at the academy that had bright red, Hair Naruto looked up the sight of the same red hair catching his eyes. Matsudo, Issei and Motohama looked in the direction that Naruto was looking and a gleam came across Motohama's glasses as he pushed them up. Well it seems like our junior has found the girl he's been looking for. Rias Gramori minus 99 centimeters 58 centimeters 90 centimeters. She's the occult research club orc for short since I don't like typing it all the time. And word has it that she was from northern Europe. As soon as Motohama finished some of her basic information Rias turned away from the window and proceeded into the clubhouse. So does that answer your question Naruto? Naruto nodded and stood up brushed his pants leg but before he left he heard Issei call out to him. Hey Naruto you're an alright kid if you've got time on your hands then you can spend it with us alright. It'll be sure to keep that in mind senpai. Naruto replied as he went back to the main school building for a quick bite before the bell rang and they had to get to class. After school, Naruto said goodbye to both Shinji and Kai as he headed off towards the cafe there he found Yuma seated down at one of the tables, she waved him over, over here Naruto-kun. Naruto went over and took a quick seat, sorry Yuma-chan but I have work today so I can't stay long. Don't worry Naruto-kun I can wait, I brought my homework, Naruto nodded understandingly as he left to get to the kitchen to begin his shift. After preparing more buns he came outside to do other duties like the register or grabbing buns for the people who wanted them to go and just like always Akino arrived and ordered some buns to go but this time she brought a girl that Naruto recognized as Kaneko another first year student. Hello Akino san your buns. Naruto handed over the bag of buns as Akino handed over the same amount of money she always gave with a smile, thank you Naruto-kun. But before they left Kaneko bowed to him. Thank you for making such good buns, she replied in a monotonous voice before leaving with Akino. After Naruto's shift was over, he was taken to the back by his boss and given his paycheck with a little bit extra, for you and your girlfriend, 
Naruto blushed and tried to deny it but his boss wasn't having any of it and teased him about it. As Naruto and Yuma were walking back, Naruto decided to take the first move and invited her over for dinner. Once inside the house he introduced Yuma to his parents who began to ask quite a few questions about her and what they did but at least nothing embarrassing about him was spoken. So after dinner Naruto walked Yuma home and at her doorstep she gave Naruto a kiss on his cheeks making both of them blush. Time skip. Weeks had gone by since Naruto met Yuma, and today was the day that they were going to officially have their first date as a couple, so Naruto was dressed in a black jacket with a grey undershirt, blue jeans and an average pair of sneakers, while waiting for Yuma a lady with brown hair, came by and gave him some sort of flyer that had a weird drawing on it and at the very top of the flyer was the words, your wish will be granted. Well I wish that I had this back in the elemental nations but now that I am here I don't need it cause most of my wishes have been granted. Naruto moved over to the trash can to throw it away but thought, nah maybe Shinji or Kai could use it, as a joke item, and he proceeded to put it into his pocket as Yuma called out to him so that they could begin their date, s sorry I am late Naruto-kun, Naruto simply waved it off don't worry Yuma-chan you're not late I am just early, both of them got a little chuckle out of that as they went on their way. Insert Saweyaka na, Yasuto Kodezu from the high school DXD Ost here. Walking through the streets Yuma spotted a t-shirt store and dragged Naruto there to try out a few of the shirts. Looking around Yuma grabbed one that had a flame design at the bottom of it and they were rising towards him. Naruto began to wave himself like he was hot to go along with it. The next shirt she pulled up had a five bullet holes where the heart should be Naruto grabbed his heart in pain when she pulled that one out both of them laughed at Naruto's performance which was alright after trying a few more shirts they left men's department since nothing caught his attention. They made their way towards the women's department where Naruto spotted some simple jewelry and called her over to check it out. They left that store a while later a simple locket that held a picture that both of them took a while back in a photo booth down by the arcade. They made their way towards the cafe which was full of young lovers, the boss spotted Naruto step in with Yuma, he led both of them to a special table near the front of the shop, giving them a menu he left them alone for a moment before returning a moment later, so are you ready to order? Both of them placed their order and a few minutes later their orders came out, Naruto had an autumn breeze which was basically a really well done orange smoothie while Yuma had a ten fruit parfait, she loved the taste of it and gave a little bit of it to Naruto. End song. With the food out of the way both of them made their way towards the town fountain. Walking towards the fountain Naruto suddenly felt someone holding his hand turning to Yuma he saw that she was looking down with a sad look on her face. Oh look it's the fountain. Yuma ran forward and gave a little twirl. Naruto could see the sunlight reflect off of the surface of the locket. Yuma suddenly came towards Naruto and wrapped her hands around Naruto. Yuma-chan is everything alright. He asked as light sobbing could be heard from Yuma. I am sorry Naruto-kun. Naruto suddenly felt a sharp pain in his heart. He could see wings or more specifically black wings come out of Yuma's back and she was holding some sort of spear in her hands. I am sorry Naruto-kun I truly am. I I just wished that we could have met under other conditions. With a pull Yuma pulled out the spear and Naruto fell backwards into a puddle of his own blood spitting it up as well while Yuma teleported away a line of tears going down her face. S so this is how I am going to die huh? In a puddle of my own blood. This one time I wish that Kayubi could heal me I have so much that I still haven't done yet. B but why was Yuma-chan crying? Naruto raised his hand and saw that it was red just like her hair Rias senpais hair is the same shade of red. Naruto thought about her hair and how similar it was to the blood on his hand now. S saw save me someone anyone please. The flyer in Naruto's pocket flew out and a red flash appeared to the side of Naruto. You're the one who summoned me right Naruto-kun. The figure asked. WH who are you and how do you know me? Naruto choked out as he coughed up another glob of blood. That is of no purpose at the moment for now live for my sake. With that said a white light filled Naruto's vision as he felt the last bit of his life fade. The next day. Naruto opened his eyes to find himself in his bed. Oh man that was the weirdest dream I've ever had. I dreamed that Yuma-chan killed me. Hey I am sure that it doesn't mean anything. Naruto got off his bed and checked the time, oh man it's this late already I am going to be late for school. Scrambling around his room to get all of his stuff together he accidentally kicked his bedside table knocking the evil thruster into his bag. At school, what do you mean you've never heard of Yuma-chan? Asked Naruto as he held his hands open. 
Well the way you described this girl she must have been really pretty and we probably wouldn't have forgotten such a thing even if we're not into that kind of girl. Kai answered as he took a bite of his sandwich while Shinji elbowed him. Hey that's you I am into 3D girls if you don't mind. B but that's impossible. I have her phone number and text messages right here. Naruto checked through his cell phone but found nothing. It's gone. They're all gone. That's impossible. Shinji came by and placed his arm on Naruto's shoulder. Hey don't worry about it Naruto. Shinji could see the depressed look on Naruto's face. Hey don't worry about it Naruto how's about you guys come by my place for some amnesia it's been a while since we've played that and screamed together, so how's about it huh? Naruto reluctantly agreed to it when he felt someone looking down at him. Looking up Naruto saw Rias by the staircase and in the hallway behind her he could hear squeals from the girls about her. Rias walked down the stairs and as she walked by Naruto he could have sworn that a smirk came across her face. WH what does this mean? Later that day, Naruto, Kai and Shinji were at Shinji's house the blinds closed and the volume turned up as loud as they could. Hey guys could we turn the lights down? It's still kinda bright and it's ruining the mood, whispered Naruto as he rubbed his eyes. Hey are you nuts Naruto this is already as dark as we can go. Shinji whispered back, are you sure you're feeling alright Naruto? I I don't know guys maybe I am just not feeling it today. Naruto picked up his bag, I'll see you guys tomorrow, I am going to go home and grab some sleep. Ah alright then Naruto, get a good night's sleep and we'll see you tomorrow. Shinji replied with concern while Kai also waved goodbye to Naruto. With Naruto, when he left Shinji's house he felt much better, oh man the sun is setting already huh? He didn't feel like going home anymore, that's weird I I feel stronger, and I am seeing things better than I ever have. Naruto flexed his hands and turned them over nothing was different himself thinking that it was just some excess energy he decided to walk it off by going about town as he aimlessly walked about town. Walking about town he found himself at the fountain, Yuma-chan, why why were you crying? And just what am I now? Naruto fell to his knees and cried. All I wanted was to live a normal life but now all of this has happened what is going on. Naruto screamed it to the air but he suddenly felt someone or something behind. Well 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 this is certainly a surprise I'd never thought that I would find someone like you in a place like this. Who who are you? Asked Naruto as he began to inch backwards. The mysterious man raised his hat and Naruto could see his eyes glinting with the hint of madness and murder in his eyes. Don't run for this will make it easier for both of us. Light began to throb inside of Naruto's bag quickly opening it he spotted the evil thruster slowly he drew out the evil thruster from within his bag and looked at it with curiosity, the evil thruster is throbbing. Pull the evil thruster out of its sheath and we shall fight together. As Nexus, Naruto hesitated for a moment before he gripped both ends of the evil thruster and pulled both parts apart making a light appear from the unsheathed part and pointed it up in the air yelling, Nexus. A flash of light surrounded Naruto and moments later a glowing figure flipped over the man. WH what are you? The man asked as the light faded in its place was a black and gunmetal figure that had two glowing eyes, on its chest was a strange shape and above it was a green gem the figure turned around and took a look at its hands. Wow this power it feels weird but it makes me feel like I was back in the elemental nations. The figure took a combat stance while the man raised an eyebrow at his actions, you just what are you? That is of no concern now if you wish to go down the hard way then so be it. Putting his arm out he formed a light spear similar to the one that Yuma made but instead of red his was blue and threw it with the intent to kill or at least heavily injure. Naruto was about to dodge it but as it went by he noticed that it was going much slower than he expected. Ju just what is going on is my reaction time faster. If so then it would be the perfect opportunity to do this. Dashing past the light spear Naruto kneed the man in the stomach before bringing his other leg around and kicking the man in the side sending him flying off into a few bushes. Whoa just how strong am I? Naruto asked as black wings similar to Yuma's emerged from the bushes and the man soared into the air and landed on top of a tree to look down at Naruto. You dare to make a mockery of me Danesik. Just who do you think you are? I am Naruto Uzumaki Kazama, ex-shinobi of Kanahagakur. Naruto entered his combat stance but shifted it so that he could get a better balance. Well then Naruto Uzumaki show me what you have. Danesik threw his light spear at Naruto which he simply dodged by flipping backwards to his surprise. It's been quite a while since I've done all these acrobatic tricks, I am surprised that I can even do them. 
As soon as Naruto stopped flipping backwards the light on his chest began to blink red. Naruto looked down at it as he felt his strength fading. WH what is going on? Why do I feel weaker all of a sudden? Too bad for Naruto as soon as he turned his attention back to Donesiki saw a light spear heading in his direction he tried to dodge it but he missed the timing and the spear went through his stomach, arg. It didn't hurt this much when I got stabbed the other time, Naruto screamed out in pain he moved to grip the light spear but found that he could not touch it without burning his hands. It hurts doesn't it light is like a deadly poison to your kind, but I will finish this soon you needn't worry. Donesik threw his arm back and the spear was pulled out of Naruto's body when the spear was back in Donesik's hand Naruto de transformed into his human self with a hole exactly where he got stabbed, d damn it I can't die. Not a second time, Naruto closed his eyes and waited for the strike to come down on him but the spear was shot out of Donesik's hand by something red. Was that your doing? No I suppose it wasn't, a red flash appeared making both men turn towards it, you will keep your hands off of him. A female voice demanded. Th that red hair, it can't be Rias senpai can it? Mumbled Naruto before he fainted. Who do you think you are stopping me? Donesik demanded as he made another light spear appear in his hand and threw it at Rias but a white haired girl jumped out of nowhere and deflected it with little effort before rising to stand by her side. As for the light spear it returned to Donesik's hand as he flipped out at being denied his target and charged at Rias and the white haired girl but bolts of lightning descended from above and exploded right in front of Donesik blowing him backwards as a lady with black long black hair walked out lightning crackling in the palm of her hand, she spotted the wounded Naruto on the ground and ran to try and help him. Red hair, so you are from the house of Grimori. That is correct I am Rias Grimori how are you my good fallen angel? Donesik merely laughed and picked up his hat, dusted his jacket and placed it on his head, is this boy one of your household? Bring any harm to him and you will get no mercy. Well then my apologies for what happened today and based on what happened I would say that you have yourself a very special servant but you should not let them run loose like that someone like me could accidentally hunt him down while taking a walk. Rias waved her hand in appreciation, thank you for the advice I will take it into consideration and for my part the next time anything like this happens I will not hesitate to start something. Bear that in mind, Rias ended it with the narrowing of her eyes to signify the gravity of the situation. I could say the exact thing to you next head of the house of Grimori, warned Donesik before he flied off into a portal that appeared in the sky. Akino how is he? Rias asked concern in her voice. He is heavily wounded using his power and being hit by the light spear must have done it, was it wise to have waited for so long before intervening? I am sorry about that Akino but I wanted to see his power for myself and I am surprised by his abilities and don't worry I won't let him die for he is mine. The next day, a beeping noise woke up Naruto he lifted his sheets off of his body to reach out and turn it off. Ah oh man another terrible dream about me getting hurt I got to stop doing whatever the heck it is I do at night before hitting the sack yawn, it feels kinda drafty and here did I open a window. Naruto looked down and saw that he was naked, Wah. Naruto quickly covered his delicate bit with his hand as he began to look around for his shorts or his underpants at least, rummaging through his room he noticed a shape around the rest of his blanket, hum that's a weird shape. Maybe my pants could be under there. Naruto lifted the blanket to reveal a very naked Rias Grimori sleeping on his bed. Reeling backwards he hit his head on his cupboard, our Rias Senpei. Naruto's loud scream woke the slumbering Rias who woke up due to Naruto's yell. She cutely rubbed her eyes and stretched herself giving Naruto a full view of her body. Naruto quickly reacted by covering his eyes with both hands but remembered that he was naked so he placed one hand over his bottom part and his other hand over his eyes as he tried his best not to peek. Arias Senpei wh what are you doing in my room and why are we naked this has to be another dream. I am afraid not Naruto-kun, everything that you have seen and experienced is real I am Rias Grimori a devil. A devil. Rias nodded as she laid her head on her arm and propped it on top of her knee, that is right, I am also your master it's nice to finally meet you Naruto Uzumaki-kun. And we're done for this chapter, and to be honest this flowed way more naturally than the original did and it also allowed me to relieve my childhood hero Ultraman though it is nice to note that Dina was my first but Tiga was my favorite even though I've watched one third of Dina yet I've only seen a handful of Tiga episodes which include the final two episodes.
If you are sitting there asking yourself who Ultraman is I don't blame you outside of Japan few people do know who he is high five to the people who know who he is. But anyway this story came about as I was listened to some Ultraman op songs and I came across Nexus which if you haven't heard is a kick ass song without the translation with the translation it's a kick ass song that has meaning behind it and by a mind boggling conclusion I decided to revamp the road to devilhood into this. So first of all to get stuff out of the way. His transformation. When Naruto transforms he becomes Ultraman Nexus in Junus mode except colored gunmetal and black like Dark Tiga also when Naruto transforms he will never get bigger he will be staying normal size. His color timer. Naruto's color timer will work in the same way as Nexus did in which it acts as the life bar for him but as for the first transformation the link between Naruto and the evil thruster was broken so he basically detransformed. Will Naruto gain more forms? Yes he will. Will he have a sacred gear? Yes he does. Pairing. Rias, Akino, Rainer, Yuma and Asia for the first part. I think that about does it. Leave a review with whatever you guys want to say be it where you hope the story will go, what forms Naruto will have, guesses on what his sacred gear is going to be, if Issei should be in this story or just hit that follow or favorite button followed by the save button to show your support. And for those leaving a review guess how high I was when coming up with this story idea and I'll tell you guys next time have a great week. Naruto if you don't get down soon then your breakfast is going to get cold. Sophia looked over to Jin who peeked over his newspaper and just winked at his wife before turning his attention back to it. She decided to wink back and went on up the stairs calling for Naruto to wake up. Sophia and Jin loved Naruto since the day that they adopted him and though they had some rough spots in the beginning it was all water under the bridge, but since he was now in that age range when kids started to do weird things with their time they just wanted to poke fun at Naruto so that he could hopefully control his urges. I am coming up to wake you up Naruto and if I see you with a dirty magazine then, just before Sophia could finish her sentence she opened the door to Naruto's room to see him standing over Rias who was naked while Naruto was missing his pants and shirt as well. Good morning, Rias greeted Sophia while Naruto's mouth was unnaturally wide staring at his mother who had to be thinking all kind of weird things. Oh man I never wanted my parents to catch me like this. Good morning, please hurry up and get ready for school. Sophia dumbly stated as she closed the door shook her head and pinched herself realizing that what she saw was true and that Naruto was indeed naked with an older woman, an older woman who was a foreigner. Inside of the room Naruto slid to the ground and continued to dumbly stared at the door, when footsteps could be heard shuffling downstairs, J. Jin. W.H. What's wrong Sophia? Did you catch Naruto doing something funny? Ga I told you we should nt have done that to him but no we just had to do things you way. No no it wasn't that it it was a an older woman with him, and not just that I think she she was a foreigner. A foreigner and an older woman to boot. Our Naruto has really grown up. Jin received a kick to his face courtesy of Sophia. D don't say that Jin, I am too young to be a grandmother. Sophia cried as she continued to kick Jin. Naruto heard all of it pretty clearly even though the door muffled it looking over to Rias he saw that she was giggling. My life is over. They'll never let this go for the rest of my life, mumbled Naruto as he began to rock back and forth he reached over to his bedside table to grab the evil thruster but found that it wasn't there, shooting up Naruto began to scramble about his room intent on finding it. What are you searching for Naruto-kun? Rias asked as she held the warm white object close to herself. I I am searching for my mother's memento, Naruto replied as he ruffled through his bag tossing stuff out of the way to find it. Oh is it white and when you hold it close to you it emits a warm feeling. Naruto was shocked by what Rias had said and turned to her that was when he saw Rias holding the evil thruster close to her breasts covering his eyes he reached out his arm. Um yeah that's right and I uh think you holding it senpai, Rias giggled before placing the evil thruster in his hand. I um also think that you should cover yourself up cause your um everything is showing. Rias folded her legs and acted as though she was actually wearing clothes. Don't worry about it you can look at them if you want to. She stood up and calmly walked over to her clothes which laid by the side nicely folded on top of each other. Taking her panties she slipped them on while dirty fantasies ran through Naruto mind. So are you feeling alright? This broke Naruto out of his fantasy who looked down and saw that his stomach was healed as opposed to a big gaping hole though there was a small scar. That was when realization hit him. Th then everything that happened was real. 
He looked down at the evil thruster which began throb. I must say the abilities that you showed off were definitely the most surprising thing I have ever seen and that is saying something considering what I have seen though your healing is of note as well, even though it was a fatal wound you healed within the night with a little help from my magic. Magic. Naruto sounded surprised that such a thing actually existed but then again he was a de-aged ninja who used to be able to walk up walls and do other cool stuff but still magic it seemed like such a mysterious aspect of this world, Rias nodded as she put her bra on but just couldn't reach the clip. Naruto could you help me? Rias asked moving her hair out of the way to show Naruto the clip. I'm alright, but first let me get my pants on. Rias nodded so Naruto opened up his drawer and took out a pair of boxers and put them on before going over to help Rias clip her bra together, since this was awkward Naruto decided to talk so as to lessen the feeling. Not to make this feel even more awkward Rias senpai but why were we naked? Well how did you think I was supposed to transfer energy to you? Dirty thoughts entered Naruto's mind but they stopped when he felt Rias hand on his shoulder. Don't worry Naruto-kun Rias smiled making Naruto blush, I am still a virgin. She happily declared making Naruto let out a breath of sweet relief and face plant at the same time. Our Rias senpai this is no time to be joking. Though the thought of nothing happening between us is definitely reassuring. Naruto picked himself up before realization hit him. Wait you said something about being a devil, was it true? Asked Naruto as Rias came around and ran her hand across his lips. Yes that is correct Naruto-kun I am a devil and your master, you won't mind if I call you Naruto-kun right? Naruto shook his head as both of them proceeded to put on their school uniform before explaining everything to Naruto's parents over breakfast about what happened and surprisingly they accepted it as some weird teenage culture that was going on now. And as they ate breakfast Naruto could even hear Rias mumbling about how she didn't even need to use her magic to charm them into believing her but Naruto just brushed it off as a weird mumblings. About an half an hour later, both Naruto and Rias walked into school alongside each other with Naruto holding both of their bags. Rias had a smile on her face while Naruto tried to look as normal as he could while both boys and girls had different reactions to both of them walking alongside each other. For the boys the majority of them were jealous of Naruto for two reasons one he was walking alongside Rias who was the best looking girl in the school holding her bag as well and the second reason was because he was a first year student walking alongside her. As for the girls they were jealous because he was walking alongside Rias and that both of them had some secret senior, junior relationship that been going on for a while now and they were now just going to admit it. For most of the third year and second year students they thought that they could get to Naruto's heart first since most of them visited the cafe during lunch when Naruto worked there as he was finishing his last year of junior hire when they were in the area with friends and thought that he would be great boyfriend material. As for Naruto so many things were just going through his head that it was amazing that it didn't just explode, Rias being a devil, the fact that he was able to transform into Nexus his mind was in a mess that he didn't catch anything that was said by the boys and girls of Kuo Academy. Naruto, Naruto, this broke Naruto out of his thought to see that Rias was waving her hand in front of his face, Naruto are you listening to me? Oh uh, yeah Rias senpai, what is it? Naruto asked as he embarrassingly rubbed the back of his head. I will be sending someone to get you later on all right. Rias had her hand out so Naruto gave her her bag. Wait later on, what do you mean by that? However Rias had already excused herself from the conversation so that she could get to her class that was about to begin while Naruto begrudgingly made his way to his own class boys and girls staring at him with different feelings. When Naruto reached the class he was met by Shinji and Kai. Both guys were smiling with the same smile they always had when they were out having fun together, hey Naruto what's up? Heard a lot of commotion going down by the school gate anything special happened between you and that Rias senpai that you want to tell us? Nothing special I just walked to school alongside Rias senpai and I also held her bag nothing more nothing less, Naruto stated flatly as he took his seat. Shinji and Kai saw how he was and decided to drop the matter until later when Naruto was in a better mood. After school, so Naruto you feeling better? If so then let's talk about this morning and afternoon. Shinji asked as he tossed Naruto a soda and sandwich. Naruto gave a simple smile as he popped open the soda and took a long drink. Ah that felt good, listen guys I am sorry about how I acted this morning it's just. Kai interrupted Naruto due to the noise of him turning his chair around. Don't worry about it we're buddies so wanna tell us what happened. Nothing really. 
I just walked to school with Rias Senpei and the students in the upper levels didn't take it so well. Both Shinji and Kai had a good laugh about it. When both of them relaxed Kai came around and placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder. Well I guess Naruto's all grown up huh? Sai we all are growing up so fast, or maybe he's into older women. Kai, what's that supposed to mean? Naruto demanded as he shifted his arm and held Kai in a noogie who struggled around in Naruto's strong grip to get out of it. Come on I dare you to say that again. Say it. Kai just continued to laugh as he fell off of his chair. Ow ha 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 ow ow stop it Naruto. As for Shinji he was already on the ground holding his stomach from laughing but it all stopped when sighs of cuteness could be heard outside of their class. The door opened to reveal Kaneko standing in all her cuteness. Kaneko san. Oh man Naruto isn't just into older women he's into lawless as well. The tick mark on Naruto's head grew much larger as he clenched his fist in comedic anger. Kaneko looked much younger than she actually was which led people to call her the school's mascot or something else. What? You freaking 2D lover die. I am no lolicon Naruto pointed his finger at Shinji to stop whatever he was going to say. And I am not into older women. Naruto continued the noogie as Kaneko walked towards them. Naruto-san. All three of them calmed down and looked at Kaneko who just blankly stared at them. Rias senpei sent me to get you. Naruto nodded before letting go of Kai who dropped to the floor but managed to pick himself up with the help of Shinji. Naruto proceeded to follow Kaneko to the old school building but not before both Kai and Shinji stifled a laugh but were stopped when Naruto threatened another Nagi. Naruto followed Kaneko all the way to the old school building where he met Issei and his friends when he wanted to find Rias Senpei's identity. Once there they opened the door to reveal a boy with blonde hair wearing the uniform of the academy and he was seated calmly on a sofa that was laid nicely in the room. Shifting his attention away from the teen as he entered the room Naruto noticed that it was nicely decorated with a certain style that he just couldn't put his hand on but it made the room look very majestic and beautiful. Ah you must be the new member that president was talking about. The blonde teen stood up and stuck his hand out. I am Kiba Yudo nice to meet you. Naruto shook the hand and gave his name. Kiba Yudo. Oh he's the one that all the girls are talking about. So would you like some tea? Offered Kiba. Naruto accepted the offer and took a seat as Kiba pulled out a teacup and poured a cup for Naruto while Kaneko pulled out a bigger than average bar of chocolate and began to take small bites out of it. As Naruto drank the tea he heard the soft sound of a shower running, um Kiba senpei is there a shower here? Kiba nodded his head, Rias Bushu is using it at the moment. Ri Rias senpei, dirty thoughts immediately began to invade Naruto's thoughts but he tried to control them to the best of his ability. Bushu your clothes are all ready, a familiar voice mentioned as she stepped out from behind the curtain to reveal herself, Ak Akino chan Oh Naruto-kun it's nice to see you again and you're looking so much better as well. She happily acknowledged as Naruto returned the comment and a few minutes later Rhea stepped out of the curtain drying her hair while apologizing to everyone for making all of them wait for her. So Rhea senpei why am I here? And what exactly did you mean when you said that I was your servant? Ah straight to the point huh Naruto. All right then as I've told you before all of us gathered here today are devils. Naruto looked at everyone with shock before returning his attention to Rias, and the man that attacked you yesterday was a fallen angel. A fallen angel? Rias nodded. Yes they were once angels that were in the service to God but due to corrupt emotions they were cast out of heaven and having nowhere else to go they descended into the underworld where they attempt to wipe us devils out while also attempting to manipulate humans into helping them accomplish this task. Over time they have fought for supremacy of the underworld but as we fight the fallen angels we are also fighting against the angels that are sent down with orders from Kami to eliminate us in the end and in the end it is a three-way standoff do you understand everything that has been said so far? Naruto nodded his head in understanding and waited for her to continue, and when I said that you were my servant that was correct because I resurrected you from death you have become a servant under me. Naruto clenched his fist in anger when she said that and he unknowingly leaked a bit of killer intent which they caught. But don't worry Naruto just because you're my servant I won't mistreat you in any way or ask you to do duties which are impossible. Naruto relaxed when she said that the term servant reminded him of the way Konoha said that he could not return unless called like a dog. It just left a very bad taste in his mouth it also helped that Akino and Kiba explained that Rias treated them very well in fact they were a family to an extent. Naruto calmed himself down and asked the one question that had been bugging him ever since he saw the black wings from Donesi, so that means Yama-chan was real right. 
Rias nodded and threw out a photo that was of Naruto and Yuma walking about in the streets. Naruto took the photo and stared at it for a moment as tears welled up in the corner of his eyes. Yes she was real and the reason that she went after you was because of the power within you and if it was dangerous to her or her group then she was to take you out of the picture permanently. You're wrong, mumbled Naruto before he stood up and crumpled the photo in his hands. You didn't see what I saw Yuma she was crying and I won't believe what you say. Naruto picked himself and grabbed his bag and walked away. I am sorry but I am going to have to decline the offer. He replied before walking off Kiba tried to stop him but Naruto just brushed his arm off. Akino said girl stood up when called. Go after Naruto and try to talk to him. Akino nodded and followed Naruto. With Naruto, he was sitting along a riverside the evil thruster in hand and throwing stones into the river. So this is where you are. Turning around Naruto saw Akino standing behind him. This surprised him since she managed to sneak up on him without so much as a sound, and this was on the rock-covered surface. May I? Naruto nodded so Akino moved and sat next to him. Akino was about to say something but Naruto cut her off. I know what you're going to say but I don't want to hear it. Why Naruto-kun? If you just let Rias explain herself then you'll understand where she is coming from. It's because I like Yuma. When I was born my parents died so I've always been an orphan my entire life. When I was a kid I saw this girl that I liked and I wanted to do everything that I could to get her attention even if it meant being hit by her or looking like a fool. But when I met Yuma it felt totally different than when I had feeling for that other girl. I didn't need to act like an idiot in front of her and whenever I messed up Yuma she just laughed and thought it was cute and I realized that the feelings that I had for Yuma were true. You may call me an idiot for saying this but I just don't want to think about our relationship like that even though I am now a devil and she's a fallen angel. I I just can't. Naruto wrapped his arms around his knees and brought them close to himself as he cried. And this whole thing about being a devil is just so weird I mean I never wanted this all I wanted was to live a normal life but now I've had this forced upon me and I am just so frustrated. Akino placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder to comfort him. I understand your feelings Naruto-kun sometimes life throws us things that we can't handle or don't think that we can handle and we just feel overwhelmed with what has been placed upon us but because of the people around us we're able to come to understand what we've been handed and from there we can handle it and make our choices about what we should do. Naruto looked over to Akino who just smiled and this gave him a moment to think about it. Thank you Akino-chan. Naruto dried his tears and hugged Akino in thanks before both of them made their way back to the school having the small talk that they always had whenever she visited the cafe, and if he had any problems then she, Kiba or even Rias could help him get through it after all they were in it together as a group and to a certain extent they were also family. So Akino-chan I've always been wondering one thing and I hope you don't mind me asking. Akino looked over to Naruto. What is it Naruto-kun? Well I was just wondering if you had a boyfriend Akino gave a strange look to Naruto who started to wave his hand. Oh no don't get me wrong I mean you're a beautiful and nice girl but then I just find it weird that you would be single. Akino simply giggled before replying. That's alright Naruto-kun I don't have a boyfriend though there is someone that I do like and I hope that one day I do get to tell him that. Well then if you do tell him then I am sure that he'll accept it. Assured Naruto as he walked ahead while Akino stayed behind and twirled her ponytail with slightly saddened expression on her face. I hope so. Hours later, Naruto was walking along a lonely road with an empty bag by his side. After apologizing to Rias Bushu for his actions he was given a light punishment which consisted of a week's worth of delivering the same kind of flyers that he got from the lady by the mall the hard way but he took in stride since he was clearly in the wrong. And besides if he was ever going to meet another one of the fallen angels then he would need to get himself into fighting shape and the best way would be by doing something physical. As for the flyers they were apparently magical circles that would be able to summon any of the orc to their location to fulfill their wish but each devil had a limit to the wish that they could grant due to the price of the wish the human wanted granted. Naruto would come to learn more about that after serving his punishment. Time skip a week or so. Naruto had fully served his week of punishment and was now going to receive his first ever assignment as a devil well he could technically say that he was covering for Kiba, cause it was thanks to some counseling from him that Naruto was able to cope with the whole devil situation so Naruto decided to let Kiba have the night off by taking over his duties. It was a very simple process according to Rias Bushu. 
He would just do whatever he could do to grant the wish of the summoner and then accept payment after the deed was done but he could not do a wish that was too far out there cause even devils had their limits on what they could do and since this was a returning summoner Rias was confident that Naruto could handle it but before he went Rias wanted to make sure that he was ready in case of anything cause he couldn't always transform into Nexus to defend himself. So now he was summoning forth his sacred gear which Rias said that all humans possessed. Naruto hold out your arm and think of something you feel to be the strongest. Naruto followed her instruction and held out his hand and began to think about it but all that popped into his mind was his mother's letter and how it said that she would always be watching over him and a second later a blue orb formed around the top of his hand and on the palm of his hand before a light engulfed his entire hand. When the light faded a white fingerless gauntlet that had blue orbs on the top and bottom of it formed on his hand. Interesting a critical bracer that is not a very common sacred gear to appear among humans, Rias remarked but Naruto had question marks all about his head. The critical bracer is a sacred gear that projects a shield from the orbs on it to protect its user from attacks, Naruto was amazed at and admired it for a moment before asking how he was supposed to make it return, so by simply thinking about it disappearing he got his normal arm back and he simply had to think of it appearing and it would do so. All right now Naruto just go there and fulfill the contract all right. Hi Bushu I'll do my best. Naruto assured and stepped into the magic circle that would summon him to his summoner and he disappeared in a flash of red light. Hours later, Naruto left his client's house a little happier that he could help someone out when they needed it. He could have teleported back to the clubhouse if he followed what Akino said about using the seal but he found that the energy he gained during the night was just amazing and he wanted to burn some of it so he decided to walk back to the clubhouse instead of teleporting back. But as he was walking back the sky suddenly turned a different color and he sensed an ominous presence behind him, who's there? The sound of high heels could be heard approaching him. This presence it's similar to Danesik, could it be Yuma? No this presence it's much darker. And evil slowly the figure walked into the light of a nearby lamppost where Naruto could see that she had long navy blue hair and she was wearing what appeared to be like a trench coat that opened at her chest giving anyone who saw her front a nice view along with a mini skirt. This is unusual very unusual, I don't have you confused with anyone else yet I was asked to get rid of you how unusual indeed, from the lady's back big black wings emerged and a light spear appeared in the lady's hand. Oh shit. Naruto jumped out of the way of the light spear that was thrown at him but he barely made it as the bottom of his jacket was singed, he wanted to transform into Nexus to fight but the evil thruster dropped out of his jacket when he jumped out of the way of the light spear and skidded a bit down the road so he concentrated and called forth his critical bracer which appeared on his arm momentarily after he called it. The fallen angel seemed surprised that the sacred gear appeared on Naruto's arm but didn't bat an eyebrow at it and just formed another light spear which she used as a spear to charge at Naruto with. Holding his arm out he thought of a shield on the bracer and just like that a blue shield appeared on it lucky for him caused the fallen angel's spear hit the shield pushing Naruto back. As she was bringing her light spear about for another strike Naruto made a straight dash to the evil thruster. Quickly picking it up he pulled it from its sheath yelling Nexus into the air and in a flash of light that blinded the fallen angel temporarily, when the light faded he had transformed into Nexus, using one of the walls as support he jumped off of it and punched the fallen angel sending her tumbling to the ground, so you're the one that Donesik found and thought was astray, we thought that the girl killed you but it seems that we were wrong and there will be consequences for this. Girl, you mean Yuma-chan, where is she? And if you lay a finger on her then Il Naruto was broken out of his stance by the fallen angel's mention of Yuma but before he could finish his sentence. You'll do what boy kill me. If you couldn't fight off Donesik then what hope is there for you to beat me? Making a light spear she grasped it before charging Naruto down with the aid of her wings. As for Naruto he prepared himself before running at the charging light spear and just before the light spear was in arm's reach he allowed himself to slide under the lady where she could not strike him. Stopping once she missed her target she brought her spear around to slash Naruto who jumped over it and landed behind her before proceeding to deliver a punch to her back, this sent her tumbling to the ground in anger, grr damn you boy. Grabbing her light spear she threw it at Naruto who just narrowly dodged it but before she could make another one Naruto tackled her to the ground. Where is she, where is Yuma and what are you doing to her tell me. He demanded his voice laced with anger as he slammed her down onto the ground once to shake her up and held onto her trench coat but even with the ground slam the fallen angel just smiled. Wouldn't you like to know boy? Tell me something why are you fighting for whoever's house you're under? 
Naruto was taken aback by her question, quit being under that devil and join us. Naruto's grip relaxed when he heard that which was when she took her chance to perform some kind of spell that shot forth ice missiles at him, jumping off of the lady he destroyed the ice that got close to him with his fists. When all the ice was destroyed Naruto retook his stance, mentally cursed himself for falling for her trap and prepared himself for what was to come next but the lady had apparently enough or did not want to fight anymore stretching open her wings she took off into the air but Naruto had to talk to Yuma so he jumped onto a wall and using it as a platform jumped into the air grabbing her foot as she flew into the air. Let go. She cried out as she tried to kick him off but Naruto still hung onto what he could dragging her down much slower than he thought. Flapping her wings she flew to the ground and dragged Naruto behind for a little before she slammed him into a wall in an attempt to shake him off but he still would not let go. It wasn't until she made a light spear and stabbed it into Naruto's shoulder that he had to let go of her feet due to the pain he felt as she disappeared into a portal all Naruto could do was curse himself as he fell, but he didn't hit the ground for Rias house seal started glowing on the palm of his hand and Akino was suddenly there to save him. Era era Naruto kun should nt it be the ladies in this position. If Naruto could blush in Nexus form, he would have promptly done so on the spot. With a simple spell, Akino got both of them back to the clubhouse where Naruto de transformed and told them what happened, minus the part about Yuma, and to let Akino check his wound and heal what she could. I must say, for a new devil, you've handled yourself very well, Naruto, but you've put me in very awkward position now. Naruto turned to her as Akino healed what she could. What's wrong Rias Bushu? Rias had her chin placed onto the palm of her hand. Since you fought that fallen angel they now know that you are still alive and of all things you have been resurrected into a devil under my house. Naruto bowed his head in shame. I I am sorry Bushu I should have ran away but I got too carried away I will take full responsibility for my actions and accept any punishment you want, but Rias waved it off. Don't worry about it Naruto all of this was just a simple accident so it couldn't be helped I just want you to remember to not get carried away by the moment and try to fight them off better devils have tried and some have failed miserably losing their lives in the process. You are under my command Naruto and I will not lose you that way. Naruto nodded his head in understanding before excusing himself for the night leaving Akino and Rias in the clubhouse. Bushu are you ever going to tell Naruto kun about him being the special piece? Akino asked. No Naruto has enough on his mind at the moment he will find out at a later date. Rias had been wondering what was so special about Naruto he had a pretty good healing and then there was his abilities, when she tried to resurrect him his power fluctuated making it difficult to decide which piece to use, and in the end she ended up using seven pawns to resurrect him each one containing a measure of Naruto's power, reaching to the back Rias pulled out a book and turned it to Akino to see, the title was Legends and Myths from the Days of the Lost. I have been reading about old legends and myths from the time before our creation and this is what I found. Rias flipped open to a certain page and allowed Akino to read it clearly. Even among devils, legends speak of the great and legendary race of what could have been called the Archons. They were what could be called the original template for which God wanted to have populated the earth. The remaining records among the devils say that these archons thought themselves perfect some even thought of themselves as equal to God or even greater and so in the end a majority of them rebelled against God. The minority that stayed on God's side and became the very first set on angels and with their ascension God decided to make an army to fight against the remaining archons in the form of other angels, one of the pictures at the side showed carvings of human-like figures fighting against winged figures. In the end the uprising was put to rest and the archons that rebelled against God were banished away from his realm to another realm where God created many giants of immense power that were given the duty of watching over the archons and whatever they may make so that they may never return to God's realm or their creations could not threaten it but if they managed to do so then they would lose much of their powers upon entering God's realm. Not much else has been known after these events for all records of the archons were then sealed away by God. It was only when Lucifer the highest of the remaining Archons that remained on God's side during the uprising fall did the slip of the Archons existence become known but even then nothing can be confirmed for most of the records of these uprising have been lost with time, pictures by the side showed the Archons being banished and giants of varying design with different crests standing guard. Bushu you don't think that Naruto is one of them do you? Rias sighed and slipped her fingers in between each other. 
I don't know Akino there are signs of him possibly being one like his power fluctuations but these are all assumptions at the moment these archons are a possible thing of mythology or they could have actually have existed at one point I may have to ask Nisan he may have more clues about this but unless we have a time machine then we may never know the truth. With that said Rias returned the book to her bookshelf, turned off the light both of them had a long day and they would both need the rest. The next day. Naruto was walking alone from school thinking about yesterday's incident, man I hope that Rias Senpei isn't angry about what happened yesterday, Sai something must really be wrong with me last week it was walking out of the meeting and this week was the fight with that fallen angel what will next week bring disobeying orders. Oh please no shall officially hate me by that point, Naruto continued to sigh. Still that fallen angel mentioned Yuma-chan, hopefully they're not doing anything to her but if they are. Naruto clenched his fist in anger but he was broken out of his thoughts by a squealing noise. Turning around he was greeted by a pair of white panties and from the looks of things this lady had fallen over and from the look of things it was because of the heavy luggage that she was lugging about, going forward to help the lady he caught a glimpse of lady and saw that she had blonde hair which probably meant that she wasn't a native to Japan. Are you alright? Naruto offered his hand to the girls that fell down and she spoke back to him in English which he probably couldn't understand if he was a normal human but one of the most useful or useless skills of being a devil depending on your look at it was the power to understand any language and speak it as well who'd have thought. The lady accepted his hand and pulled herself up and dusted herself off. When Naruto helped her up he could see her green eyes but what got his attention was her attire. She had on a dark teal dress with blue accents a white veil over her head that had crosses on it and the most scary object to Naruto was the silver cross necklace that was hanging around her neck. And cut. So well ended here for now. Okay stuff out of the way first I apologize to the people who wanted Naruto to have the boosted gear but I felt that the way I wanted to write the story, the boosted gear here was just not for Naruto's character instead he'll just have his critical bracer. As for the people who want Issei in this story I can't do it mostly because of how the show, light novel, manga is run. If Issei comes in then you guys will possibly want him paired with Rias and if I do that then the later half of the story, first season, is completely irrelevant to Naruto's character and will just be a bunch of filler which I cannot for the life of me write but don't worry Issei will still pop up every now and then. And as for the Archon thing it's kinda my own addition to the Mythos of High School DxD. If you guys like it then says so if not then sorry but I am not changing it and it will come into play later on. Also I am looking for a beta that has a good knowledge of the high school DxD world to check that the original mythos is correct if you want to accept this duty then send me a PM. Affection rating, this section is based on who likes him a little bit of a joke and should not really be taken too seriously. Ah thank you for helping me, thank the lady. She wanted to thank Naruto but didn't know his name which Naruto realized. Oh right you can call me Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. With his name known the girl proceeded to thank Naruto but before she could a gust of wind came by and blew her veil off of her head revealing her blonde hair and sparkling green eyes to Naruto. Wow, she has a pretty set of eyes, thought Naruto before he pushed the thought out of the way this girl's laundry was all about the place and it was no time to be staring at her, anyways let me help you here. She nodded but before they could start her veil flew away so Naruto chased after it before he returned it to her. Once the veil was returned to her she placed it on her head in a way so that it would not fly off so easily. Thank you for helping me Naruto. Ah don't mention it from your appearance or you perhaps from the church. Um well not exactly. I was assigned here to be a part of the church here but I. The girl began to cutely poke her hands together in a way that Naruto felt brought more of the cute look to her. You're lost errant you. She lowered her head in embarrassment before giving a small mumble of yes, well don't worry the town really isn't that big so why don't I help you find where you're looking for. A smile came across the girl's face, thank you Naruto and please call me Asia Asia Argento. She chirped out before moving towards her luggage but Naruto picked it up for her instead, now let's go find what you're looking for Asia. A while later. Naruto and Asia were walking towards the local church and all the while they made small talk about Asia and how she was traveling all alone in a region that she did not know. This was a really dumb move on the church to send someone who was unfamiliar to the area out here alone, you should tell them that Asia. It'll be sure to tell them that, however their talk was broken by the cries of a little boy looking over in the direction of the cries they saw a little boy with a scrap on his knees crying. 
Asia moved over to the boy and that was when Naruto noticed a ring on her hand with a green gem on top of it. Don't cry boys should nt cry when they are hurt like that. Of course the little boy couldn't understand a word of what was she was saying since it was all in English. But as Asia was speaking to the little boy a green blow covered the wound and right before their eyes the young boy's wound began to heal until it was like the wound had never been there to begin with while the boy was amazed at what had happened Naruto was looking at his hand when the green blow appeared he felt something resonate within him but he couldn't place his hand on it though her power did seem similar to the healing abilities that the Kyubi granted him. There we go all done. Asia happily chirped out her good deed done. The boy stood up for a moment and felt no pain so he ran around the playground for a bit dragging Asia along with him showing her the swings, slides and everything else there. A lady soon came by and picked the little boy up. Mommy look the nice lady healed my knee. However the mother just gave it a disbelieving look as she hurried her child away but not before she gave Asia a weird look that reminded Naruto of the times whenever the kids back in Konoha were hurried away by their parents so that they did not gain his bad influence. Thank you Nay san The boy yelled out hoping that Asia could catch it before his mother took him away however Asia looked puzzled by what had happened, that boy just told you thanks for healing his wound. A smile came across Asia's face when she realized what the boy had said to her, it was nothing really God gave me this gift so he must have wanted me to help people regardless of how they feel about me, her tone turned sad at the last part but she felt a hand on her shoulder. Don't worry Asia while that mother didn't understand what her child was talking about I am sure that the child will keep on telling her about how you healed his wound. Kids in this area are like that they always remember the good things that people do for them. Asia had a curious look on her face and wanted to know more. Um well I used to know this person and he had a power within him that he never wanted but then everyone around him treated him like the plague because of the power so all his life he tried his best to be accepted by those people around him even reducing himself down to acting like a fool. When someone finally accepted him he thought that the whole city he used to live in would also come to accept him but it wasn't to be he was assigned to a work team where one teammate would always hit him over the smallest of thing. His other teammate wasn't much better as he was always looking for power and then there was his teacher who always preached about never abandoning teammates behind yet he always left that boy behind. Asia had a very sad look on her face, what happened in the end Naruto? Well how should I say this, it um had a pretty interesting ending, the person is now living quite happily and that's about all I can say about that. He embarrassingly replied since he really couldn't tell someone that the story ended with the person escaping his fate by walking through a tunnel where he turned back into a child and was adopted by a loving family Asia would have probably thought he was nuts or his story was a complete fake. What a poor man. I shall ask God to watch over him wherever he may be and hopefully God will help the man in whatever he may be doing or perhaps God may even guide this man to the church so that I may help him. Asia knelt down and began to pray for him but she was interrupted when thunder was heard on this sunny and cloudless day. Oh is it about to rain Naruto? Naruto? Asked Asia as she stopped praying for the moment. However Naruto did not reply so Asia turned back to him which was when she saw that Naruto was laying on the ground his face turned to the side, his eyes had completely turned to giant X's, his tongue was sticking out and his face was a weird color. Ah oh, Naruto. Are you alright? shrieked Asia as she stopped praying immediately and went to help Naruto. A few minutes and a few bottles of water later. So are you feeling much better Naruto? Naruto nervously nodded his head though he was still a little blue in the face but at least he was able to walk albeit with a little difficulty. Well gulp anyways there's the church Asia, pointed out Naruto. Ah thank you for helping me get here Naruto but um you still don't look quite right so would you like to come inside of the church for a moment to rest? Naruto's face slowly began to lose its color once again so he politely turned down her idea and returned her belongings. If you're in the area or not feeling good then please don't hesitate to visit me alright Naruto. And I'll do my best to help you. Naruto nodded and in return he gave her his workplace card if she ever wanted to talk to someone or needed help then she could come and find him before the both of them waved goodbye to each other, he just had to leave this area before a bolt of lightning came down upon him or worse. I am glad that I was able to meet someone like him hopefully he'll come and visit me, thought Asia as she began her walk to the church holding the card in her hand and as she did a figure by the church with something around her neck saw everything and flew off. The sun was beginning to set as he was walking back home he thought about his meeting with Asia, 
Well she certainly was different I always imagined that the people from the church were crazy nut jobs who swung sword around killing every single devil in their path just because of who they were but Asia she's different than that, maybe one day we could be better friends. Walking back he felt his strength increase as the sun went down and as he was about to open the door to his house when he felt someone watching him. Acting like nothing was wrong he quickly turned behind but he was too slow to see the figure only the black feathers that were left behind reaching out he grabbed one and it felt familiar, Yuma Chan. Dumping his bag at his doorstep he used his sense of hearing to track down the sound of flapping wings but alas he was too slow as the sound soon faded away, Yuma Chan that was you wasn't it. If it was then don't worry I'll see you one day. The next night, Naruto was out and about running and doing exercises if he was ever going to be ready for whatever being a devil threw at him but so far it was hard. He wasn't in the same shape he used to be and even with the abilities that the knight gave him he wanted to train as Nexus but couldn't take the risk of someone seeing him transform or turn back to human form nonetheless he still carried the evil thruster just in case he was attacked. He was just taking another drink of water when he heard the sounds of flapping wings turning around he summoned forth his sacred gear ready to defend himself against any of their attacks but when he saw who it was he dropped his stance and his eyes softened, Yuma Chan. Said girl was holding her arm looking down she couldn't look Naruto in the eyes because of what she did to him. Naruto slowly approached her to hold her hand but she inched away from him. Yuma please don't I I just want to talk please, he pleaded. But she wretched her hand out of his grip, why? Naruto was taken aback by what she was saying. Why do you still care even after all I've done to you? She cried out dropping to her knees, why? You should hate me for what I've done to you but you you still love me. Naruto moved forward and captured her in a hug which she would not accept. Yuma kept struggling against his hold but it was all stopped by Naruto, why do I still care? It's because you still care about me Yuma. Said girl looked up at Naruto with tear-filled eyes. Rubbing away her tears Naruto moved his hand towards her chest and brought out the locket that they bought on that date. You still wear the locket and you show regret for what you've done Yuma I loved you before all of this and I still love you now nothing is ever going to change that. So please don't force me to let go because I will never let you go I swear. That was too much for Yuma who broke into tears and cried into Naruto's shoulder. For Naruto he had a few tears drop from his eyes. Yuma was the very first girl that he had come to truly love and he was not going to let her go. Few minutes later, Naruto and Yuma had to go their separate ways but before they did Yuma said that they could meet a week later in the park with the fountain she even gave Naruto her true name of Rainair and with a kiss Rainair flew off back to wherever she had to go a portion of her heart healed of the guilt that she had when she stabbed Naruto while Naruto went back home happy that he healed a part of Rainer's heart and at the same time he was able to see Yuma. No. Rainer again. As Naruto entered his house, a team of mysterious men in white biohazard suits were at the place that they met minutes after Naruto and Rainer left the scene they arrived and began sweeping the area. And from the looks of things they were using scanners to look through the area, so there is a slight trace of supernatural energy in this area according to the scanners it seems that there were two supernatural beings here but neither of them are the target that we are currently tracking what do you recommend we do sir? His superior officer turned and pushed his glasses up, we do what we always do clean up the area and keep a watch out for anything mysterious happening people have been disappearing in this area so the creature we're looking for must be around here well just keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Suddenly the officer's phone rang, hello yes sir, what? Damn it, I understand well move out immediately, he quickly hung up the phone and began passing out orders to his men. All right men pack it up we've got another incident in the warehouse district. Let's move it people this could be the target, bag any supernatural energy traces here and well analyze it back at HQ, move it people. The officer clenched his fist in anger. Damn them, causing us all these problems, but this is why we are here to make sure that they can't harm humans. All over the place the people in biohazard suits packed up their stuff and returned to their vehicles, and moved towards their new destination where they found the decapitated remains of a human being. The next day, Naruto was eating breakfast when a news report came on. Today on local news the remains of a female was found by workers in a warehouse. According to official reports the women was apparently killed by some kind of sharp object last night though officials will not comment any more on the matter until the deceased's identity can be confirmed. The family contacted and an autopsy has been fully performed on the body, 
but officials do state that all pedestrians should be careful when they are on their way and if they know anything then please don't hesitate to call the toll-free hotline. Our condolences go out to the family of the victim. That's weird could it be? No it can't be maybe Rias Senpei knows something about this. Thought Naruto as he quickly finished his breakfast before he left for school. Lunchtime. Naruto was walking to the canteen when he was suddenly pulled into a bush by three mysterious people who put a bag over his head. When the bag was removed he found himself tied up really tightly and surrounded by Issei and his friends. Issei Senpei what is going on? Issei came and wrapped his arm around Naruto's neck. Don't worry Naruto you're not in any trouble we just wanted to ask you a few questions, so please just answer them for us, he pleaded. Um well I guess I can do that but why did you have to tie me up? Argued Naruto as he moved his arms about to try and free himself but found that they were tied really tight. We can answer that later now onto the questions Naruto. All three of them were really quick to divert the question asked by Naruto but Naruto didn't mind it so much cause he just wanted this done as quickly as possible. Four guys stuck in a tight and cramped place with one of the four tied up really nicely was a little weird for him to say the least. So we heard that you walked into the school with Rias Senpei a while back is that true? Naruto nodded his head. And you also held her bag right? Naruto once again nodded his head which caused the three of them to enter into a state of temporary depression. Even our junior has better luck at picking up girls than us and we've been here for a year longer than he has, the three of them admitted but before they could ask Naruto anything else Naruto just had to blurt out one thing. Well technically speaking I've been working at the cafe nearby since my final year of junior high and since most of the girls do visit there during lunch for the buns that I've made, I actually know most of the second year students and some of the third year students, the jaws of the three boys dropped even further than before upon Naruto's admission. What? Did you hear that our junior works at the most prestigious place to see the girls of the academy? All three boys held each other hands as tears of either joy or extreme sadness flowed from their eyes Naruto couldn't identify them and to be honest he didn't want to so taking this chance before they started to do anything or ask anything else Naruto slowly inched backwards away from the three boys and when he was sure that he was safe he ran away at top speed leaving a cloud of dust behind him. As for Issei, Matsuda and Motohama when they finally stopped crying they realized that Naruto had disappeared, and started throwing curses back at each other for letting Naruto run away before all of their questions were answered. With Naruto, after he had run away from his senpais he ran towards the only place where he could think to hide, the occult research clubhouse using his elbows he opened the door to the place but stumbled and landed on the ground, ow that hurt now to find some place to hide or just wait until either Kiba, Akino or Rias Senpei arrive then they can cut me loose from these ropes, though I must say they really do know how to tie their knots. What have they been reading? Oh Naruto-kun you're here early. Rias looked up from documents and books that she was working on, referring to, to see Naruto on the ground tied up so she got out of her seat and moved to help him up and moved him over to the sofa in the room before searching around her table for a good pair of scissors to cut the rope with. So Naruto how did you come to be like this? Rias asked as she began to cut the rope with a little difficulty. Well um someone just wanted to ask a few questions and they had a very interesting way of getting me to answer them, admitted Naruto as he added a little chuckle in hoping that Rias didn't think that he had some sort of weird secret sexual fetish. Anyways I forgot to tell you that as a devil you are not allowed to pray to God or touch the Bible, Naruto already knew that part thanks to Asia and he didn't want to be reminded of it, sequence in Naruto's head. First weird force constricts the neck making him suffocate second head starts to go woozy vision starts to fade, third stomach sickness and finally fourth fainting. You are also not allowed to go near any church or place of holy worship and even people praying for you will not be allowed. Naruto was taken aback by what she said, why you know? Rias nodded her head. Yes Naruto I know about the nun that you helped it was a nice gesture on your part but you must know that you were a devil and she was someone under God's domain thankfully the angels in the church that you escorted her to saw that you were helping one of their own and decided not to strike you down but you should not push your luck any more than needed, Naruto nodded in understanding. Then that presence that I felt when I got back home must have been Rainier. Gur these scissors just won't cut it, Rias threw the scissors down in exasperation. Hold still Naruto and I will use a spell to cut it. Naruto quickly jumped out of his seat and backed away slowly. For some reason he was scared of Rias when she was going to cast a spell even though he had never seen her cast her magic. 
W wait don't you think you're going a bit too far by using a spell? I mean if you can't do it then let's just wait for Kiba Senpei or anyone else I really don't mind. But aren't you uncomfortable if I do this now then we can get you free, Rias approached Naruto one of her hands covered with red energy. And now just hold on Senpei don't. Naruto immediately bolted for the door but couldn't reach the handle in time as Rias tackled him to the ground and had her foot planted on his body as he struggled to get free. Now just hold still Naruto this will only take a second, Rias replied a little too sweetly in his opinion, just as she was about to use her spell the door opened to reveal Akino. Oh my Naruto-kun I didn't know that you were so naughty doing this kind of thing with Bushu, Akino covered her mouth and giggled while Kiba and Kaneko peeked over her shoulder to see what was going on. Naruto hentai. Naruto looked over at Kaneko with a weird look. H hey that's uncalled for I am not that kind of pervert I swear I am just stuck in a weird situation now can someone get me out of it? Pleaded Naruto. Kiba came forward and taking out a sword that was by his hip he cut the ropes off of Naruto allowing him to stand up, stretch and rub his painful spots. Thank you Kiba senpei. Oh I thought that Naruto kun could stay like that then after our job is done we could have so much fun together. Akino commented before crossing over and whispering something into Rias' ear as she was doing that a cold shiver ran down Naruto's spine when he thought about the fun Akino mentioned, for some reason he thought of Akino in some kind of tight skimpy leather outfit using a whip on him as he was tied up, shaking his head he banished the thought from his mind just as Akino finished whispering to Rias. Clapping her hand Rias gained the attention of all club member, well it seems like we have received a job from one of the other nobles. Rias had everyone move to the sofa where she could look at everyone and inform them of their job, it seems that one of the other devil nobles has had a little incident where their servant has left their services and since this devil has entered our territory we have been given the duty of hunting her down. Naruto thought back to the morning news report, I saw a news report this morning about a dead lady being found in the warehouse district would there be any connection between this deserter devil and the dead women that they found? Rias nodded. It would appear so for the details that have been passed to us it seems that the target is extremely bloodthirsty so she may have been the one to kill that woman which is why we have to take her out and this duty falls to us because as I've said before she is in the area that my family controls. This will also be a good opportunity to show you more about the system that the devils use so I would like for you to remain by mine or Akino's side during this fight is that understood Naruto. Even though you have the experience of fighting the fallen angels to a certain extent you do not fully understand the range of abilities that being a devil has to offer you, Naruto nodded his head in confirmation. Very well then well move out when it gets dark is that understood? Everyone nodded before they went about their own business Kiba was checking his sword, Kaneko decided to have some chocolate, Akino teased Naruto about his situation a minute before while Rias continued her research about the Archons. That night. Rias teleported herself and her peerage to the location where they suspected that the stray devil was, while they were searching for the devil Akino decided to explain to Naruto what they were doing, when a devil that has betrayed, escaped or killed their master they will become known as a stray demon and the master may send in a request to have his ex-servant executed but since the stray devil is in our territory the duty has fallen to us. It's just like the shinobi system back in the end, thought Naruto. And since this is a job we will also be rewarded once we kill the stray devil. So what did Bushu mean when she said that devils had abilities? Naruto asked as they kept a lookout for the stray demon. This was where Rias took over the explanation, have you ever played chess Naruto? Naruto nodded his head, yeah but what does it have to do with the devil's power? Well after the war thousands of years ago the devils lost many soldiers during that event and so one of the four satans came up with a system in which we could rebuild our forces while also maintaining the status between the different families, and they called it the evil peace system, like the game of chess each evil piece that the devils use correspond to one piece from the game of chess however Rias had to stop her explanation when she noticed that Kaneko waved her hand to get them over. She's here. Kaneko confirmed as the coppery smell of blood got to all of their senses. From the darkness a figure rose up and it just so happens that she was half naked and groping her breasts, Naruto looked at it for one moment before he covered his eyes, I really should nt be looking at this, well I guess a quick peek wouldn't hurt, he opened his hand a little bit and took in the sight of her breasts. Oh I smell five little beings to the slaughter now who shall be first. I promise that this will be as painless as I can make it. 
A magic seal formed on her breasts and before they knew it milk shot out of them aimed at Rias. Bushu. Naruto jumped in front of her and summoned forth his sacred gear to protect her. The milk splashed on the shield and dripped to the ground where it began to melt into the floor. Shit her milk's like the alien's blood from that one movie dad really loves. Thought Naruto as he steadied himself up while also maintaining his shield. When Rias regained her senses she glared at Visor angry at her attempt to kill her she would make sure that Visor received a painful and agonizing death courtesy of them. Visor your time has come I, Rias Grimori, of the Grimori clan shall now net out your punishment for betraying your master and attacking me as well, Kiba. Hi Bushu. Kiba stepped forward, drew his sword and gripped it with both hands but Visor was not amused by him drawing his blade. You impudent child just because you serve under the house of Grimori do not expect me to bow to you. From within the shadow visor emerged to show that he full being was of some beautiful woman's body on top of some monster legs, to be honest it was a little freaky to Naruto as for Kiba he was not even unnerved as he gripped his sword even harder, visor brought her monster legs down upon Kiba but he just vanished before they even hit the ground. H he just disappeared, exclaimed Naruto while Rhea stepped next to Naruto and nodded. That is because Kiba is the knight and as a knight Kiba gains increased speed and mobility enabling him to perform high speed attacks and maneuvers. Naruto looked back up at Visor and with a glint of Kiba's sword both of her human arms were cut off with such speed that Visor was totally stunned by what had happened and when it finally hit her that her arms were cut off she screamed in agony at the loss of her arms. Growling in pain Visor slowly picked herself up which was when Kaneko stepped forward to face off against Visor who in a fit of rage further demonized herself turning her normal teeth into really sharp one and her lower body now had monstrous teeth coming out of it, Kaneko get out of the way. However it was too late as Visor gobbled up Kaneko in a flash, just as she started to chew Kaneko the jaw stopped and it was slowly forced open from the inside, inside of Visor's mouth was Kaneko who was forcing Visor's mouth open. Her clothes were slightly melted possibly from visor saliva, Kaneko chan is the rook and as the rook she gains an immense amount of strength along with amazing defensive ability. Kaneko pushed the jaw of visor's lower body apart and got herself out of there, once done she lifted one of visor's monster legs slightly up before effortlessly tossing her to the side, visor landed with a cloud of dust which was when Akino decided to step up to center stage lightning crackling in her hand. Oh my attacking Bushu is a capital offense and for that you are to receive the capital punishment, Akino mused in a sort of playful voice, attacking Naruto-kun is also a big no-no for me. Now it's time for your punishment. Akino raised both of her hands into the air and before Naruto knew it lightning came crackling down onto Visor. Akino is the queen, the almighty vice commander combining all of the strengths of the rook, knight and bishop. She specializes in attacks using her demonic powers on top of that she as Akino stopped her reign of lightning for the moment to sensuously lick her lips. A complete sadist, Akino brought down more lighting onto Visor all while laughing like a child in a candy store, as for Naruto he was shaking in his mind as the picture of Akino with a whip returned in all its glory, but don't worry Naruto-kun just because Akino is a sadist I don't think that she will do anything to her allies. Her lover on the other hand is a completely different matter. Rias thought before turning her attention back to Visor, Akino that is enough. With the order given Akino stopped casting her spell as Rias stepped up to finish Visor off, and I Naruto-kun am your king, if I fall then everything is over. Don't worry Bushu none of us will let anything happen to you. Declared Naruto which made Rias smile. I know Naruto, now then Visor your time is ov however the clattering sound of gunfire was heard. Quickly bringing his sacred gear up to protect Rias the bullets bounced harmlessly off of his shield and landed on the ground. Bullets were also aimed at Kiba who just cut them in half or dodged them. Kaneko's impressive defense just had the bullets stop and fall to the ground but the amount of bullets aimed at her caused her to put her hand up in defense while Akino also put up a barrier around herself. Lights were suddenly turned on in the warehouse as the place suddenly came alive with activity. All over the place soldiers wearing standard combat gear that masked their identity entered the area and held their aim at all of the demons in the area from both the ground level and the level above them, and from the look of things the man that entered last wearing glasses was in charge of them as he called for them to spread out. Well I must say this is indeed a stroke of luck for us to find the one that we have been looking for, I thank you for your help Devil San but now that we are here we will take over the situation for it seems as though you have outstayed your welcome here. The man with the glasses pushed his glasses up, 
the light glinting off of them though Naruto could have sworn that the man was looking at him as though he was some sort of prize. Very well then we will go for now but be warned we will not allow you to interfere in our matters again human. Naruto everyone were going. Naruto nodded but still didn't lower his shields as all of Rias peerage gathered around her and teleported back to the clubhouse. Once they were gone the soldiers went about placing objects onto visor these objects would hopefully keep her unconscious while they transported her. Calling in transports as well as cleaning up the area of all the blood or magical taint, so we've managed to take care of everything, it seems as though the kids that were here moments ago had a lot of magical energy though the one with the weird bracer had some kind of weird energy emitting from him and according to the scanners this kid was the same one that we tracked the other day at the park, us uh, sir. Glasses, that is the man with the glasses name until later on, smiled a little, is that so then carry on soldier I have a special report to make to the higher ups. The soldier handed the scanner over to Glasses before giving a saluted to Glasses and continued going about his other duty. As for Glasses he took a look at the scanner before a smile came across his face taking out his phone he called his superior officers, Sir I believe we have found what we need to bring Plan G to life. On the other end of the line, is that so very well then do whatever you need to get the subject once there I am sure that he will be willing to provide what is needed. But he is under the command of the girl with the red hair should we anger her. If we do take her servants she may do something drastic against us and I fear that this is something that we cannot stop. Then we shall use the failed subjects of Plan G to stall her. When you capture the subject use whatever you think is necessary and then have him transported to base 6 in the heart of the city she will not be willing to cause such a fiasco once there. Understood. Replied Glasses as he hung up the phone and a smile came across his face. Devils, angels whatever you may be called this is one fight that you will never win. With the call done the vehicles arrived and the soldiers shipped Visor to their secret facility for experimentation. With Rias and her peerage. They had just teleported back to the clubhouse. Rias Bushu just who exactly were those people and how did they know about the existence of devil? Naruto asked though Rias could only sigh as she walked over to her table cluttered with books and texts, taking a seat she laced her fingers together. Those humans would be known as the Supernatural Defense Force SDF, and they are a task force of humans that have been formed to protect humanity from supernatural threats like us. They operate in both the night and day. The news report that you saw was just one facet of their job. They clean up, erase and cover up all traces of supernatural occurrences wherever possible, if needed then they will also eliminate supernatural beings that have caused trouble to humans. So they're basically a human fighting force that will be willing to fight all of us if need be, Rias nodded her head in confirmation. So what should we do if we ever meet them again Rias Bushu? Asked Naruto. We will just have to leave the job to them, I'd hate to admit it but if the SDF were willing to fight then they will do whatever they need to eliminate us, Naruto gulped before he excused himself for the night along with Kiba and Kaneko with orders from Rias to take a break over the next few days and not go outside just in case. The next day, Naruto had just finished class for the day and he had more questions about the evil peace system because as he remembered Rias Senpei still didn't explain what the bishop or the pawn were supposed to be. Entering the clubhouse he found Akino was there cleaning up Rias' messy table. Oh Akino-chan I didn't know you were here. Oh what's wrong Naruto-kun? Am I not good enough for you? Akino hugged her body in a way that just highlighted every one of her curves. No you're really good it's just that Rias senpei never explained what the bishop and pawn's roles were yesterday so I came down here to find her. I'll explain them to you if you treat me to some afternoon tea, Akino mused, seeing nothing wrong Naruto agreed and both of them left to the nearby mall where they got a booth in a restaurant, ordered some food along with drinks before Akino explained the roles of the other two pieces. Well for the bishop they specialize in using magic which can be used to cast a multitude of spells though the more powerful the spell the more magical power they will end up using so this forces them to use their power carefully if not they run the risk of being vulnerable to physical attacks. Naruto nodded in understanding, it made sense the bishop would have something like an MP bar which would drain whenever they casted a spell and if it was all used up then they probably wouldn't be able to defend themselves. And then last but not least we have you the pawn Naruto. Your special ability is to be able to promote to a queen, rook, knight or bishop in an enemy territory which could consist of churches or when they are given the permission from their king. Naruto sort of gained a sweat drop when she mentioned that he was the pawn but then he thought back to chess, 
A single pawn promoting to a queen could win the game so he was the weakest when he was in Rhea's territory but when he was in an enemy's territory he could become the strongest. And that would pretty much cover all that you need to know about the evil pieces system at the moment. But wait if Kaneko is the rook, Kiba the knight, you the queen, Rias the king and I am the pawn then who is the bishop. Akino shrugged her shoulders, you may want to ask Bushu about that, now let's dig in. Naruto agreed and dug into the food after all he was paying so they should eat the food when it was still hot all the while they made small talk about hobbies, interests anything to really occupy themselves, a while later the both of them left the restaurant full of goodness, ah that was truly a good tea, thank you Naruto-kun well have to do it again. Sure I guess so, Naruto replied before Akino ran up to him and wrapped her arms around Naruto's own, come on then Naruto you want mind escorting me back to the academy now want you. Naruto shook his head and the both of them went back, she's acting really close to me, she can't like me right. I mean I like Rainer what should I do? He thought as people around them thought that both of them looked really good together as a couple they were even stopped by a photographer who took their picture. As for Akino she was content with spending time with Naruto even though she knew that he still loved Rainer, she was open to sharing so long as he treated them all the same then she had no problem, he was going to have a chance to earn a peerage at one point. Time skipped the afternoon of the day Naruto is supposed to meet Rainer. Naruto was currently in his work uniform in the bakery of the cafe making buns when his boss called for him, hey Naruto take a break cause you've got a guest. Naruto looked up and thought, must be Akino-chan. Washing his hands, Naruto went out to see Asia standing there sticking out like a sore thumb since she was wearing her usual attire, oh Asia is something wrong. Um well I was lonely and I just wanted someone to she replied as she shyly poked her fingers together, all Naruto could do was sigh at her actions but he decided to spend some time with her nonetheless so he clocked out for the day and met Asia at the front of the cafe. So Asia now that we're out here what do you want to do? Naruto asked though Asia only had her attention focused on Naruto's face. Hold still Naruto there is something on your face. Asia took out a handkerchief from her dress and raised it to Naruto's face to wipe something that was on his face but Naruto borrowed the handkerchief from Asia and cleaned his face up himself, turns out that some flour landed on his face but now he was clean. Um well I I am not so sure what to do even though I called you away from your job, Asia replied as the both of them just walked. Well if you don't know what to do then why don't I bring you about some of my favorite places in town. Asia looked up happier and followed Naruto to the arcade where they had fun playing some racing games, fighting games and all sort of other games. They were on their way out of the arcade when Asia stopped for a moment to take a look at something, Naruto looked back to see her over by the crane machines, do you want one Asia? Asked Naruto as he pointed to the machine full of Pikachu toys. Asia shyly nodded before Naruto moved over to operate the machine and a few minutes later Asia happily walked out of the arcade with Naruto and the Pikachu toy in her hands, thank you Naruto I'll always treasure this, Asia was truly thankful that someone had given her such a nice gift. With the day almost done Naruto decided to take Asia back to her church, Naruto thank you for going out with me today. He he don't worry about it Asia were friends right, and that's what friends do, Asia had a few tears fall from her eyes before she nodded. Yes we're friends. Thank you Naruto, Asia replied as she hugged Naruto. All my life I've never had one friend so thank you for being my first, she cried out into his shoulder while Naruto just returned her embrace, I understand the feeling Asia, no Naruto. You can't let your own personal feelings get in the way of what is the situation right now she's a nun while you're a devil, we can't be friends. Alright then let's dry those tears then Asia it's getting dark and I think your church may send people out looking for you soon. Asia cleaned up her tears and Naruto brought her as close as he could get to the church before his phone vibrated so he had to cut the trip short and had Asia head up to the church by herself. That night, Naruto was already there at the meeting place and sat down by the fountain waiting for Rainer to make her appearance, suddenly feeling someone wrap their hands around him Naruto crooked his head back to see Rainer in her human outfit hugging him, hey there Rainer, I missed you. I missed you too. She replied as she let go of Naruto so that he could turn around to face her they were about to kiss when a familiar voice called out to Rainer. Well 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 I must say Rainer you have done an excellent job in tricking the target out into the open. Turning to the voice Naruto could see Donaseek standing there along with the fallen angel from before, 
Another girl that had blonde hair and last but not least there was a guy with white hair and a crazed look in his eyes. As for Naruto he couldn't believe it, he turned back to Rainer and saw that she had fear in her eyes, I didn't tell them anything Naruto-kun I swear. They had been caught meeting by the other fallen angels or rather the fallen angels most likely knew about them meeting here ever since they met the last time. Hey hey now that we've got him can I kill him please please. The crazed man begged, the black haired fallen angel nodded and so the man drew out a sword hilt and a gun, now devil time to die. The crazed man charged for Naruto who brought out his sacred gear to defend himself, oh ho ho so the devil actually has some skill in defending a. Well that's good cause I would hate for this to get boring. He said as his sword hilt suddenly produced a blade of light that just hit against the shield that Naruto formed. Naruto struggled against the blade for a moment before he managed to push it off and punch the man in the face sending him flying back, oh oh wow that really hurt. But my blood is now boiling to tear your skin from your body so want you let me devil san. Taking out his gun the crazed gunman shot a bullet at Naruto which was so fast that he didn't even have a chance to block it, the bullet entered his thigh sending him to the ground gasping from the pain, oh so devil san doesn't like my bullets huh. Well that's good cause they're bullets of light and I am sure that they'll light up your day. He replied before breaking out into maniacal laughter. Naruto. Rainer screamed as she ran up to him but she was stopped by the other three fallen angels. Freed take care of the boy she is ours midelt stay here to make sure he gets the job done. The blonde girl nodded before perching herself up on a tree so that she could see all the action. Seeing that there was going to be fight Rainer transformed into her fallen angel form to fight off the other three while Naruto just managed to pick himself up again, his leg was still in pain. Rainer, come on critical bracer give me power. I need power to protect her. He thought when suddenly his critical bracer glowed with light and exploded, awakening. As the light faded Naruto could see that it turned from a simple fingerless glove to a full gauntlet that had some kind of empty bar running from his palm down. WH what is this? Oh ho so the devil has gained an increase in ability huh? Well good cause I want this fight. Freed laughed out as he charged Naruto with his blade of light this time Naruto was ready and raised his hand to block it and when he did the empty bar on the palm side of his sacred gear began to fill up. Damn you devil san, why don't you just die? Freed screamed out slamming his sword against the shield was also firing his gun, all having no effect on the shield. Finally the bar on Naruto's sacred gear was full and Freed was getting tired from attacking Naruto with no effect, Freed you loser let me show you how to finish him off. The blonde fallen angel made a pink light spear and charged at Naruto who raised his arm to defend himself, and thankfully the shield came online at the right moment so Midelt's light spear just hit the shield sending Naruto skidding back until he hit a tree, Gur I can't hold on much longer, if only I could do the Rasengan. The bar on Naruto's arm began to blink until the jewel that was on Naruto's palm lit up, overburst. Before Mitelt could dodge a huge sphere similar to the Rasengan but way bigger expanded from Naruto's palm and in a flash of light Mitelt was consumed by the sphere and in front of Naruto was nothing but a crater that had a rounded bottom, as for Naruto he stumbled to the ground exhausted the bar on his sacred gear was now empty. Wow who'd have thought a devil like you could have such a powerful ability. But nonetheless the world has lost a great asset, ha ha ha. Freed gave a moment of silence before he exploded into laughter until he calmed himself down, but alas the laughter had attracted the attention of one girl. Naruto. Naruto looked over to who called his name but he could have sworn that the girl had blonde hair as his vision returned to him he could finally make out who it is, a Asia. Said girl ran up to Naruto and tried to help him up but was stopped when a shot from Freed's gun nearly hit her, stop right there missy. Freed was wagging his fingers looking ashamed at Asia. Don't you know that the boy before you is a devil? And as you know devils are our enemies so what are you doing helping him? Asia looked down at Naruto with a little fear in her eyes before she ran up and blocked Freed's path to Naruto with her body. I don't care. Naruto is my friend. My only friend and I won't let you kill him even if he is a devil. Freed shrugged his shoulder. Oh well no skin off my back. He aimed his gun at both of them but before he could fire a shot, another shot rang out from the side which hit his gun knocking it out of its path and hitting the ground next to Asia. What? Freed turned to the side to see soldiers who had their guns trained on him. Oh my this is getting exciting though it may be a bit too exciting for me, Freed bowed to everyone before he disappeared, 
I shall see you again Devil San don't ever think you are safe. I will find you and I will kill you slowly and painfully. Sir we've stopped the target from killing them. A soldier reported as they moved into the area. Good secure the target and scan the other one we could use her in some way. A soldier approached Asia with some kind of device which began to rapidly tick. The soldier looked over to Glasses who nodded. Bag this one too. He ordered as soldiers came and tied Asia up. As for Naruto he was carefully sedated by combat medics, placed onto a stretcher, secured properly and moved onto to an armored vehicle along with Asia. Just as the soldiers were ready to move out, a seal appeared on the floor and Rias along with Akino appeared with Rainer who floated down next to them, Naruto. She screamed out and saw the soldiers immediately point their guns at the entire group. Open fire, open fire. Soldiers who were able to immediately open fire upon the entire group but their bullets never touched them for Akino managed to erect a barrier around them. Shit, they've got a barrier about them hold your fire. Hold, glasses ordered as he took out a remote and ordered the other soldiers to fall back to a safer firing distance with the armored vehicle. Lighting crackled in Akino's finger when she saw that the vehicle moved out, I would avoid doing that devil Sam. Glasses held his hand over the button on the remote all the while he slowly inched backwards. Retreat now, or I will kill everything in the immediate area devil, angel or otherwise, Glasses had the look in his eyes that just said, I will do it so why don't you try something that will force my hand. Rias had a look of anger on her face at the loss of her servant, I would advise you to return him to me or else, Glasses shook his head in denial. Then you leave me no choice. Rias charged up a spell while Akino shot lighting and Rainer threw a light spear at glasses. Damn it they called my gamble, no matter I still have the remote, all of their attacks never hit glasses for they were blocked when he pressed the button and T-armored figures that looked similar to Naruto's nexus form wearing weird armor stood in front of him their attacks shrugged off by the armored figure. Take care of them, glasses ordered before he got behind the armored figures and ordered a full retreat of all soldiers in the area. The armored figures managed to hold off Rias and her peerage until their visors began to blink and they disappeared, leaving Rias, Akino and Rainer alone in the area. Rainer slipped to the ground and was about to go after glasses but she was stopped by Akino who held onto her hand, Rainer you should nt go after Naruto alone. But Rainer wasn't going to hear it and wretched her hand out of Akino's grasp, who are you to tell me what to do? I love Naruto and he would do the same for me, for any of us. But before she could continue her rant Rainer felt a stinging sensation across her face, Akino had tears in her eyes, D don't you ever say that, I I care for him the same way but we have to face the facts at the moment, Naruto has been taken away by the SDF at the moment and we have no idea where their base is, if we go about randomly searching for him then we may become targets for the SDF. Rainer closed her eyes and agreed to what Akino was saying. She collapsed to the ground and cried while Akino comforted her at the same time Rias was thinking about what they could do to rescue Naruto or where they could have taken him. After a while she came to the conclusion that there were too many places they could hide him but suddenly she realized who they could go to for help. Akino I think it's time we paid my brother a visit he should know where the SDF has taken Naruto. Naruto slowly woke up to find himself staring straight into a white light, his mind was a complete mess, he had no idea where he was. Huh, wh what's going on, t the last thing I remember is, Asia. Naruto remembered that Asia protected him with her body from that crazy guy, he moved to pick himself off of whatever he was lying on but he just couldn't move, something was keeping him down. Finally the light moved out of the way and Naruto was now looking into the eyes of someone wearing a mask and goggles, sir it seems that the subject is currently awake, what should we do? Our orders from the top said that they're not ready for him to be awake so just keep him sedated until further notice. Make sure that when they do pick him up he is under level 5 guard and has everything on him the higher ups apparently want to start on plan G as soon as adjustments are made to the others. Oh and when you're done sedating him check on the girl make sure that she's still alive ever since she got here she's been screaming her head off and it's giving me a headache whenever I go down to check on her. Yeah it'll do just that after this. One of the guys in a mask injected something into a tube that entered Naruto's bloodstream and before he knew it he slipped back into unconsciousness. With Rias, Akino and Rainer. Rainer had insisted upon going with them to see Rias' brother but because she was a fallen angel she wasn't allowed to so she did the last thing that Rias expected. Rainer offered herself to become a devil, 
Rias tried to argue back that by doing so she would most likely be looked down upon by some of the other devils because of her fallen angel's aspects. But Rainer didn't care, if she became a devil then she could be together with Naruto. Rainer kneeled in front of Rias and asked her to accept her as one of her evil pieces, seeing that there was no way to dissuade Rainer from changing her mind Rias accepted Rainer as her final pawn. With the deed done Rainer stood alongside Rias, when all were close to Rias, she opened a portal that sent all of them to the underworld, when the seal disappeared they found themselves in front of large official looking building, Rias walked up and opened the large double doors to reveal a silver haired lady wearing strangely enough a French made outfit. Rias Sama, the lady greeted, I did not realize that you would be visiting us today, may I know why you are here? The lady asked in a polite voice. Ah yes sorry for the intrusion today Grafia but I need to see Nisan right now. The silver haired lady seemed surprised by Rias request nonetheless she brought them through the building until they arrived to another set of large double doors though these were colored red like Rias hair. As Grafia opened the double doors Rainer was not sure what to expect of her new master's brother who was Rias explained on the way and was the leader of the four great satans meaning that he was extremely powerful so she was expecting some kind of serious hard ass that was always able to take charge of a situation if there ever was one and if based on how serious Grafia acted then he was most probably going to be even worse than that. When the doors finally swung open it revealed a red-haired man who Rainer could say looked similar to Rias if she were a male wearing a set of armor that was beautifully designed and he was reading a joke book. Grafia sighed and went up to the man and bonked him on the head once with a horizon, this is essentially that fan that they use to whack people on the head, causing him to drop the book in surprise at the hit, Sears X Sama, you have guests. Sears X quickly hid the book away before turning his attention to the group entering his office, Arias it is nice to see you again. Sears X left his seat and came around to hug Rias while Akino and Rainer bowed in respect to the man. And it is nice to see you too Akino, Akino returned the compliment before Sears X turned his attention to Rainer. And you must be my sister's new servant I welcome you to her family if she hasn't done so, Rainer was surprised by how polite he was since she used to be a fallen angel. Now then Rias what can I do for you today? Sears X returned to his seat and folded his fingers together as Rias walked up to a seat in front of him and sat down Akino and Rainer standing by her side. Nisan I would like to know something about the SDF, Sears X eyes hardened for a moment before they turned back to normal. Why would you want to know something about them Rias? They have taken one of my pawns and I intend to retrieve him but I don't know where they could have hidden him. Sears X sighed before he got out of his chair and stood behind it looking out onto his backyard. I knew that this day would come but I kept many details from you Rias especially when it comes to the SDF, Rias looked surprised by what her brother was saying. Nisan what are you saying? If your servant has been captured by the SDF then I am afraid that he may be gone, tears wanted to fall from Rainer's eyes but she managed to keep them in as Sears X continued his explanation. The SDF they are unscrupulous when it comes to what they do. Angels, devils, fallen angels and monster that have been captured by the SDF have never been seen again rumors going around say that these monsters have been used as experiments to test out weapons that the SDF has made to defeat us. If your pawn has truly been caught by them then for all we know he may be gone, I am sorry Rias but you will just have to let him go and if not then I have explicit orders from father to stop you from going after him. Sears X placed a hand on Rias' shoulder to comfort her. No, you're wrong Naruto won't be gone he promised that we would stay together. Turning over Rainer had apparently exploded with emotions, Sears X stared into her eyes and saw an insurmountable amount of love and devotion from within her. Akino had some though it was slightly less and even Rias had a little bit of it within them though it was nowhere near the amount the girl had. Sears X nodded before he returned to his seat and took out a paper and began to scribble down something when he was done he stood up I have something important to do so I will leave this very important piece of writing that is in no way connected to the SDF here can I trust that you won't look at it Rias. Rias sadly nodded before Sears X excused himself from the room. Once he was gone Rias lifted the piece of paper and saw what it had written on it. If the SDF has captured your servant for a purpose then they would most likely be located in the heart of the city that is under our control. Spies that I've sent out to investigate weird monster signatures have reported an unusual presence of supernatural energy in that area comprised of many different beings. If you are going then be sure to be stealthy when entering for this would not be the first time they have met a Grimori. Thank you Nisan. 
Rias quickly pulled Akino and Rainer together before casting a teleport spell that sent them back to the clubhouse. As soon as they were gone Sirzex stepped back into the room, was that wise Sirzex Sama? Sirzex nodded his head, as members of the Grimori family we cannot bear to lose someone that is under us and if I know my sister then she already has a plan to save her precious servant and if she doesn't then she does have that girl and Akino to help her along with the rest of her peerage. Though just in case be on the lookout for anything Grafia, being close to our servants is a weakness that we all share but when the time comes it is also our greatest strength. Grafia nodded before the both of them returned to their normal duties leaving Sirzex alone in the room looking out the window. The SDF must be planning something, if they've made a move like this then I will have to talk to Falbium to ensure that we are able to handle it, hopefully he is at his office and not lazing about somewhere in the underworld. The Clubhouse as soon as the teleporting seal disappeared Rias and Akino searched the room and pulled out a map of the city and along with Rainer they began to come up with a plan to save Naruto and if possible any innocent monsters that the SDF had captured. Many hours later, with the sun coming up, the members of the occult research club finally realized how long they had spent coming up with the plan to save Naruto. I think that this is enough for today Akino, Rainer go to bed and well meet again when it's night time. I'll tell Kiba and Akino to meet us later tonight so that we could go over the plan with them. Akino and Rainer wanted to argue but Ayan closed that door before it even opened, so Akino decided to show Rainer to one of the spare rooms that she could use for the time being until proper arrangements could be made for her. Akino even lent her some clothes to wear until she could get some. Before Rainer turned in she took off the necklace and held it close to herself. Don't worry Naruto will be together soon I promise. Akino laid in her bed thinking about Naruto and how she was going to get him used to the idea that one day he could come to love both her and Rainer while it was still technically legal under the devil law. As for Rias she was cursing both the SDF and Naruto, the SDF for stealing Naruto from her and Naruto for getting kidnapped by them, but before she turned in for a few hours of sleep she called in that Akino, Naruto and herself would not be attending school and to get someone to inform Kiba and Kaneko to meet later tonight. Later that night, Kiba and Kaneko arrived to the clubhouse to find Rias, Akino and Rainer dressed up in an all-black attire resembling the stereotypical image of ninjas, Umbushu what are you doing and why are you dressed like that? Kiba asked before both he and Kaneko had to catch clothes similar to the one that they were wearing. Put those on now Kiba, Kaneko we have a mission to do, and this is Rainer my new pawn, you can get to know her later after the mission. Going by the serious tone that Rias was speaking and they knew that this mission was of some importance to her. This was also when Kaneko noticed that someone was missing from their group, Rias Bushu where is Naruto-san? That is when Rias took a second to pause and catch her breath, that is who we're going after, Kiba and Kaneko looked at Rias with questioning looks and even though they didn't say it Rias knew that they wanted answers as to where he was. Very well then Kiba and Kaneko take a seat. They did just that as Rias sat on top of her table, last night Naruto was kidnapped by the SDF after he was caught in a trap by some fallen angels, Rias looked over to Rainer who looked down in shame before she continued, so now we have to go and rescue him, from information that I have gathered Naruto is currently being held in the center of the city so we will need to be stealthy as possible. And now Kiba and Kaneko understood the urgency of the situation. Rumors that they heard from other devils said that monsters that the SDF captured were never seen again and if they captured Naruto then they were possibly doing who knows what to him, so what is the plan to rescue Himbushu? Rias brought out a map of the area that had markings all over it, Akino and Rainer will first set up an illusion spell around the main building of the SDF so that the people outside don't know what is happening and the SDF also can't call in for more reinforcements from their other facilities, Rias pointed to the various markings around the building to indicate where the spell should be set up. Once there we have to ensure that we can locate Naruto in the building and for this part we will use our familiars to do the job, once inside they will find the security room or wherever they keep the information. Once they get the information back to us then we will begin our infiltration into the building, everyone nodded. Alright then we'll move out when it gets a little later into the night, Kaneko can you come over here for a moment? Kaneko followed Rias to the back where the both of them had a discussion on how she should lead the familiars into the facility due to her small stature. A while later, Bushu the illusion spell is currently in place, the familiars and Kaneko can begin their infiltration of the facility. Rias brought her hand up to her ear and spoke, 
Kaneko you can enter the facility now find that information according to the plan all right. Hi, Kaneko answered as she quickly unscrewed the screws keeping the grate in place and hefting a bag over her shoulders, which carried all the familiars except for Kiba's cause it was in the sky looking out for anything strange. Kaneko crawled through the air ducts until she came to a four-way intersection, opening the bag she freed the other familiars including her own and gave them their directions, okay now let's split up if you find something then just say so. The familiars nodded before they separated into their separate direction, Kaneko's got on her shoulder as Kaneko crawled through the duct until she finally came to the end of the duct where she found a way to the ground below, okay Shiro good luck. Kaneko took out a piece of rope and tied it around Shiro's body, opening the grate a little Kaneko slowly lowered Shiro to the ground when Shiro touched the ground he quickly crawled out and made sure that the way was clear before Kaneko dropped to the ground as well, Bushu I am in. All right then Kaneko remember follow the plan, as Kaneko searched through the various rooms to find the security office she remembered what Rias told her, remember Kaneko when you find the data room or security room search for Naruto first, once you've found him search for any weapon that the SDF may be developing, and if you deem it harmful to us destroy all evidence of it. Before she could open the last door a message came in from one of the other familiars, so Kaneko had to retrace her steps and find the other familiars. A while later, Kaneko arrived to the security room where she found the guards knocked out in Akino and Rias familiars waiting for her, quickly taking the spot next to the computer she began to search for the location of Naruto. Prisoner 42 which was recently captured alongside Prisoner 43 have been transferred to level B4 for experimentation. This must be Naruto, Kaneko opened her link with Rias and told them the possible location of Naruto and as soon as she was done she continued to go through the computer file finding anything about weapons that the SDF may be developing. One file finally caught her attention, she tried to open it but found that it was protected by a password, before she could try to crack it someone or something crashed through the wall and began to fight her. With Rias minutes before Kaneko was attacked, all of them used the duct that Kaneko used to enter the building, and following Kaneko's directions they made their way towards the lift where they made their way to level B4. As they made their way down all of them began to feel sleepy, th this gas is, everyone hold your breath. Rias ordered but it was too late as they slumped to the ground. Unknown amount of time later, all of them began to slowly wake up when they found themselves tied up with some kind of cuffs in the cage with them they found the blonde girl that was taken with Naruto, Kaneko with her clothes slightly torn and by Kiba's side was his sword but when he wanted to touch it, a shock ran through him. They tried to break them off but it found that they just couldn't do it. Well well it seems that all of you are awake just in time for us to show you our latest experiment. I hope you don't mind the tight space but the girl wanted to see her friend so much so we decided let's all meet him together. Also those cuffs around your hands have been made from palladium so don't try to use any of your magic. And before I forget you may call me Captain Lee. Looking up the entire group saw the light glinting off of the glasses that the man wore. Soldiers came by the cage and using a forklift they moved it further into the room, where they saw Naruto heavily weakened from something, his eyes were half-lidded and he was sweating heavily, Naruto. Hearing the voiced Naruto looked in the direction of them and saw Rainer and everyone else, he shakingly raised his arm and touched the glass that he was in, R. Ray Rainer, H. Help. Lee went over to one of the men standing by the consoles in the room, now then ladies and gentlemen may I present to you humanity's greatest defender. All around the room lights were turned on and they pointed at something in the room, when their eyes managed to adjust to the brightness they saw that the figure in the middle of the room was in fact a human sized statue that had a diamond shaped object on its chest with some kind of markings as well. Th that's a all those in the cage looked at the figure in shock. Yes this will be humanity's greatest defender, Lee pressed a button to reveal the armored figures from before. For so long our experiments have failed due to the imperfect monsters we captured but now we have the perfect catalyst to bring Subject 09 to life. So the monsters that you captured were turned into those those things. Rias spat out. Yes they were supposed to be humanity's perfect protector but those monsters did not have what it took to fully bring the statue to life but nonetheless we now have this boy and the energy that he has is the perfect match so begin the transfer. The scientist pressed a button on the console he was working on and it activated the machine that Naruto was in which began to transfer energy from him to the statue. Arg, ah, screamed Naruto as he squirmed about in the space that the machine allowed. Naruto, 
Stop it, stop it, you're going to kill him. Rainair screamed as she crashed her shoulder against the cage but the bars just wouldn't budge. Akino looked on with horror as Naruto's scream chilled her blood. Rias and everyone else looked on with concern as Naruto screamed. Finally the statue began to glow and in a single flash of light it blinded all of them. When the light faded they saw that the statue now had gray skin, red lines running down its body and it had bronze cuffs on its ankle and wrists, rise Terranoid. The statue's eyes lit up and the object on its chest turned green when it was done. Terranoid raised its right hand straight up while its left hand was bent at an angle pointed upwards. Hurrah! It cried out in a deep voice. All right then let's try out Terranoid's abilities, and it just so happens we have a batch of volunteers right here. Lee waved his hand, the soldiers and scientists retreated out of the room leaving Rias, her peerage and Asia in the room with the Terranoid and its companions. The cuffs around the devil's wrists were released and the cage collapsed, the Terranoid took up a battle stance before bringing its arms into an L shape and fired off a beam at them. Thankfully Akino managed to bring up a shield to protect them, unfortunately for them the beam was too strong and shattered the barrier. As for the armored figures they took a battle stance and charged past the Terranoid to engage them, hold them off while we get Naruto. They nodded as they each took one armored figure while Rias prepared to engage the Terranoid with the help of the blonde girl. With Kiba, he managed to pick up his sword after the shock effect on it was disabled and charged at the armored figure. The figure swung its arm at Kiba so he went under it and successfully managed to dodge its punch. Using his sword Kiba tried to strike at the figure's chest but the armor on the chest was too strong and stopped the blade's stab. Deciding to try another move Kiba brought his sword about and aimed instead for the creature's leg which got the result that Kiba expected. The armored figure fell to one knee and groaned, now I know your weakness. Disappearing in a burst of speed that the creature just could not comprehend Kiba appeared behind the armored figure sheathing his blade the wrists and ankles of the creature sprayed out what Kiba suspected was the creature's blood before it collapsed to the ground dead. But before he could go to help Naruto a fist shot out and connected with his face sending him stumbling back, another figure now faced him, hey looks like there is more of you. With Kaneko, I will have my revenge, Kaneko brought up her fists and charged at the armored figure. As for the figure it brought up its arms and blocked her punch but the force of the punch did push the figure back a little bit, now it was its turn to retaliate by sending a punch at Kaneko. Kaneko managed to successfully catch the punch and using her full strength she brought the creature up into the air where it flailed about before she threw it to the side, landing in a crash that created a crater the figure slowly stood up before it charged at Kaneko once more. Not learning from its previous lesson Kaneko did the same thing once again and slammed the creature into the ground once more before she sat on the creature and slammed her fists down onto it. Slowly bit by bit the armor began to crack and with a final punch it broke through the armor and Kaneko's fist destroyed the color timer on it. As she drew her fist out another figure stepped up to replace the fallen one, Kaneko just cracked her fists and readied herself. With Akino, she had an angry look on her face as she faced the creature in front of her. I will destroy you for hurting Naruto-kun. Lightning crackled in her hands as she brought it down onto the figure. The armored figure took the lightning while walking forward but before it could reach Akino it tumbled to the ground dead but before she could go help Naruto another figure stepped out to face her. None of you will stand in my way. Akino cried out as she sadistically released lightning onto the figures blocking her path. With Rias, Rainer and Asia. They had stepped up to face the Terranoid. Rainer take the girl and help Naruto, this is mine. Rainer nodded as Rias charged up a spell and shot it at the Terranoid who did a fist-shaped beam attack that was weaker than the previous beam blast so Rias spell one and connected with the Terranoid's shoulder who grunted in pain and backed up a bit. Using this as a distraction Rainer and Asia ran past the Terranoid who steadied itself and walked towards Rias sensing that her power was the greatest and therefore the greatest threat. When Rainer and Asia reached the pod holding Naruto they found that it was still locked so Rainer decided to go over to the console that the scientist was working at and looked among the buttons she couldn't find the button to release the locks so she made a light spear and destroyed the console, disengaging the locks on the pod. As the pod hissed open Naruto stumbled out straight into Asia's arms where she began to heal him but found that there were no wounds on his person. Th this means that they drained Naruto's essence. How could they? They are monsters. Naruto, are you alright? Please answer me. Rainer asked her voice laced with concern. 
Naruto eyes opened a little bit and upon seeing both Asia and Rainer standing over him he weakly nodded as he tried to stand up but fell to the ground again. B. Bushu. Everyone needs help. He weakly mumbled and tried to stand up one more but Rainer and Asia held him down. Please Naruto don't move I I can heal you and besides you can't think to fight anything in your current condition right. Asia begged tears running down her face she finally had a friend and she wasn't about to lose him. No Naruto if you do this then you're going to end up killing yourself, I I don't want to lose you, you swore that you would never let go of me, Naruto used his hand to wipe Rainer's tears away while Asia wiped her own tears away before Naruto could see them. D don't worry Rainer, Asia I won't leave either of you I promise. Naruto moved to open his jacket. He brought out the evil thruster and got both Asia and Rainer to help him to stand up just as they heard Akino cry out. Place please Nexus help me, give me the strength I need to fight. To help those that are close to me. Pulling the evil thruster from its sheath Naruto pointed it in the air. Yeah, in a flash of bright light Nexus appeared though this time he was colored light gray, silver and had some black lines running along his body. Back with Rias minutes before. She had successfully beaten the Terranoid as its color timer began to blink and it laid on the ground desperately trying to get up all around them were craters that were formed from either Terranoid's mist beam blasts or the weaker shots from Rius that it managed to deflect. Now you shall suffer the fate for harming my precious servant, she brought her hand up to cast the final spell but all around them from the destroyed statues of the armored figure dark energy began to rise forth from their destroyed bodies. Akino, Kiba and Kaneko stopped for a moment to look at them. It's a cluster of the darkness from the souls that the SDF implanted within these bodies. You humans, dabbling in the unknown arts and implanting our essences our very souls within these bodies, now you shall know true fear as we take your greatest defender and turn him into our avatar. The souls flew towards the body of the kneeling Terranoid and entered its color timer. The Terranoid cried out in pain as the souls entered its body, when all the souls entered the Terranoid's body shot up and began to twitch, no no no. Lee yelled as he slammed his hand against the consoles in the observation room. Back with Rius, Akino, Kaneko and Kiba gathered next to Rius winded from their fights against the armored figures and watched as the Terranoid began to slowly transform into some grotesque creature that had rocky skin and six things on its back. Ha! The transformed Terranoid, Zelgonoid, cried out in a twisted voice as he looked into the air and fired a beam from its forehead that went straight through the building before it took a fighting stance facing Rias and her peerage. In the observation room, while at the same time Captain Lee and the SDF personnel watched as the Terranoid was taken over, our plan has been ruined. Call for a full evacuation, get everyone out of here now. I want a level 5 guard on those containers they cannot be harmed we still have one last card to play and since Terranoid's reveal was a success subject 10 will most definitely succeed as well, send those containers to our secondary location until we can come back here and ensure the safety of the facility. The soldiers nodded as they began to pass the order through the comms system. Back with Rius. Be careful everyone this creature seems different now, it seems far stronger than before, they nodded as they charged at the Zelgonoid. Kiba drew his sword and tried to strike the Zelgonoid on the ankle but the Zelgonoid saw it coming and kicked Kiba in the face send him to the ground. The Zelgonoid twisted its foot on Kiba's body before bringing it down once more making a crater around Kiba and making him cry out in pain and continued its path towards Rias. Kaneko came forward and threw a punch at the Zelgonoid but the Zelgonoid was much faster than her and blocked her punch. Kaneko was surprised by the speed of the creature since the armored figures were not this fast or strong. Rarg. Zelgonoid brought its foot up and kicked Kaneko in the side sending her skidding a little to the side right into the hands of Zelgonoid, it wrapped its hands around her head and slammed her into the ground behind of it Kaneko tried to pick herself up again but Zelgonoid's strength was just too much and she couldn't move. Ha! Zelgonoid charged energy into its fist and brought it down on Kaneko's back. Ah! Kaneko cried out her voice laced with pain. When Zeldenoid's fist left her body they could see that she had a burn the size of Zeldenoid's fist on her back. The Zeldenoid gave a creepy smile, its head tilted at an angle as Akino stepped up to face it, you will not get near Bushu. Akino shot lightning at it but the Zeldenoid countered with its L-shaped beam blast that destroyed Akino's lightning in mid-flight and headed straight for Akino, she raised her hand to block it but the beam never hit as Nexus appeared next to her and pulled her out of the way. Ak Akino are you alright? Nexus asked pain and fatigue evident in his voice, 
Akino nodded as Nexus stood up, faced Zelvenoid and took a stance. Zelvenoid smiled once again as it took a stance and made its way towards Naruto who just blocked its punch but before Nexus could counter the attack Zelvenoid gave a kick that sent Nexus stumbling backwards. Before Naruto could recover from the kick Zelvenoid came up to him, picked him up and threw him back to the ground where he landed with crash. Zelvenoid gave a twisted laugh and stomped on Nexus as it did so Nexus cried out in pain. Naruto, Akino and Rias cried out as they threw spells in the direction of Zelvenoid. Akino's spell barely caused Zeldenoid to flinch whereas Rhea's spell managed to get Zeldenoid's attention on her. Turning its head Zeldenoid cried out before it fired its beam weapon at Rhea's. She put up her strongest barrier where it was stopped for a brief moment before Zeldenoid pushed itself forward powering the beam up and breaking the barrier. Rhea's eyes widened when she saw that the powered up beam broke through her barrier and braced herself for the pain but the beam never hit. When she opened her eyes Rhea saw Nexus using his body to block the shot. Naruto, A hey, are you all right? She could hear Nexus color timer blinking meaning that he was near his end. D don't worry Bushuai I am fine. Nexus stumbled a little before he fell to his knees. Naruto, Rainer yelled as she made a light spear and threw it at Zeldenoid's back, but it dissipated when it struck its back apparently Zeldenoid had some kind of shield protecting its back. Zeldenoid turned to face both Rainer and Asia. Nexus heard Rainer call out so he shakingly came up to his feet and charged at Zeldenoid his intent to tackle it to the ground, he succeeded and the Zeldenoid was moved back a little bit. Rarg, screeched Zeldenoid, it steadied itself by planting its feet firmly on the ground. Zeldenoid knew that it was in the better position to fight so it brought its elbow down on Naruto and just went to town on his back, once twice it took Zeldenoid three times to bring Nexus to the ground, once their Zeldenoid gripped Nexus' body picked him into the air so that he was flailing and he slammed Nexus' body to the ground hard creating a spider web crack and throwing some of the rubble onto Nexus' body. Ah, gasped Nexus as he shifted his body in a desperate attempt to pick himself up making the debris on his body drop to the ground. Rias and her peerage tried to attack Zeldenoid but Zeldenoid wasn't having any of it so it formed some kind of barrier that stood between them and him. It came over to Nexus, picked him up and began to tighten its hold around Nexus' neck. Everyone else tried to break through the barrier but it just wouldn't break and Rias couldn't not risk using her full power as the building may collapse in on itself if the spell failed or she could end up destroying Naruto as well. Gah, I I can't beat him. Nexus hands wrapped around Zeldenoid's forearm trying to pry them apart but Zeldenoid's own strength overpowered Nexus' strength. Naruto don't give up please. You promised that you want. Cheered Rainer and Asia with everyone else adding in their own support. Come on Naruto-kun don't give up. Cheered Akino, I haven't told you how much I cared yet. You can do it Naruto. Play Nexus opening AU. Yes, everyone is cheering me on I I can do it. Nexus grip on Zeldenoid's forearm increased. Yes I believe I can win. I want to see Asia, Rainer and everyone smile again. So I won't give up I'll keep on fighting because that is my oath as Naruto Uzumaki. Declared Naruto his whole body began to glow with light or rather it was faint blue light. When the light finally faded they saw that Nexus was now colored blue, black and silver, gripping Zeldenoid's forearm Nexus easily pried Zeldenoid's hands off of his neck and twisted it making Zeldenoid cry out its voice in pain. Ha! Nexus delivered a kick to the abdomen of Zeldenoid making the creature grunt in pain knowing that it was hurt Nexus continued with three more kicks and on the third kick it let go of Zeldenoid's hand. The force of the final kick sent it flying to the other side of the room crashing into the wall leaving a Zeldenoid shaped crater in the wall. When Zeldenoid dropped to the ground it screeched in anger before throwing forth beam attacks. Nexus charged at Zeldenoid and jumped over the first one before going right through the middle of the second and third blasts landing with a roll as he continued his charge when he reached Zeldenoid he punched it once before proceeding to grab Zeldenoid by the neck and threw him to the other side of the room. Zeldenoid landed with a cloud of dust but managed to stand up once again. Rarg, it cried out as it lifted both of its arms and flew into the air. That monster can fly, Nexus gasped, you can to all you have to do is imagine it, the sensation of lifting off of the ground and then you can do it, a voice replied, following its instructions Nexus began to slowly lift it off the ground and before he knew it he was actually flying. Meanwhile Zeldenoid brought both of its arms and began to make a sphere of concentrated energy aimed at Rias and her group, I won't let you do anything to them. Nexus cried out. 
Nexus flew up and punched the sphere destroying it and injuring Zelgonoid in the process. Zelgonoid was sent crashing to the ground parts of its skin was now cracked while Nexus managed to land it on the ground upright though he did skid back a little. This was when Zelgonoid talked in a raspy distorted voice, how could you have gotten stronger? Your strength should have been completely sapped by me. I am better than you. You may have been better than me a while ago but that doesn't mean that you'll always be the best. I've got friends behind me and I'll do whatever I can to protect them. Because they've given me the strength to fight. Nexus flew into the air followed by Zelgonoid as they began to fight in mid-air while they continued to climb to the top of the building. Punch after punch, kick after kick both Zelgonoid and Nexus were evenly matched. Zelgonoid threw a punch and Nexus blocked it with his forearm before backing off and kicking Zelgonoid sending the creature crashing into a bunch of desks that were laid out on the upper levels, Greg. Zelgonoid released a flurry of beam attacks all aimed at Nexus, seeing them coming towards him Nexus headed towards the ground and blocked, deflected as many as he could before giving one kick that deflected a beam right back at Zelgonoid who screeched with pain before landing on the ground even more damage than before. Now it's time to finish this. The voice cried out. But how? Asked Naruto. As Zelgonoid struggled to get itself up, its color timer began to blink. Follow my instructions carefully. Nexus did as instructed. He brought his left arm down then he crossed his right arm over it making energy form on his bracer forearm. Hey. Once completed he brought his hands up and allowed the energy to build within his bracers. Raw. Before finally raising them up and bringing them into an L shape. Haya. From Nexus' arms a white-colored beam appeared and struck Zelgonoid straight in the chest, stunning the creature as the beam continued to enter its body Zelgonoid took a few steps forward and when the beam was fully fired Zelgonoid groaned once before falling backwards exploding into a shower of rocky pieces, this is the over-ray storm my strongest attack use it well my host we shall talk more when you are well rested. Thank you, thought Nexus before he fell forward and fainted turning back to Naruto in the process. End song unknown amount of time later. Naruto woke up an unknown amount of time later to find himself staring into the familiar ceiling of his room, a cloth on his head and his blanket over his body, huh. Wh the last thing I remember was being in the building, wait where is. He shot out of the bed awakening the person lying by his bedside, hello Naruto don't move you're still tired from the fight with that monster. Naruto looked over to see Rainer staring into his eyes, but before they could do anything Rainer came over and tightly hugged Naruto, I I am so glad that you're alright Naruto. Naruto returned the hug and comforted Rainer as tears fell down onto his shoulder, don't worry Rainer I kept my promise but where is everyone else? Rainer wiped her tears away before she replied, oh yay Bushu pulled some strings with your parents and now both Asia and I are staying with you. Naruto nodded his head for a bit before he realized what she said, wait what? However before he could say anything else on the matter a thud was heard outside of his room so both of them opened the door to see Asia on the ground a chair a few inches away from her, and she was rubbing her butt in pain, oh why do these things always happen to me? Naruto could only sigh as he moved to help Asia lift the chair, no Naruto you just woke up you should nt be doing work like this. But Naruto simply waved it off, don't worry about it Asia besides I think that I've been asleep long enough. Thank you Naruto my room is right around the corner, Asia happily replied. Naruto nodded as he brought the chair to her room leaving Rainer and Asia in the hallway, their eyes connected for a moment and as they stared each other down lightning soon appeared to be clashing between the two. Asia you should nt have done that, Naruto is still recovering from his fight against that monster and if he overworks himself then he may get more injured, Rainer stated a little sweetness in her voice. Don't worry if Naruto gets injured again then I will be there to heal him and he himself said that he didn't mind helping me. Asia happily countered as her devil wings appeared and began flapping lifting her a little off the ground but Rainer managed to pull her down before she hit her head on the ceiling. See after the fight against the Zeldenoid Asia wanted to become a devil to be with her friend so Rias reluctantly made her a bishop, and since she and Rainer had no place to stay unless they counted the school clubhouse which would be weird to have the regular students see them living there. Since they were already that close to Naruto, Rias decided that the second best place for them to live would be at Naruto's house without his input on the situation though. Thankfully his parents believed their story that Naruto disappeared for a few days because he had gone on a trip to introduce two new transfer students, Asia and Rainer, 
to the area and had to stay close to both of them so that they didn't get lost, and now the school decided that Asia and Rainier should stay at his house because they were such good friends. But too bad for Naruto they were still going to punish him for calling to tell them that they were having guests over, even if he was dead tired from getting dragged around the city. A bell rang so the two of them raced downstairs to open the door to reveal Akino, and in her hand was a lunchbox simply wrapped in a cloth handkerchief, high as Naruto-kun awake yet. If not then he'll just leave this here for when he wakes up. He's not awake yet, the both of them replied. Asia, Rainer who was at the door. Naruto hollered from the top of the stairs. Both Asia and Rainer chuckled nervously, oh would you look at that Naruto is awake now. Then I am sure you won't mind if I come in to give Naruto his lunch, Akino walked past the two girls to see Naruto standing at the staircase. Hey Naruto-kun I brought you some food to help with your recovery. Akino called out to Naruto. As for Asia and Rainer they stared each other down and mentally communicated their complaints. Why did you have to say that now Akino will know that we were lying to keep her away from Naruto? Naruto walked down the steps to see that Akino had already set up the lunch box in the living room, revealing the rice, soup, fish, grilled meat, and preserved vegetables. Oh hey Akino thanks for dropping by to check up on me and wow that looks really good. Akino beamed with happiness at the compliment. Oh thank you Naruto-kun, I made it for you so I put some extra care and attention into it now come and have it before it goes cold. Naruto happily took his place next to but before he could pick up the chopsticks Akino snatched them from him and decided to feed him. Now say ah, she cooed, a piece of fish in between the chopsticks. Naruto blushed a little bit at her antics that caused both Asia and Rainer to rush to the kitchen where the sound of plates clattering and snatching of ingredients could be heard, Akino I can feed myself. Don't be silly Naruto-kun you're a recovering man now let nurse Akino feed you or do I need to wear a nurse uniform to get you to eat, she mused, seeing that it was a losing battle Naruto relented and let her feed him. After taking a few more bites both Rainer and Asia appeared in the living room with sandwiches, here Naruto-kun have some. Since both of them said the same thing they turned to each other lightning flashing between their eyes. Um thank you. Both Asia and Rainer picked up a sandwich and tried to feed Naruto, but Naruto took the sandwiches from their hands and first took a bit out of Asia's, it was surprisingly alright for a sandwich made in about 5 minutes with who knows what then came Rainer's sandwich. For some reason Naruto just couldn't shake the feeling of dread as he picked up the sandwich, but not to hurt Rainer's feelings he decided to take a bite. Well here goes, Naruto took a bite of it, and soon. Whoa since when were there two Asias? All three of them looked at Naruto weirdly, as he stood up and wobbly walked a few steps to the kitchen, then fell down before he even made it there. Naruto. All three girls ran up to him to see that his eyes were swirling and he was babbling on about flying saucers and how they were going to probe his anus. Rainer just what did you put in the sandwich? Asia asked as they moved Naruto over to the sofa and placed him down gently, placed a towel over his head and covered his body with a blanket. Rainer used her fingers to count the number of things that she put into it and by the end of her counting spree she was banned from stepping into the kitchen. Her sandwiches were also safely disposed in the nearest hazardous material bin. In an unknown location, Commander Akari, Captain Lee's superior and the guy he was talking to on the phone, was facing a panel of men wearing uniforms that had the patch of the GSDF, Global Supernatural Defense Force, and from the looks of things these gentlemen were not happy. Commander Akari what does the JSDF, Japanese Supernatural Defense Force, have to say for itself? Not only did your subordinate lose the failed experiments but you even lost one of the precious statues that we created based on the final subject that you still hold at your facility we might add. Commander Akari looked down in shame, I am sorry for the incompetence of my subordinate council members but even though the Terranoid was taken over by supernatural forces, this still proves that the experiment was a success and even as we are speaking my men are ensuring that the utmost care is taken to awaken the final statue. You had better hope so for your sake Commander Akari, but still we must commend your efforts in acquiring the energy needed to run the final contingency these efforts will be forever remembered when humanity can finally rest easy from all these supernatural elements. Thank you for the compliment councilman, however before the conversation could continue a GSDF soldier walked in and passed a phone over to Commander Akari, it's for you sir. Commander Akari nervously took the phone and listened to whoever was on the other line, yes Commander Akari speaking. Captain Lee what is the meaning of this I am in an important meeting with high command. 
What do you mean there was an accident with the awakening process? It disappeared. As the conversation continued Commander Akari's face drained of its color and when he hung up his entire face was white. Now then Commander Akari would you like to explain this little incident that we heard about or do we need to tell you what it was? The voice from the center of the room roared. Commander Akari could only stammer desperately trying to find a logical excuse to use but his mind was not working at the moment. It appears that the JSDF is not as competent as we thought in dealing with these supernatural forces, expect some new arrivals within the week Commander Akari, you would be relived of your duty but your accomplishments have deemed you necessary to us so we shall allow you to continue with your command. Thank you for your kindness councilman, but know this you are on a very thin line at the moment, do not fail us again. The councilman turned to leave the room leaving Commander Akari alone contemplating their words. And I think that this is a good place to end but before you go any further how's about an omake? Omake. Naruto had successfully recovered from the nightmare and delusions that was Rainer's sandwiches and was now in the bathroom soaking in the hot water when he heard quarreling outside of the door. I should go in with Naruto, we're already close enough to be considered lovers. And that's why you should let me further my friendship with him. Asia countered. Rainer always seemed to say things that Asia could successfully counter with for some reason. Naruto quickly got out of the water and locked the door to the bathroom while they quarreled. When he got back to the tub and laid back he could feel something soft behind him. Hum I never knew that the bathtub was soft. Oh my Naruto-kun thank you for the compliment. Naruto jumped out of the tub and raced over to the side to see Akino seated at the back of the tub. A hey, Akino. WH what are you doing here? Naruto sputtered out as the door to the bathroom came crashing down. What is going on here? Asia and Rainer turned to see Akino in the bath naked while Naruto was in the corner covering his delicate parts. Both of them rushed up to Akino and began to quarrel among each other while Naruto took this chance to sneak out of his bathroom and back to his room, man this is crazy. I know that both Rainer and Akino like me but now Asia, I got to stop rescuing girls it's going to kill me one day. He pointed out. Later in the night he felt something slip besides him opening his eyes he saw that Asia had slipped besides him, so lightly shaking her awake he got her back to her room before he returned to his room, locked the door. And went back to bed, Sai looks like ill have to keep my door locked from now on. Just as he was about to fall asleep he felt a pair of wings cover him, cracking open his eyes once again he saw Rainer this time and his window was open. Sighing he also got her to return to her room and this time he also locked window but just as he going to go to sleep again he felt a weight on top of him as well as on his arms. Opening his eyes he saw Akino on top of him, Asia to his right and Rainer on his left, how the heck did they get back in here, still it is kinda comfortable so might as well go with it, he thought as the three girls snuggled closer to him. As the four of them slept the night away Rhea appeared in Naruto's room searching for Akino and looked on at the scene jealousy evident in her eyes, moving over she touched Naruto's cheek which got him to stir a little and purr in content, Rhea gave a soft giggle when she heard Naruto purr, he 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 that's so cute, I am glad that you are safe. Rhea then focused her attention on Naruto's lips and closed the distance between them, she lightly kissed Naruto's lips before she left to her home. I wonder if maybe one day I can find love like Asia, Rainer and Akino have, anyone else would be better than that man. So how was that for an omake? Yeah kinda short I know but hey I think that it should successfully lighten the mood, hopefully you readers caught the plot points in this chapter that dropped like an asteroid on earth. And before anyone comments yeah Rias was kinda underpowered for this chapter it's all my fault but I swear it won't happen again, writer's honor. Poll is still up so if you haven't voted yet, why don't you go there and just leave a little vote it will just take a minute. Sona Citri and her peerage just could not believe it, they had received an alert in which a strange monster signal had been sighted in her family's territory and so they accepted the job to go and investigate it, if needed then they would also take the beast into custody. What they did not realize was that they walked straight into an SDF trap, bright lights flashed all around them blinding them temporarily and bullets flew forth from the guns of the SDF soldiers, Sona used her magic over water to create animals that went straight towards the bullets in the hope that they could protect her peerage from harm. All of the bullets were stopped by her water animals which then proceeded to attack the SDF soldiers along with her peerage, shit that girl has some kind of water magic and we're getting annihilated here fall back and call in for support. 
The soldiers began to retreat in an orderly fashion covering each other's back. I repeat coordinates are at Area 12 Section 3 bring the rain. I repeat bring the rain. The calm officer yelled into his headset as the soldiers retreated far back, seeing the soldiers retreat Sona recalled her water animals and peerage. Don't relax for the moment, this is the SDF we're talking about here I think that they are planning something so stay alert. Sona ordered as her peerage spread themselves out but still stayed within arm's reach of each other. Soon silence reigned in the area, Kaichu, I think they're gone now, Saji replied dropping his stance momentarily. No, they're planning something but what could it be? Sona asked. She entered her usual thinking pose when suddenly she heard something really faint. Wait don't move does everyone hear that? Her peerage opened their ears and closed their eyes. For a moment they could hear something faint when they finally realized what that noise was it was too late. Quickly throw up a however Sona was cut off from her instructions when a bomb exploded above them covering the entire area in something. Some time later. When Sona and her peerage finally came to they found themselves locked in some kind of cage with handcuffs around their hands and in the cage with them was a fox girl wearing a low-cut outfit. As soldiers of the SDF went about their business which included men in white suits cleaning the area up, Sona picked herself up and tried to break the handcuffs but found that she couldn't do it, she got the rest of her peerage to try and break them but none of them could even dent the metal. A soldier came up and knocked his rifle butt against the cage bars. I wouldn't try that if I were you those handcuffs are made of palladium so you guys can try to break them all day heck you can even use a whole century palladium was made to stop you supernatural creatures from using your weird powers, and as an added guarantee palladium was also used in the construction of that cage so good luck on getting out. With that said the soldier returned to his duties, and Sona and her peerage sat down and contemplated a plan to get out of the cage, you can try but it's useless. All of them looked over to the fox girl and saw the sad look on her face, once the SDF catches you no one will ever see you again. That may be for you but Kaichu is extremely smart she'll definitely find a way for us to get out. Saji replied as they returned to making a plan. However it was interrupted by the appearance of a camper carrying a flashlight who came out to check out the strange noises he heard, hey who the hell are you soldiers? And what the hell are you doing to those kids? Two soldiers turned to each other and apparently passed a message between themselves, the soldier quickly took out a gun and fired something at the hiker's neck, the hiker held his neck in pain before he stumbled a little and fell to the ground unconscious. The soldier holstered his gun and walked up to another soldier, take that guy to the memory police and make sure that they do their job. The soldier saluted his superior officer, carried the guy over to an armored vehicle and carefully did everything to ensure that the guy was still alive while also making sure that the guy remained unconscious for the duration of the trip as the vehicle drove off. As for the superior officer he turned to a few of the soldiers that were assigned on patrol duty, as for you guys, what the hell were you doing? I thought you guys were on patrol. You were supposed to keep watch for any civilians. We were sir. If you were on patrol then how the hell did some random guy just stumble onto the site? You know what I don't care what excuse you have I want you to find that guy's campsite and if there are any people there then make sure that they stay at their campsite, also mark the location of the campsite so that the memory police can put the guy back to where he was. The soldiers saluted their officer before marching out and began their search for the campsite. While this was happening one of the soldiers in a biohazard suit carrying some kind of device began scanning the area to make sure that they managed to clean up all traces of magical energy when his scanners suddenly picked up an increase of magical energy that just kept increasing and increasing and it finally destroyed his scanner, w what the hell was that? The soldier drew his gun just in case before he moved the bush aside to see what could be sending off such powerful signals. Before the soldier could see the creature that was sending off the powerful signal a bright light suddenly blinded the soldier and a wave of energy sent him flying backwards towards the camp. Sona, her peerage and the fox girl saw the bright light, and as it slowly faded they finally saw the figure, was standing at over 100 feet tall, it had two eyes that glowed bright with light, in the center of its chest was a some sort of symbol that had a blue light in the middle of it and last but not least even though it was dark everyone could see that the symbol in the center gave off enough light to show that its body was colored blue with some parts silver, Haya. All of them heard the monster cry out, the soldiers began to slowly back up, F fire fire at will. N no cancel that order and fall back, comms call in for heavy support now. The soldiers continued firing at the giant all the while they stumbled backwards into the forest, 
but the SDF soldier's bullets just bounced off of its body. When all the SDF soldiers disappeared into the forest, the giant kneeled down gripped the cage's ceiling and tore it off allowing Sona, her peerage and the fox girl to get out of it. Suddenly in a flash of light the giant shrank down to human size and used his hands to destroy the handcuffs around their wrists. Are all of you all right? The giant asked in a gentle tone while Sona, her peerage and the fox girl rubbed their wrists. Sona looked into the giant's eyes and gave a grateful smile, thank you for helping me and my peerage can we know your name? The giant gave a silent pause before replying, Cosmos you can call me Cosmos for now. Well Cosmos thank you for helping me and my peerage, I am Sona Citri. It was no problem Sona San, I just saw that you were in trouble and needed help, but now I need to go. Cosmos took a step back, raised his hands up and flew off into the sky leaving Sona, her peerage and the fox girl alone. Come on we should get back to the clubhouse, will you be alright by yourself? Sona asked the fox girl but she was already gone so they just teleported back to their clubhouse the giant on their mind. With Cosmos, as he was flying away suddenly he felt something chasing after him, turning back he saw a fighter right on his tail, command I've found the target permission to engage. Wing 1 weapons free I repeat weapons free. Wing 1 reduced his thrust and opened fire upon Cosmos with a flurry of bullets, Cosmos turned about and brought out a shield to block the bullets. Damn it he's got a shield. Opening fire with heavy ordnance, from the front of Wing 1 a missile was fired forth. What? The missile headed towards Cosmos and exploded in front of him, the force of the explosion sent him tumbling towards the ground but he was able to stabilize himself in midair which was when another fighter came in from behind and opened fire upon Cosmos. Wing 2 here I've reinforced Wing 1 and both of us will now engage the target. Affirmative Wing 2 take the target down but make sure to keep collateral damage to a minimum or else the memory police is going to be on your case. Roger that command. Wing 2 tailed Cosmos who flew up into the clouds to lose Wing. Wing 2 lined up his shot and when he finally got a lock, I've got a lock on him missile away. Wing 2 fired a missile, seeing this Cosmos fired a beam from his hand that destroyed the missile in flight but he forgot about Wing 1 who fired a missile and a flurry of bullets straight into the back of Cosmos. Arg! Cosmos painfully grunted as he was sent spiraling towards the ground. Command the target is down I repeat the target is down. Send in the ground forces to pick him up, Wing 1 called in as both of them circled around the area keeping an eye on Cosmos' body from the sky even though they couldn't land. The next day, Naruto was in class with his friends talking about stuff while he wondered where Asia and Rainier had gone that morning since his mother made them breakfast which Naruto packed into a lunchbox since they weren't around and it most probably wouldn't last. But now his thoughts were on the talk that he had with the spirit of Nexus. Flashback Naruto now found that he was floating in some kind of plane all around him was darkness, suddenly in a flash of light that caused him to cover his eyes. When the light faded he saw Nexus and he was giant-sized, welcome young Naruto to your inner mind. If this is my inner mind then why is it so different Nexus? Naruto asked as he looked around. It is because of my power, within your very self it has now been split in half to allow both me and the Kyubi to exist without tearing you apart. Well I guess that is sort of reassuring that I am not just going to explode, thought Naruto before he began to talk to Nexus, so Nexus why have you called me here? You have managed to unlock a portion of my powers so well need to train you in their art, if the fight with that monster proved anything then you will need to train harder and I am just the teacher for you, now then let's start, Nexus touched Naruto's head and it transformed into his Nexus form. But wait I am a devil you don't seem like something that would teach me. I hold no prejudice against any race Naruto, Naruto wanted to ask why but he was cut off by Nexus continuing his part of the conversation, I have my reasons which you will know in time if you want I can try to train you in using you critical bracer but I am not sure how much I can teach you. Thank you Nexus, I'll do my best to learn from you, Nexus nodded as the both of them began their training. End flashback. However he was brought out of his thoughts when there when their homeroom teacher walked in with her clipboard as usual. Good morning students today we have two new students so I'd like all of you to warmly welcome the both of them to our class. That was when Naruto face palmed himself, oh no don't tell me. Hey Naruto what wrong? Asked Shinji as the two new students walked into the room and taking a look around they spotted Naruto seated in the corner. Good morning Naruto-kun. 
Asia and Rainair greeted, waving at Naruto who just waved back. So this is where they went in the morning huh? He thought nervously chuckling to himself while both Asia and Rainair introduced themselves to the class. Wow look at that blonde girl she must be a foreigner. She also really pretty, and that other girl is really beautiful as well. Looks like that list of popular women may need to be rewritten. All right class, you can comment on them when it's lunch time so since both of you know Naruto then I'll have him bring you about the school during lunch, the teacher announced before assigning both Asia and Rainer seats that were close to Naruto so that he could help them if they had any trouble before she proceeded with her lessons for the day. Lunch time. Time passed pretty quickly and before they knew it, it was already lunch time. So we'll see you later all right Naruto, you've got two guests. But Naruto stopped his two buddies and got both Shinji and Kai to join him, Asia and Rainer for lunch before he had to bring them about the school. So finding a seat under a tree in the school ground they decided to break out their lunches, so anyways I've got something extra from home so everyone can take a little bit of it. Naruto unpacked his stacked up lunch box to reveal so many items that it made both Shinji and Kai drool. Wow you made all of this by yourself. Well not really my mom made it since we were supposed to have extra guest over but they never showed. Naruto eyed both Rainer and Asia. The both of them could only chuckle in embarrassment as for Kai and Shinji they didn't notice Rainer and Asia's actions their attention was on the food. Well then don't mind if we do. Kai and Shinji proceeded to grab something from the lunchbox and bite down on it exclaiming how it was really good. So Asia san how do you like our town so far? Kai asked, um well I think it is a really nice place from what I've seen, in actuality Asia was speaking the truth for the most part the town was really nice but then she met the SDF and her perspective on some things changed when she saw firsthand what they did to Naruto. Well that's good and you guys are really lucky to have Naruto show him around and don't look at me funny just because I am his friend but you won't find a better person, Shinji agreed with Kai and began a new topic. So anyways Rainer san have you ever been to this school? Rainer looked at him with a questioning look wanting him to explain in further depth. Well you see a while back Naruto came to school and described a girl that looked like you so I was just wondering if you had ever been in the area because Naruto made a bit of a fuss over it. Um well technically yes I have been here so that I could be with Naruto, but then I had to move away because of some family business, it's still not fully cleared up but we've managed, Rainer shifted closer to Naruto and hugged his arm making Asia pout. As for Kai and Shinji they knew something was going on between the two of them, oh ho ho so Naruto's finally got himself hitched huh. Rainer blushed before giving them a very subtle nod, this pushed Asia over the edge and she came and grabbed one of Naruto's hand, that's only because Rainer san has had more time with Naruto give me enough time and Naruto will come to love me too. Kai and Shinji had to stifle a laugh when they heard Asia say that. Ahahaha we see what you've got going there so we've decided that we'll leave you three lovebirds alone, if you get what we mean. Kai and Shinji dusted themselves off and walked back to the school building where an outburst of laughter could be heard. Kai, Shinji ill get the both of you later. Naruto screamed in his mind when he suddenly felt something on his back. Good afternoon Naruto-kun, I am sad that you didn't invite me to have lunch with you, Akino appeared behind Naruto wrapped one of her hands around Naruto's neck while the other hand lovingly caressed his cheek. Akino-chan, what are you doing here? But Akino simply giggled, oh what's wrong Naruto-kun I just wanted to be with you for lunch time and I also message for all of you, Bushu wants all of you to come by the clubhouse after school she has something to show you, Rainer in Asia. With that said all of them turned their attention to the food laid out before them with Akino, Rainer in Asia all trying to feed Naruto at once. Naruto could have sworn that the lightning flying from their eyes could probably power a small city. After school, Naruto, Asia and Rainer gathered at the clubhouse after the three of them stopped by the cafe to pick up a snack for everyone, and now all of them were snacking on buns while having some of Akino's tea as they waited for Rias to appear. Soon enough she did and behind her was a large group of people, good afternoon everyone, I would like to introduce you to Sona Citri my friend rival, the president of the student council and another high-class devil. The entire room stood up to greet her, Asia and Rainer leaned over to Naruto, hey Naruto-kun, Naruto who is that girl behind Bushu? Well she that is Sona Citri senpei and she's the president of the student council in fact all of the people with her are part of the student council. 
It is nice to finally meet your peerage Rias, will you introduce us to your newest members? Sona asked making Naruto raise an eyebrow. Sona Sitri is like Bushu, a high-class devil and the heiress for her clan, Akino commented while the teen with short blonde hair standing next to Sona raised his hand to hide his laughter. Saji do not laugh at your junior both me and Rias decided to turn a blind eye to each other so it is natural that they don't know about us, and that boy over there has been through far worse as a devil than you Saji even though he is your junior. Saji was left wide-mouthed at his president's comment, so um Kaichu what do you mean by he's gone through much worse? Well Rias here has told me about their adventure to save him in that battle he fought against what could be considered his dark counterpart. Not to mention the fact that just after he was turned into a devil he was attacked by two fallen angels on two separate occasions, if only he could be my servant then I could finally beat Rias. Rias pouted as she stepped forward close to Naruto, that is too bad because Naruto is my precious servant, and besides let me introduce you to my bishop Asia and my other pawn Rainier. Pleasure to meet all of you, both of them said. Likewise, Sona's peerage acknowledged. And then of course we have Naruto my first and best pawn, Sona looked at Rias impressed by her proclamation. It's nice to meet all of you too especially my counterpart, Naruto stuck his hand out to Saji. Same here names Saji and one day it'll be the best, Saji gripped Naruto's hand hard which in turn got Naruto to tighten his grip on Saji's hand, soon they were separated by their respective side. Hey he's got a great grip, both Naruto and Saji thought their respect for one another went up a little bit. With introductions done, Sona gave orders to get her peerage to leave first before she went outside to have a talk with Rias, and Rias returned alone a few minutes later. Now then with introductions out of the way, Naruto. Naruto pointed to himself when Rias angrily called his name, stand up. Um hi Bushu, you are going to be punished for being caught and going out with Rainier in Asia despite my order. For this entire week starting today you are going to teach Rainier and Asia our trade by joining them in passing out flyers, Naruto sighed he completely forgot about that, he tried to argue his way out of his punishment since both Asia and Rainier were devils now but Rias wasn't having any of it. So now he was out with a bag Rainier and Asia by his side. All three of them were standing in front of a letter box. Alright so the first thing we do is to use the scanner to see which humans have a high amount of greed. Once we find them we place the flyer in their mailbox and hope for the best, remember the scanner is used to find humans that have a high amount of greed so that they will hopefully summon us, and don't forget Kaneko, Hiba, Akino, you, me or even Bushu may be put into danger if we accidentally misplace one that lands in the hand of an exorcist, fallen angel or worse yet an angel but don't worry no pressure. Naruto continued onwards with his job while Asia and Rainier were standing there shaking thinking that they were going to mess up when they heard Naruto call out to the two of them, Hey Asia, Rainier don't worry about anything that's why I am here so come on we've got all these flyers to give out and they won't do it by themselves, Asia and Rainier smiled before running up to Naruto, insert montage of Naruto, Asia and Rainier putting in flyers. A while later, Naruto, Asia and Rainer came back to the clubhouse where they found Rias, Kiba, Akino and Kaneko standing around, Kiba had his sword by his side and Kaneko had her gloves on, everyone what's going on? We've received word about Rainer's past allies and they have reappeared in our territory so we've got to hunt them down before they hurt more people, all three of them nodded as they stepped close to Rias who teleported them away. When the red light disappeared they saw the carnage that the fallen angels caused at some kind of bunker-like structure. All over the place were bodies of SDF soldiers some were torn in half while others had holes in places, some armored vehicles that were about to enter the facility had their backs torn to bits from the looks of the markings they weren't caused by light spears at all because the bodies of dead monsters were laid about the area as well. Naruto moved over to the truck and felt the markings while everyone else checked out the condition of the soldiers in the area. After checking the back Naruto moved to the front of the vehicle and saw that there was a big scar through the windshield and a dead soldier with a hole in the driver's seat while the passenger seat had another dead soldier a gun in his hand, him this soldier has been most probably stabbed by a light spear. Naruto reported back to Rias, Bushu the markings on the back of the truck errant made by light spears whereas the front was most probably where the fallen angels began their attacks. Rias bit her thumb a little so it seems like the fallen angels may most probably have some allies now, everyone keep a watch out for monsters, what about the condition of these soldiers? Asia. 
Asia shook her head as she gently let a soldier's head down, they're gone. I see, everyone split up and search for them Kiba and Kaneko you go into the building and check it out but don't go too far in. Naruto and Akino check out the forest while me, Asia and Rainair will check the surrounding area, remember stay alert and watch out for anything, everyone nodded before they separated into their groups. Please stay safe Naruto. The forest. Naruto had his gauntlet out while Akino was by his side. The both of them walked through the forest paying attention to everything around them, when suddenly a rustling noise caught their attention, quickly turning around they saw that a small rabbit just hopped out of the bush, the both of them proceeded to drop their weapons, it was just a rabbit, I thought that it might be something else, an image of a giant fire breathing cannibalistic monster popped into his head. Oh don't worry Naruto-kun if any monster pops up then you've got me here to protect you, giggled Akino as the both of them continued on. Don't worry Akino it won't be like last time I can protect myself now, Naruto replied as they just continued walking suddenly Naruto felt something and fell to his knees, gasping for air, wh what is this? Naruto are you alright? Akino asked as she casted a healing spell of him. But Naruto just stood up, why yeah I just felt something and I don't know what it could have been but I just have to find out what it was, it felt familiar yet different. Akino was concerned about Naruto. He had been through so much so early on in his devil life so she tried to stop him from going to find out what it was thinking that it may have been another trap by the SDF since they were so close to one of their facilities but Naruto just not could be persuaded from his chosen path. So with reluctance Akino allowed Naruto to go and find whatever he was search for while she would continue searching the west half of the forest while Naruto would search the east side of the forest and if they did find anything or needed help then they should just yell loudly. Naruto trudged along the road following his gut when suddenly he heard something that only he knew, Rag why do you keep attacking me and Tamamo? I don't know who you are so stop it. Don't lie to us boy, we know who you are so lying to us won't save you or that girl. The voices that talked seemed similar to Naruto, one of them belonged to the female fallen angel that attacked him but the second voice was the one that just could not be. Take this Rasengan. And what followed was the painful scream of the lady that was most probably blown back by the power of the Rasengan. And no it can't be, the only people that can do that jutsu are me and that thrice damned pervert, Naruto thought angrily as he gripped his gauntlet and ran towards the scream. Once he was in the area he hid behind a bush as he listened to what was going on, wow Goshujin sama sure is the best. You made that evil thing run away. This voice belonged to someone else that Naruto didn't recognize but from the sound of things this girl held her master in high regards. The figure wearing a scarf and loose kimono grew a tick mark, Tamamo go home. It's dangerous out here, who knows what other creatures could be out here. No Goshujin sama, I can fight alongside you too, Tamamo let a little bit of her fire magic light up showing her companion that she could handle herself. Fine but just be careful, I don't want you to get hurt. Suddenly a yell could be heard as Tamamo glomped her companion. Oh I knew that Goshujin sama cared about me. Tamamo stop it. Tamamo's companion pried himself out of Tamamo's hug, dusted his clothes off when he stopped all movement and got Tamamo to be quiet. Hey whoever is hiding behind that bush come out. I know that you're there. Naruto's body froze for just a moment before he slowly stood up and faced the figure. When I opened my eyes I saw myself in a futon in some kind of hud my clothing by the side and the cosmo pluck was also there, I moved my hands to calm the splitting headache that I was having and found that it was bandaged up, oh you're awake now. Turning my head over I saw that fox girl that I saved from those soldiers in the forest, in her hands was a bowl that one supposed carried food, I tried to sit up but found the pain from my gut too painful. Be careful you're still too injured to be moving so quickly like that. The fox girl chided as she casted a spell that soothed the pain in my gut. Ah thank you for helping me, I am Naruto Naruto Uzumaki and where am I? Naruto asked perspective switch from first person to third person. Oh yes how forgetful of me, my name is Tamamo no Mei of the Kitsune clan but you can just call me Tamamo and I took care of you after those bad men shot you down, right now you are in my village, replied Tamamo before she got Naruto to sit down on the futon. But wait I thought you were Cosmos. How can you be Cosmos and Naruto at the same time? Tamamo asked tilting her head to the side in an extremely cute manner. Oh my real name is Naruto but when I transform I become a warrior known as Cosmos, 
Naruto replied before he reached over to the side and picked up the Cosmo Pluck explaining how it worked to her. Oh I see so that's how it works, well anyways I brought you some food so please enjoy. Tamamo happily offered the bowl of food to Naruto who accepted it and began to eat it while Tamamo just looked at him her fluffy tail swishing behind her. When the food was finally done Naruto stood up and began to unwrap the bandages around him, hey what are you doing Goshujin sama Your wounds haven't healed yet so you should nt be taking them off. Don't worry Tamamo I heal pretty quickly see, Naruto turned around to show Tamamo his body and from Tamamo's point of view she could see that the wounds that were inflicted on his body were indeed healed, she also wanted to take this chance to take in the sight of his body but was unable to because of Naruto telling her something, also Tamamo don't call me Goshujin sama just call me Naruto. Oh no I don't want to do that cause I love you. And we're going to get married one day, she happily declared, making Naruto's eyes bug out. Wh what? He began to babble talking to himself and taking strides around the room as Tamamo just watched him walk around her home while she calmly drank some tea, B but how? I didn't do anything to you and, just how and why are we going to get married? Outside of Tamamo's home, oh would you listen to that? I remember the time when my husband was like that but he eventually came to love me as well, another fox lady commented as she walked past tamamo's house cottage with another fox lady at her side the both of them were carrying a basket in their hands oh the young girls these days are so patient if it was me i would have jumped the mons bones already chided the other lady before getting a giggle from the first lady that was the old days girls nowadays want to find their true love back with tamamo oh that's because it is my clan's tradition Whenever we women find a male we like we will identify ourselves as their wives so technically we are already married even though we haven't gone through the proper ceremonies so when you're all better then we can do them. Naruto slumped to the ground and stared into blank space. I am not going to be able to get out of this marriage am I? Tamamo shook her head before her face beamed with a smile. But don't worry Goshujin sama I will take care of you for as long as I live, now are you hungry? If you are then I will go and cook some breakfast, but Naruto just shook his head and returned to his futon where he fell asleep. When Naruto woke up he found Tamamo sleeping by his side her arms wrapped around him, she had apparently slipped beside him sometime in the middle of the night, and if Naruto could make it a point Tamamo was really cute whenever she was sleeping especially when her ears twitched, he moved to touch her ears. Oh Goshujin sama you're awake squealed tamamo who stood up throwing the blanket to the side startling naruto and making him cover his eyes a hey, goshujin sama what are you doing tamamo asked as she peeled naruto's hands off his eyes when naruto finally opened his eyes he saw that tamamo was wearing a white haori that had long sleeves that covered her hands and she also wore a pair of red hakama basically her shrine made an outfit giving a sigh naruto wiped the sweat from his forehead oh it's um just nothing he replied as he stood up and tied his kimono right. Goshujin sama il go and prepare some breakfast now all right. Tamamo stood up and took her leave, leaving Naruto alone in the room. Sai what am I going to do? He thought as he sat on the porch of Tamamo's home, he couldn't remember much about what happened to him. All he could remember was that he left the elemental nations through the tunnel then nothing he woke up in a crater in the middle of a big forest his pack was gone. Though he still had the cosmo pluck by his side, Sadly he was naked so he stole some clothes from a group of campers. He didn't like it but he needed them more than the campers did. After that he wandered through the forest he found himself in and ended up at some kind of containment site where he saw some soldiers and they were holding students against their will in cages along with Tamamo, but before he could silently approach to help a soldier in some kind of white outfit was getting closer to the bush he was hiding in so left with no choice he transformed into Cosmos scaring the soldiers away and rescuing them from those soldiers. As he was leaving the area to find a place to de-transform he was chased by two flying things and got shot down where Tamamo supposedly found him and healed some of his injuries. Goshujin sama breakfast is ready. Tamamo called as she brought a tray out laid with some breakfast items. Taking a seat next to Naruto both of them dug into the food laid out before them, as they ate breakfast Tamamo kept stealing glances at him before a large smile came across her face. Is there something that's making you so happy Tamamo? Naruto asked while Tamamo hid her blush. Oh it's nothing serious Goshujin sama, it's just nice to sit beside you and have breakfast. Naruto's heart fell a little when he heard that, he realized that Tamamo loved him all because he saved her from the soldiers. 
Hey Tomomo don't you think that there may be someone else better than me? Tomomo set her bowl down for a moment and turned to Naruto. Nope, Goshujin sama may not have feelings for me but it'll make sure that we do love each other. Now let's finish up here then we can take a walk around the village and get you things that you need. Naruto nodded before he continued to eat and when he finished his meal he helped Tomomo wash the dishes. The rest of the day went simple as Tomomo shopped for items that he would need Naruto took note of the village. Most of the people living in the village had fox parts though there were a few normal people around but the kitsunes far outnumbered the normal humans. Goshujin sama over here. Naruto went over to Tomomo's side where she draped a scarf around his neck. What do you think about this? For when it gets cold, Tomomo had draped a long light yellow scarf around his neck. Hey this looks pretty nice Tomomo but can you afford it? Tomomo nodded reassuringly. Oh are you and her newlyweds? The stall owner asked. Naruto and Tomomo nodded shyly. Oh then let me offer you a discount on a happy wedding. Naruto and Tomomo looked at each other before they bowed and thanked the stall owner for the discount. A while later, Naruto and Tomomo were at home resting alongside each other drinking tea watching the stars. After asking around the town for a little bit apparently Naruto found a job to help Tomomo with living expenses. He decided after some thinking that he would stay with Tomomo life in the village was peaceful and nobody really cared where you came from so long as you came in peace. When she found out she jumped for joy and glomped him in the middle of the village, while all the people around sighed at the heartwarming sight. All was quiet when suddenly Naruto felt something in him resonate, he didn't know what it was but he just had to find out as sweat formed on his forehead, Tomomo stay here there is something I need to check out. What is it Goshujin sama Tomomo asked her voice filled with concern before she wiped the sweat away from his forehead. I I don't know but just stay here in case. There is something I need to check out and I don't want you to get hurt. However Tomomo grasped onto his arm not wanting to let go of him. No, I don't want Goshujin sama to get hurt either. Naruto looked down into Tomomo's yellow eyes that were just about ready to burst into tears before he thought of something. Hey Tomomo see the scarf around my neck. Tomomo looked up and nodded. Then there is nothing to be afraid of. As long as I've got the scarf with me then I've got nothing to worry because I know that you're with me and I'll make sure I come back. You promise. I promise. He replied before he hugged her and left in the direction of his feeling. After a while Tomomo couldn't shake the feeling that something bad was going to happen to Naruto so she decided to follow his scent. With Naruto, he jumped through the place stopping every so often when he heard something coming in his direction. When he finally emerged out of the forest he saw at the burning wrecks of vehicles and the dead bodies of men laid out about the area, wh what could have torn these men apart in such a way. He moved through the carnage trying to find anyone that was still alive, he helped. Naruto heard the cry and came upon a soldier that was still alive though he was only hanging on by a thread, what happened here? Fallen angels ambushed us, took out the armored vehicles first releasing them, they they tore us to shreds after that. We didn't stand a chance, suddenly the soldier gripped Naruto's hand and passed something over to him. T tell my family that I I am sorry, the man's hand slumped to the side before the soldier closed his eyes, when Naruto checked the item that the man had given him, in his hands was a photo of the man holding a child in his arms while a lady stood by his side, and all three of them were happily smiling. Naruto rubbed his eyes to stop his eyes from tearing up before he placed the picture in his kimono, Goshujin sama Naruto turned around and saw Tomomo standing there. Tomomo what are you doing here? I thought I told you to stay at the house. Tomomo's ears drooped down in sadness when Naruto yelled at her. I am sorry Goshujin sama I was worried about Goshujin sama so I came to check. Naruto came over and patted Tomomo on her head. I I know I should nt have yelled at you but now we have to get out of here before. However Naruto suddenly turned his head in the direction of the forest. Grabbing Tomomo's hand he went in the direction. End the flashback. And the rest of it was history. After running into the forest they encountered the fallen angel Kalawarner and fought against her, with Naruto eventually beating her. Now Naruto was staring into the face of a doppelganger but instead of wearing a kimono and scarf this Naruto wore a uniform of some sort and had a blue gauntlet that had a large empty bar on it. Now to differentiate between the different Naruto's the kimono Naruto K Naruto while the uniform Naruto U Naruto. A why are there two Goshujin samas? Tomomo asked looking between the two Naruto's. 
K. Naruto stepped forward and pushed Tamamo back. Stay back Tamamo, that person is an imposter, or worse he could be an old enemy of mine. You, Naruto narrowed his eyes at K. Naruto, I could say the same thing here. Tamamo get out of here I have a feeling that things are not going to end well here. Tamamo wanted to argue once again but she saw the face that K. Naruto was making and decided to follow his orders this once, and fled back to the village. With Tamamo out of the way both Naruto's circled one another for a while thinking about how to proceed with their fight, they watched each other's movement knowing that even one move could give their opponent an advantage. Suddenly seeing you, Naruto's arm drop slightly K. Naruto charged forward a Rasengan in his hand. Yu Naruto allowed the Rasengan to hit the critical bracer filling his energy bar when the energy from the Rasengan dissipated the force pushed Yu Naruto back and when he stood back up he had a smirk on his face, now it's my turn. Yu Naruto slowly formed a sphere in his hands according to Nexus instruction when they were training, and fired off a ball of energy at K Naruto though the ball of energy was still small when he thought about it. K. Naruto seeing this jumped out of the way of the ball which exploded behind him and ran at Naruto delivering a flying kick to Naruto before bringing his body about and kicking Naruto with his other leg. Yu Naruto stumbled backwards from the force of the kicks and wiped the bit of blood that came from his mouth, and took a combat stance before engaging him in combat. Punch for punch, kick for kick, Yu Naruto just couldn't land a hit and when K. Naruto decided to counter attack he found that he just couldn't land a hit on Yu Naruto either. Hey looks like we're really too alike right? Yu Naruto asked wiping sweat away from his forehead. I guess so, replied K Naruto. Then I guess it's time to take it up a notch. Yu Naruto reached into his uniform and took out the evil thruster, while K Naruto drew out his Cosmo pluck. When both Naruto's saw each other's respective transformation device their eyes went wide. Nexus screamed you naruto before he vanished in a flash of light and soon nexus stood in his place cosmos screamed k naruto before he too vanished in a flash of light and when it faded cosmos stood in his place when their transformation was done nexus looked down and saw that he was now big nexus what is going on why are we giant sized i don't know naruto but it feels as though something has been absorbed into your body during the fight against your clone after their conversation Nexus turned to Cosmos. So you have one of these forms as well. Nexus nodded before he took a combat stance, with Cosmos following his actions. Hiya, Nexus ran at Cosmos and was about to deliver a chop to Cosmos but Cosmos managed to block it with his forearm before his other hand grabbed Nexus' hand and threw him over his shoulder. Nexus landed with a cry of pain but stood back up and took his stance once more. HRGH Cosmos came forward tried to kick Nexus but Nexus managed to catch it with his hand, as Cosmos tried to balance on one foot he brought his other foot up kicking Nexus hand this in turn led Nexus having to release Cosmos foot making Cosmos land on the ground. Cosmos rolled backwards and pushed his hand out making white energy head straight for Nexus, Nexus in turn used his forearm to deflect the blast before he fired off his own set of blasts. Cosmos blocked the first two blasts by redirecting them to the ground before he brought out a shield that blocked the final blast, so it looks like he has most of the same abilities that I do. Nexus stood up and thought hard, Nexus give me power. The bracer of Nexus glowed and in flash of blue light Nexus entered his second form but it didn't stun Cosmos at all, so you have a second form as well, guess it's my turn as well. Cosmos raised his hand in the air as red energy formed above him before Cosmos brought his hand down, the red energy flowed all over his body and when it faded Nexus saw that the fin on Cosmos head had changed direction and Cosmos body now had a mixture of the color red and blue. T that's impossible, you can switch modes too, Nexus was shocked by what he saw but he managed to compose himself. Cosmos nodded before he took a combat stance, Haya, with Akino. She had continued her patrol through the forest but found nothing that was when she suddenly felt two enormous bursts of power, turning in the direction of the energy, and Naruto-kun. Clenching her fists she made her wings emerge and flew above the trees, upon which her eyes widened when she saw two giants fighting each other, one of them was Nexus but the other one was something similar to Nexus yet so many things about it was different, she flew closer to them but stopped when she saw Rias and everyone else watching the fight. Bushu Akino what is going on? All of us suddenly felt the increase in energy and now Naruto is fighting that other one, 
Rias said as Asia and Rainair held their hands hoping that Naruto would be all right. Suddenly a flash of blue light appeared when it faded Sona and her peerage were standing there, Sona what are you doing here? I felt an increased cosmos. Sona was about to fly forward but was stopped by Rias. You know that thing. Sona nodded while the rest of her peerage nodded as well. Yes Cosmos saved me and my peerage when we were almost captured by the SDF, Sona replied before they turned their attention back to the fight. Back to the fight, both giants were now breathing heavily, damn it, looks like he'll have to use it now. Nexus jumped back, crossed his arms, raised them to his body before he raised them into the air before he brought them down forming an L shape and a white beam emerged but as for Cosmos he focused his hands in the center of his chest and as he did so a ball of red energy grew before he finally pushed forward and released it. Both beams headed for one another before they finally clashed against one another in a mixture of white and red light, neither beam wanting to give up, and in a white explosion both beams were destroyed by one another. Out of the smoke Nexus and Cosmos emerged headed for one another, Stopping a bit away from one another they threw their fists forward and sparks were thrown when their fists passed one another grazing their skin but no damage was done as both of them managed to dodge each other's punch. Pulling their other fist back they punched forward just trying to land a hit upon one another and like before sparks were thrown when their arms passed and the sound of a fist hitting something could be heard. Rias, Sona and their respective peerages watched and waited for the smoke to dissipate so that they could see who won, as the smoke finally faded they saw it. Cosmos' fist was against Nexus' face whereas Nexus' own fist was almost touching Cosmos' face. Ah, uh, I, lost, grunted Nexus before he fell backwards his color timer was blinking fast but before it stopped Nexus' form faded to reveal a wounded Naruto on the ground near the bystanders injured. Naruto, screamed Akino, Rainer and Asia as they rushed forward to check on him, as for Cosmos he looked down and saw the three girls kneeling by Naruto's side healing him. Suddenly a number of missiles and shells impacted, exploded against Cosmos throwing him backwards to the ground grunting in pain. Control this is Talon flight we have found the final subject preparing to engage. Roger that Talon leader use non-lethal shots to engage the target and make sure that you don't destroy it command wants it whole. Roger that control, Talon 1 circled around and fired a shell that impacted on Cosmos shoulder. Talon 2 came around and fired a shell at Cosmos knee, got it. Talon 3 and 4 fired two more shells into the other knee and shoulder respectively, control the shells have hit the target. Activate them. Cosmos shakingly stood back up which was when the lights on the shells attached to his body lit up and began to shock Cosmos, ah. Arg. Cosmos writhed on the ground screaming out in pain as his color timer began to blink. Cosmos. Screamed Sona. She charged up her most powerful spell and fired it at two of the shells. Her spell hit home and disabled the two of them stopping some of the pain that Cosmos was feeling. Reaching down Cosmos ripped out one of the shells and in doing so a bright light came out of his skin before it closed off. In the distance, a figure with twelve gold wings and a few of his other companions who had white wings saw the light. No it cannot be, that is the light. While on another side two men with twelve black wings and ten black wings respectively saw the light and had the same reaction but the man with the ten wings looked down and saw something that made his heart stop, Akino. While on another side four other figures that saw the entire fight between Nexus and Cosmos had only one thing on their mind, th that power and those figures are similar to them. Back with Cosmos, Cosmos stood back up and his entire body glowed red before he released the red glow all around him, Shaw. When the light faded it revealed that the red energy managed to destroy all of the shells on his body. Holding his arms in the center of his body Cosmos suddenly split into four Cosmos, each one went after one of the plane and had their arms wide open as the planes flew right into them but one of the clones missed when it came time to catching the plane and accidentally destroyed the wing of that fighter. Ah, screamed Talon 3 as she tried to pull up but found that she could not, so she reached over to grab her ejection switch but even pulling as hard as she could she still would not eject. Seeing that she was headed towards the trees she covered her eyes hoping that she could crash land properly. She felt a rumble throughout her jet before it stopped moving entirely and when she opened her eyes a few seconds later she saw that she was looking into the body of Cosmos. Are you alright? Talon 3 slowly nodded before Cosmos placed her jet down on the ground carefully. Once the jet was down Cosmos raised his hands up and flew off into the distance. 
Talon 3 was just stunned by what had happened her finger slowly relaxed off of the trigger button and she calmed herself down, I I thought that it was going to kill me. Ran, ran, are you alright? Talon 3 heard her comrades call her name so stepping out of her cockpit she saw her teammates run out of the forest their guns in their hands. Hey everyone, I am over here. Ran's teammates saw her and ran up to her. Ran, are you alright? Ran proceeded to nod. That thing saved me from crashing. Her teammates looked at each other. When they entered the SDF they were just told that the monsters that they were hunting were heartless creatures that would kill any humans so having a monster save one of their teammates especially when they attacked it to begin with. Anyways we should call for pickup now and give our report into command. Whatever that thing did to our jets needs to be looked over we can't get out engines on no matter what. Talon 1 pressed his hand to his helmet and began to call in for pickup as well as clean up while the rest of Talon flight went to Ran's fighter took out a water bottle and passed it to one another as they waited for pickup. With, you, Naruto. He opened his eyes and saw that he was now in the clubhouse Asia was looking over him, oh Naruto you're awake. Asia got up and called Rias over as she helped Naruto up, Naruto just what happened. I I saw myself, all of them looked at Naruto like he was nuts. Explain please Naruto. Naruto nodded before he proceeded to explain everything, hearing the clone of himself fight Kalawarner. Then it went on to the fight that he had with the clone but he wisely left out the fact that the clone could use one of his old abilities and finally he told them about the fight that he had with Cosmos. So it would seem that you now have a clone walking about. This is peculiar. Something like this has never happened before in the history of devils. An evil piece was always just one and not two. Though this may just be an unknown property about the evil pieces system, Rias entered her thinking position. It seems like I may have to do some research on this matter but in the meantime get some rest especially you Naruto you have been through a lot. Rias came forward and patted Naruto's head, if one could look into her eyes they could see the fear of losing him running through her eyes yet at the same time relief that Naruto was alright. All of them complied with Rias order and headed home leaving Rias in the clubhouse alone, she placed her hand over her eyes. So many things are happening recently, I hope that I never lose any of them to anyone but with each day that passes that day comes closer, can I do that to Naruto and the people that care about him just to escape my fate? With, K, Naruto. He laid besides Tamamo as they slept he just could not shake the fact that he saw himself and this clone of himself had similar powers to him. Then came the things that attacked him. When he saved that one he saw on the side was a SDF insignia, so this SDF may know something. Maybe Tomomo knows something about where I can find them but he'll ask her in the morning it's quite late now. He rolled over to his side and was about to fall asleep when Tomomo rolled over to his side and wrapped an arm around him mumbling, Sai Goshujin sama is so warm. Naruto heard what she said and hesitantly wrapped an arm around her as well making Tomomo snuggle closer to him. With Talon flight after they got picked up. Ran was now overseeing the construction of a bunch of new aircrafts that were about to be finished in a few days and she thought back to the incident with that giant, that giant, he meant me no harm yet we opened fire upon him, have we been wrong about them all this time? However her thoughts were interrupted when she felt a tap on her shoulder, looking over she saw Shiori, Talon 4, hey Ran what are you still doing here? Wataru Talon 1, told us to go home and Shin, Talon 2, has already done that besides we've had a long day. Sai the rest of Talon's squadron was so lucky to have been placed on hold in preparation for the testing of the new jet but luckily will be first to fly them. Oh it's nothing really I was just thinking about what happened today, what what if we were wrong about monster and what we're fighting against isn't necessarily evil. Shiori sighed before patting Ran on the shoulder, don't think too much about it Ran we should just follow our orders after all this is what we're supposed to do, now come on let's go and have some fun. Ran gave a smile before following Shiori out, from around the corner Captain Lee stepped out, he had heard what Ran said about the threat he walked up to the railings overlooking the construction, after reading the report and the video footage of the Terranoid fight I I don't know if what I am doing is right as well, if what we were doing is wrong then we're the bad guys aren't we? If we are wrong then I hope that Nexus can find it his heart to forgive us, humanity is definitely its own worst enemy. Captain Lee shook his head before he headed for his home taking a cigarette out on the way home to soothe himself. In an unknown location, a group of men with the GSDF patch were now in a meeting. So according to the Talon flight report they encountered our final subject what shall be done about this. 
he must not be able to interfere with our plans, yelled out one of the men as he banged his fist on the table. The SDF forces will deal with them when the time comes either way the plan will soon come to fruition so it currently does not matter but all of the preparations must be done in the coming days if our plan is to succeed, all the figures in the room nodded. But where shall the plan commence? One figure asked. The plan shall commence here in Japan since much of the equipment that we need is already here so over the next few days have the remaining equipment moved to Japan. Very well then we shall tell Commander Akari about our plan so that he may prepare beforehand, now is there anything else that the council must discuss? All the figures shook their head. Very well this council is dismissed for now, may we reconvene when the plan is in place, slowly one by one the figures disappeared. And well end it there. Okay quick stuff in rapid succession. Naruto was having breakfast in the morning when the news came on. Today on local news the police have still closed off certain areas of Shibuya forests due to an accident that has occurred in the area, reports are still not clear as to what has happened but we go to our field reporter on the scene for more information. The scene on the TV shifted to a news lady standing outside of the forest area a microphone in the air as she brushed the hair that the wind blew away. Thank you Takuya but as you can see here parts of Shibuya forest were entirely closed off for the last few days due to the local authorities but today they have decided to close off the entire and they are being quite tight-lipped about what is going on. But from information that I have been given by the men here it appears that there has been some kind of accident in the park so if you viewers have any plans to head out to Shibuya forest then I would advise you to put them on hold, back to you in the studio Takuya. The scene shifted back to the man in the studio. Thank you Aki now on other news Shinjuku will be commemorating the 20th anniversary of the Shinjuku meteor shower disaster, however as the news reporter began to talk about other stuff in the news, Naruto zoned out remembering the fight against his clone and how disastrously it ended for him. I I must get stronger but I just can't why? He asked himself gripping his fist in anger. Suddenly the doorbell rang so Naruto went to check who it was. Opening the door he saw Rhea standing there in a tight running outfit with a bicycle at her side, Abushu what are you doing here so early in the morning? After seeing you fight against both Cosmos and the Terranoid monster I've decided that you need to improve yourself and what better way to improve than with your president, now come on Naruto go get changed. Naruto had to rub his eyes to make sure he wasn't dreaming, when he finally stopped he saw that Rhea really was standing in the doorway tapping her feet, well come on Naruto you're burning daylight. Naruto nodded and went upstairs, a few minutes later he came down in his running gear just as the sun came out and he began to feel weaker. Rias led Naruto to a nearby park where she decided that he would start his workout, so Bushu what are we going to do this so early in the morning? Naruto, you've always been training at night right? Naruto nodded while Rias could only sigh. You can't train at night Naruto our devil powers will make it so that the amount of training we need to do to even increase our stamina would probably be equivalent to something an Olympic athlete would do on a daily basis. Naruto mentally punched himself for that, but he always felt tired in the morning and afternoon so he never thought to do any training then. Alright then bucko what do you want me to start off with? Rias gave a smile before giving Naruto instructions on what he should do. So first they started with some stretches to make sure he was limber enough to move. Then they started with some simple running until Rias said that he could stop. It was here that Naruto really felt like he was going through training from hell. His muscles screamed for him to take a break but he just continued on until Rias said he could stop. At that point he didn't even bother with sitting down, he just collapsed to the ground. Ow! Rias moved to help him but Naruto just put his arm up stopping her. No it's alright just give me a minute to catch my breath. Rias just had to giggle at his antics and disappeared for a minute while Naruto laid on the ground motionless. When Rias returned she saw that Naruto was now able to sit up so she passed him a bottle of water that he happily accepted. Thank you Bushu. Thanked Naruto before he uncapped the bottle of water and took a long well earned drink from it. Once done he stood back up ready for Rias next workout push-ups. Naruto got on the ground and began to press but then Rias stopped him. Ehim not supposed to do it like that. No Naruto lifting yourself would be too easy so you'll be lifting me. Naruto had a blank look on his face when she said that. Ahahaha. Oh I am sorry bucko but did you just say that I was going to lift you? Rias nodded before Naruto stopped for a moment his brain connecting the dots. Oh, you're actually being serious huh? 
With that said and done Naruto tried to weasel his way out of it but Rias was serious about using herself as a weight so he went along with her plan and began to do push-ups with Rias on his back grunting each time he went down and came up. Come on Naruto-kun, I know that you can do this, you've shown how much strength you have when you fought that monster in your weakened state, I know you can. With Rias' encouragement Naruto continued to lift while Naruto had to keep his thoughts straight about Rias to prevent his other self from rising. Afternoon. The training for the day was done, so Rias decided to treat Naruto to some lunch and it just so happened that they walked past a ramen store on the way back, and now they were seated inside eating ramen. So Naruto are you feeling alright? I must have been tough on you. Naruto slurped up a noodle before he replied, Oh don't worry about it bucko I can handle it. Memories of the training that he put himself through when he was young ran through his head but he pushed them to the back of his head so as not to damper the mood, still I want you to take a break when you get home alright. Hi hi, you really do sound like my mother, Rias lightly punched Naruto before the both of them got a laugh out of it. Nay Naruto? Rias asked looking straight ahead, yeah bucko? What do you think of me? Well bucko is really nice to all of us and even though me. Rainer and Asia have only been with you for a while all of us really do like you, he replied with a smile. Thank you Naruto but I meant what do you think of me as a woman? Naruto accidentally choked on his ramen when he heard her say that and he had to take a minute to compose himself before he looked at her like she was actually serious about asking that question. Sadly for him Rias had a serious look in her face, um why ask me I mean I've only been with you for a while I am sure that Kiba would be able to tell you that in more detail. Naruto I asked for your opinion not Kiba's, if I wanted Kiba's opinion then I would have asked him, Naruto rubbed the back of his head before he finally gave in. Well I think that Bucko is an amazing lady, Naruto looked over and saw that Rias wanted more details, well you're beautiful, smart, when you smile it brightens up an entire room and of course you're kind to us as well so really whoever marries you will be lucky to have such a person like you by their side. Rias blushed when she heard Naruto say such things about her. But then the thought of marrying that man entered her mind and she couldn't help but grip her fists in anger. Naruto saw Rias' action and asked if there was anything wrong but Rias simply shook her head before the two of them finished their meal and went their separate way. When Naruto finally reached home he opened the door to reveal Asia, Rainer and Akano seated in the living room. Each one of them were seated on one of the sofas that were in the room their eyes not even wanting to meet. Um hey I am home. In an instant all three girls turned towards Naruto and had a smile on their faces. Hey Naruto-kun where did you go so early in the morning? Well Bucko came by in the morning and she took me out for some training, but now I am kinda tired so I am going to go take a bath. Also hey there Akano. Akano happily waved at Naruto as he went upstairs to take his bath. Naruto stood by the tub as it filled with water while he cleaned himself up and when it was all done he slipped into the tub and allowed the warm water to wash all over him. Wow this is really nice now I can see why hot springs earn so much money, he moaned out before lying against the back of the bathtub a towel on his head. Time slowly passed as he relaxed in the tub when he felt that he was ready he stepped out of the tub and opened the door slightly to grab his towel. But he found that he just could not reach it he was about to open the door a little more to see where it could have gone when he suddenly felt someone handing him a towel. Here you go Naruto-kun. Asia is that you? Asked Naruto taking the towel in and began to dry himself off. Um yes, I saw that you needed help so I decided to help, she replied as she laid back against the door of the bathroom. Oh sorry for asking it's just that you've never used suffixes so I thought that it could be rain air. Asia felt a little saddened that Naruto thought that she was Rainer so she steeled herself to get closer to Naruto. Anyways Naruto-kun I just wanted to know if you were busy this Sunday? Naruto had to think for a moment. No I don't think I am busy why? Asia's heart took a leap when she heard that. Oh um it's just that I wanted to go out with you and have some fun at the arcade again. Luckily for Asia Naruto could not see her cutely pressing her fingers together. Oh sure of course we can do that on Sunday. Naruto could hear thumping noises before the muffled sound of a door banging could be heard. Taking a peek Naruto saw that Asia was no longer in sight. Huh she must have something to do. Oh well at least now I can change into my clothes. A few minutes later, Naruto came down to see that Asia had rejoined Rainer and Akano looking very happy. So Akano what are you doing here? Asked Naruto as he took a seat on the sofa not caring about where he sat all the while he flipped through the various channels to see if there was anything on. I just wanted to see if you were free today but since you weren't here I decided to wait. 
Hey sorry about making you wait but uh bucko and I were quite busy, oh yeah a couple buddies of mine lent me this movie if you've got time then why don't all of us watch a movie. All of the girls turned to each other before nodding in agreement, so long as they got to spend some time with Naruto they might as well have been watching paint dry. I'll go and make the popcorn, announced Rainer but she was quickly stopped by both Naruto and Asia who had to beg Rainer not to do so they had seen her try to cook instant ramen and let's just say that the microwave used was now resting in pieces. Thankfully his parents needed to replace their microwave with a new one so all was alright, while the abomination of an instant ramen that Rainer cooked was safely and quickly disposed of faster than Bram Stoker would reject a vampire from Twilight. So it was decided that Asia would make the popcorn while Naruto went to get the movie and Akano watched over Rainer to ensure that she didn't step into the kitchen and try anything funny. As for Rainer she could only cutely pout and mumble to herself, just because the ramen came to life and tried strangling us talking about how it was going to flood the entire world in ramen and death doesn't mean that the popcorn would become a giant popcorn monster bent on popping the world to death with an army of popcorn. Soon enough Asia came in with four tubs of freshly popped popcorn and handed them out, with the movie placed in the player Naruto played it as the three girls tried their best to snuggle onto the one sofa with Naruto squeezed in the middle. One movie later, with the sun setting and the movie done Akano decided to go on home after all the dishes were cleaned up and Naruto being the gentleman that he was decided to escort her home. Akano happily accepted and sandwiched his arm in between her breasts as the two of them walked back. As for Asia, with Akano gone she decided to go on up to her room and began to search through her closet hoping to find something that she could wear on this coming Sunday when she heard a knock on her door, turning around she saw Rainer standing in the doorway, you look really happy and I just wondered what was going on. Asia quickly turned back to stop herself from smiling when she was ready she turned back to Rainer, Naruto-kun has decided to go out with me on Sunday so I am trying to pick something that he'll like, oh does he like dresses or jeans? Should I tie my hair up or leave it down? Oh there are so many choices to make. Rainer had a smirk come across her face, just try to look as normal as you can, Naruto likes girls who act like themselves, and not hide behind a fake facade. Asia cocked her head to the side, why are you helping me? Just because we're rivals doesn't mean that I also want an unfair competition. Suddenly Rainer turned around and pointed her index finger at Asia dramatically, but know this in the end I will win Naruto's heart. And know that I won't lose to you or Akano-san, declared Asia determination burning in both of their eyes. The next day, Akano was holding onto Naruto's arm as they waved goodbye to Rainer and Asia both of whom were pouting. Apparently Akano invited Naruto to a movie that she had a couple of tickets for in the face that Akano made ensured that Naruto just couldn't reject it. As for Asia and Rainer, Rainer was fuming because she wanted to ask Naruto out today but Akano beat her to the punch but she could always ask him out the next day while Asia could only cutely pout, I should have asked Naruto-kun out today. So both Akano and Naruto went on their way to the movie theater where they saw quite a crowd there so squeezing through the enormous crowd they managed to get their snacks and proceeded into their assigned theater. So Akano what movie are we watching again? asked Naruto as they took their seats. It's called The Collection. Naruto nodded his head. So is it going to be any good? It will be the best movie you've ever seen in a long time Naruto-kun, declared Akano giving him a great smile that assured him, so Naruto just relaxed into his seat as the movie came on. One movie later, Akano and Naruto walked out of the theater thou instead of Akano hanging off of Naruto's arm, this time it was Naruto doing the hanging his face pale white and he was shaking while Akano was laughing about how it was such a good movie though internally she was happy that Naruto held her arm throughout the movie and when it came time to the scary bits he used her hand to cover his eyes. Come on Naruto-kun you have to admit that it was a good movie right? Naruto didn't answer her question as he was still terrified of what he saw in the movie which he didn't get. During the fight against Visor he saw dead bodies and smelled the blood but that did not get to him yet this movie got him deep down he shivered in fear and swore to check out information about movies whenever he went to watch them with Akano. Why don't we go to my place to have a quick bite since we're close by? Naruto nervously nodded his head before being dragged there by Akano. Akino's house. She propped Naruto against the wall as she opened the door to her home. By this point Naruto had calmed himself much more and took off his shoes before stepping inside. Akino's house in a word could be called neat, the books were neatly arranged by alphabetical order, with a few photos laid about in front of her TV. Why don't you take a seat and rest here Naruto-kun, and I'll be out in a minute with some tea and snacks, 
said Akano as she went to the back to prepare the snacks for Naruto. He was finally at her house and she wanted to impress him. As Akano was in the back preparing the tea Naruto decided to take a look at the books that she had but one look at the title had him rubbing his eyes thinking he was just dazed from the movie. That was when a picture finally caught his attention. Picking it up he saw that it was Akano when she was a cute little child. She was hanging onto a lady that looked like Akano if she was a few years older than now but then he noticed something strange about the picture half of it was cut off specifically it was the half that belonged to a very muscular arm that was lovingly holding onto the woman. Don't I look cute in that picture Naruto-kun? Jumping a little at her voice and presence suddenly appearing behind him Naruto nearly dropped the picture but managed to hold onto it, before he placed it back onto the shelf where he picked it up. Oh I am sorry Akano-chan but I was um. Don't worry Naruto-kun I understand, now the tea is ready so why don't you drink it while it's hot? Naruto nodded before he took a seat and calmly drank the tea, and as he drank the tea the both of them made more small talk but as they talked the picture remained in the mind of Naruto. So Akano that picture is it of, yes Naruto-kun it is of my family, she replied. Then why did you cut out the picture of your father? Slowly Akino's smile began to turn into a frown. I don't like to talk about it Naruto-kun so could you just leave it as it is, she replied sadly. Naruto recognized the look on her face and dropped the matter immediately so as not to ruin the moment but the picture remained in the back of his mind as Akino returned to normal and began to tease Naruto. A while later, Naruto was in his room studying when he heard a knock on his door this made him jump a little as he remembered the events of the movie so creeping up to his door he slowly opened it to see Rainer standing there dressed in her night clothing. Oh hey there Rei-chan what's up? He could see that she was fingering her dress shyly, well um I just wanted to ask if you were free tomorrow? Naruto raised an eyebrow at her request, well no just got a bit of homework to do and not much else so I guess I am free tomorrow. Oh okay then cuz I wanted to get something from the mall and I hoped that you could come along to help me, she asked shyly fingering her dress in a way that reminded him of the first time she came up and talked to him the end result of that was not a good memory but it did get better. Sure besides I've got nothing else to do so why not, Reynare's mouth quickly formed a smile before she turned around and walked back to her room. Night. Naruto cried out getting a wave from Reynare before the door closed, as for Asia she once again scolded herself for not asking Naruto out at an earlier date but she wanted their first time out as normal people to be on that special day. The next day. Naruto was once again outside walking alongside Reynare as she walked to a few shops with him by her side and the both of them stopped when Rainer saw the shop that she wanted to visit. Rain's Cooking Mart. The sign on the store showed a white-haired lady holding a pot that had smoke coming out of it while giving the thumbs up sign. Naruto looked over to Rainer and gave her a, really? Look but Rainer just smiled it off and went inside of the store dragging Naruto along for the ride. Rainer why are we here? Weren't you banned from the kitchen? Naruto asked as Rainer took a few cookbooks off of the shelf to look at their contents. I know that I am but I just wanted to read up on recipes that I want to try in cooking class, she hissed. They actually let you go into cooking class, Naruto asked disbelieving of that fact before Rainer nodded. Yeah I was surprised too, but it seems as though all you need to do is follow the recipe and the food will turn out really good, Naruto had to sweat drop at Rainare's comment. Aren't you supposed to do that when you're cooking? Few hours later, ah, uh, that was good wouldn't you say so Naruto-kun? Asked Rainer while the two of them entered the food court hungry for some food after spending so much time in the store. Yeah hopefully you'll put these to good use, now what do you want to eat? Cause I am hungry, complained Naruto as they looked around the food court before they finally found a place to settle down and place their stuff. Well ill just have whatever you're having, Rainer replied with a smile. All right then I'll be right back, with that said Naruto excused himself as he went to check out what food they had while Rainer continued to look at the books that she bought. A while later Naruto came back with the food for him and Rainer and they happily dug into it with Rainer feeding Naruto some of her food even though the both of them had the same thing while young couples all around them looked on with envy at how lovey devey the two of them looked at the same time the adults looked at the two of them and sighed reminded of how they were when they were young. The next day. Naruto and Asia were walking along the road to the arcade when she spotted something that looked interesting to her, hey Naruto-kun what is that? Oh that's just the aquarium why do you want to go? Asia nodded, so the two of them entered the aquarium after paying for the tickets. Once inside they walked through the various tanks that held all the fishes, 
when Asia spotted one fish that looked really funny and tried to imitate it, the faces that she made caused Naruto to laugh. The dolphin show will be starting in 10 minutes. I repeat the dolphin show will be starting in 10 minutes. Viewers are reminded that you may get splashed. Asia looked at Naruto hopefully but he had already grasped her hand and walked in the direction of the dolphin show. Once seated in the bleachers, Naruto took out a bottle of water that he brought along just in case they got thirsty and passed it over to Asia. Thank you Naruto-kun, replied Asia before she took a drink from it. Once done she passed it back to Naruto who also took a drink from it, at this Asia blushed making Naruto question why she was blushing and not realizing that he just had an indirect kiss with her. And soon enough the show began as the dolphin came splashing out of the water and using their fins balanced themselves against the surface of the water making people clap at their performance including Naruto and Asia, soon enough the human performers brought out hoops and made the dolphins jump through them. For their final performance the humans decided to use a beach volleyball and passed it over to the dolphin who swung its tail and hit it into the crowd landing right next to Asia who picked it up, earning some applause from the crowd and Naruto. Alright so it seems that little lady has caught the ball so why don't you and your companion come on up? Asia pointed to herself making the performer nod his head, come on down lady, come on everyone let's get that lady down here. The performer announced making the crowd cheer her and Naruto on. So grasping Naruto's hand Asia pulled him onto the stage, there the people directed her forward towards the main performer, who had a bucket of fish by her side and was petting a dolphin that had surfaced. All right ladies and gentlemen give a round of applause to our guests. A round of applause was heard before the lead performer slowly brought Asia forward along with the bucket of fish and giving her some directions, now what you want to is carefully and slowly offer the fish to the dolphin. Asia followed the instructions of the performer and offered the fish to the dolphin. The dolphin happily took the fish into his mouth, good now hell allow you to pet him so go ahead. Asia moved her hand forward and began to pet the dolphin while the performer turned to Naruto and got him to try out the same thing that Asia did. Once done the performer passed a bucket to Naruto and Asia who washed their hands and walked off the stage and out of the place since the performance was done, their last stop was the gift shop. And there they got a very nice stuffed dolphin that reminded Asia of the Pikachu that she never did get back, she apologized to Naruto for that but Naruto said that it was alright and he understood what she meant and the two of them happily went back home holding each other's hand much to the ire of Rainer who saw them hold hands when they got home, boy did Naruto have a tough time that night. With, K, Naruto note, his story is taking place right after Naruto and Asia's date. It had been a few days since the incident with the other Naruto and, K, Naruto just could not shake the feeling. He wanted no needed to know more but when he tried to ask Tamamo about where he could find an SDF base all she did was quickly hug Naruto as tight as she could not willing to let go until Naruto promised her that he would not go searching for them. I don't want to lose you, she cried out, her eyes filled with tears and even though Naruto promised her that he would not attempt to find them he just had to know what they knew about him. And this lead him to meet a somewhat unusual character who was now cuddling his arm her two black tails swishing happily behind her while her black ears twitched happily, see this woman was called Kuroka and Naruto saved her from some SDF soldiers one day when he was outside tending the fields, and unknown to him she followed him home and began to visit every single day much to the ire of Tamamo. As for Tamamo she was not happy about what Kuroka was doing to her husband every day and even more so because she was interrupting their special time together so she imitated her in an attempt to get Naruto's attention on her. And unluckily for Naruto it was working as the two girls pulled on his body like a game of tug of war in an attempt to get his attention on themselves. Why are you doing this? Can't you see that Goshujin sama likes me more? Oh so you've even given him a nickname, that is so cute, don't you say so Goshujin sama This enraged Tamamo to no end since that name was supposed to be special to the two of them but thankfully she was able to calm down somewhat. Anyways why are you here? You don't live in the village so why are you even staying around? Tamamo asked pouting very cutely. Oh me I've just found a reason to stay here but don't worry about me it'll be fine nya. Kuroka replied giving Naruto a wink. Tamamo saw this and it made her ears and tail stand up on edge while an imaginary fire burned strongly behind her. Hey Tamamo J just calm down, Naruto asked nervous about the fire behind her. Hey Kuroka San don't you have anywhere else to go? Oh what's wrong doesn't Goshujin sama like me nya? She asked in a sensuous tone while she pushed herself against Naruto knocking him backwards to the ground. Don't rise don't rise oh god it's rising. 
Naruto thought frantically trying to control the flow of his blood but failing all the same. As for Tomomo the fires behind her burned even stronger right now to the point where people outside were also feeling the strange heat. As for Naruto he pushed himself up along with Kuroka, and pushed her all the way to the door. Well gee look at the time Kuroka-san it's getting pretty late, I am sure that there are other places that you've got to be. But before Naruto could close the door Kuroka came up and hugged him once more whispering something into his ear. This made his eyes widen, when he finally closed the door he rested up against it before returning to Tamamo. Tamamo had effectively calmed down a lot thanks to the disappearance of Kuroka. Go Shujin sama il go and prepare the bath for you now so just give me a moment. A few minutes later, Naruto sat in the tub as he thought about what Kuroka whispered to him. If you want to know more about the SDF then come find me at the house near the gate of the village. Should I go find her? I want to know more about myself but then I promised Tomomo that I would not go and find them. I don't know what to do. What if I do find out something terrible about myself? Naruto thought as he went below the surface of the water. Bubbles all around him going towards the service. From the kitchen Tomomo was happily humming a song as she prepared dinner for the two of them with fresh vegetables that she got from the market. Hum mmhmmh. Goshujin sama is going to love this meal, she squealed before she continued preparing the meal. After the meal was done, Tamamo decided to clean up while Naruto said that he was going out for a bit of a walk. Tamamo washed dishes before the realization hit her, wait, if Goshujin sama is going out then that woman is going to. Thoughts of Naruto being tied up by the lady before she taking him to some dark corner of somewhere and doing unspeakable things to him. No, only I can do that to Goshujin sama Storming out of the house Tamamo followed Naruto's scent. When she arrived at where Naruto was she saw him following Kuroka into the woods, oh no I have to save Goshujin sama from that lady before she does anything to him. Following them Tamamo saw Kuroka open some kind of manhole that was laying around and the both of them slipped into it but unluckily for them they never managed to close it all the way so Tamamo opened it and crawled into it. Crawling through the duct Tamamo soon came upon some kind of giant room that housed an enormous machine of some kind. E.H. What is this place? I have to find Goshujin sama and get him out of here before anything happens. In the mysterious place, Captain Lee arrived in and showed his card to the guard at the main gate before a car arrived and drove him further into the facility. When the car finally came to a stop he saw Commander Akari standing there waiting for him. I am sorry for making you wait sir saluted Captain Lee before Commander Akari returned the salute and the two of them walked into the room where the giant machine was. Sir if I could ask why have you called me here today? Captain Lee asked. The plan is going to be executed today and command wanted you here as well, replied Commander Akari. Sir permission to speak freely? Commander Akari gave a wave to Captain Lee allowing him to speak freely. After reviewing the footage from that fight and the reports from Talonflight I must ask is what we're doing right? because in both instances the creatures never seemed particularly interested in harming us. Commander Akari gave Captain Lee a stern look when he said that. Are you getting cold feet Captain Lee? You remember the Shinjuku incident don't you? Captain Lee gripped his fists in anger at the mention of that incident. I do sir but it just seems that we may have been wrong about everything argued Captain Lee. He remembered the horror that he witnessed as a ground trooper on that fateful day at Ground Zero. Enough Captain Lee. The plan will be commencing soon and I will not have you spouting such nonsense in front of high command. One more time and I will relieve you of your duty, Commander Akari sternly scolded. Yes sir, very good now let's go. Commander Akari took out his access card and put it on the reader opening the door to reveal a group of men in uniforms standing looking at a massive machine that was finished. Ah Commander Akari and Captain Lee it is such a surprise for you to join us today. One of the men greeted getting a salute from Captain Lee and Commander Akari. Leaning over Captain Lee whispered to Commander Akari, Sir if the plan is supposed to take place tonight then why isn't all of High Command here? Some parts of High Command could not make it, replied Commander Akari but this made Captain Lee suspicious about everything now. When they put their arms down an explosion was heard and soldiers began rushing in the direction of it, when the soldiers came around the corner they saw a fox girl with fire burning in her hands don't come any closer. I know how to use this. Take care of that nuisance and make sure not to damage the machine, Commander Akari ordered. One of the soldiers carefully reached behind him and pulled out a tranquilizer gun, before whipping it around and fired off a dart at the girl making her collapse to the ground, 
Once down the soldiers ran up to the girl and placed a set of palladium cuffs on her before setting her down on the ground near them. With that out of the way Commander Akari if you would, his superior waved his hand in front of the consul and Commander Akari stepped up and placed a key into it, now the other man stepped up and placed his own key into the consul turning it on. I have a bad feeling about this, thought Captain Lee as the machine turned on and soon enough his prediction was right as the entire base rumbled making sparks fly from various pieces of equipment. Sir we have to shut it down, if we don't the entire electrical grid could fry. One of the soldiers at the console screamed out as various notices came out making him frantically begin typing in an attempt to contain the power increase. No. Keep the machine running I know that it will be able to do it, he ordered before a giant flash of light blinded everyone in the room and when it finally faded they saw it a giant hole made out of nothing. Yes we have done it. The man walked forward with his companions and Commander Lee while Captain Lee and the other soldiers slowly backed up. Commander Akari. What is the meaning of this? Captain Lee yelled out surprised by what he saw, the machine that they were developing was supposed to cancel out magical powers not make whatever that was appear. This why this will be the beginning of a new age of the gods, he claimed before laughing in a crazy manner, the soldiers eyes widened when they heard it but as for Captain Lee his eyes narrowed before he drew his pistol and pointed it at Commander Akari. That's it I am arresting you under the code of treason. The soldiers looked at one another before deciding to follow Captain Lee's example and pointed their guns at their supposed commanders. Play the theme that starts when Ghetto Mazo appears. But before any cuffs could be put on the commanders a giant hand suddenly reached out of the portal and slammed on the ground making everyone tumble about, while also shaking Tomomo awake. Slowly everyone watched in horror as the hand began to pull on the ground entering their world slowly bit by bit before finally they saw the enormous construct that stood before them. WH what kind of monster is that? The figure was of some dried out statue that had nine closed eyes on it, cuffs on the ankles and wrists of it, and last but not least there were multiple spike-like protrusions sticking out of its back, roar. In heaven, the archangel Michael's eyes shot wide open and he fell to the ground clutching his chest in pain while his comrade Gabriel ran up to him, Michael, are you alright? Slowly Michael stood back up and wiped his forehead of the sweat that was gathering there. I am fine Gabriel but I feel as though the balance of our worlds has been broken. Back to the SDF base. Ah the actual world how nice is it to be finally back, to the very place where we should have ruled over all those millennium ago. The statue spoke out in something that sounded like eight different voices with different personalities speaking at once. At the statue's feet a figure wearing some kind of mask that was white with a purple tint, a long black cloak and on his back was a giant fan. This person had apparently stepped through the portal as well. The commanders knelt before them and bowed their heads, Welcome back to this dimension, Arch and Sama. The masked man just stood there not replying, which was when the statue took a step forward, So you are the insects that have broken the great barrier set up by God then you have my thanks, now for your reward. The giant statue opened its mouth and out came some kind of purple energy that went through the commanders taking their souls from them. Wait, what are you doing? we released you from your prison to rule our world. And for that we are thankful but in this instance there can be only one ruler of this dimension. The statue spoke before it consumed the souls of the screaming corrupt SDF commanders. End song. With that done the statue turned his attention to the remaining men in the room or more specifically to the cowering Tomomo. Hum this thing has traces of it. Open fire. Ordered Captain Lee before the men pointed their guns upwards and opened fire upon the giant statue. Ha 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 ha. Pathetic worms you think you can harm me? The statue mocked as the bullets from the soldiers' guns did nothing to stop the giant hand that went over their heads towards Tomomo. The statue hand was about to grab Tomomo when suddenly, Cosmos, was heard from the corner of the room. A bright light flashed for a moment before the giant Cosmos was holding onto the hand of the statue and for some reason it seemed amused by this turn of events. Oh it seems as though there are still creatures like you that inhabit this dimension. Nonetheless you will soon join your brethren in death. The statue pulled back his other fist and punched Cosmos making him skid backwards slightly, thankfully no one was hurt by the impact of the punch, everyone get out of here, ill hold off this monster. Captain Lee looked up at Cosmos with grateful eyes, thank you Cosmos, come on everyone evacuate the base at once, ordered Captain Lee as the soldiers nodded moving out of the room as Cosmos stood back up and transformed into his Corona mod. 
Once done Cosmos took his standard fighting stance while alarms began to blare calling for the evacuation of the entire base. Haya! cried Cosmos before he ran at the statue and tackled it pushing it backwards trying to get it back into the portal. Oh ho so you still have power in this realm. Wait you you hold a portion of my power now return it to me so that I may complete my ascension. The statue cried out stomping one foot into the ground it shook the entire area but this foot in the ground gave it enough footing to stop Cosmos from pushing him back into the portal. Grr, I won't let you win, claimed Cosmos before the statue blew blue fire into his face. Ah! Cosmos cried as he reeled backwards from the pain of the fire and landed on the ground panting. I can't let it get in the way. Cosmos thought back to the information that he and Kuroka found out, he wasn't Naruto at all he was the giant the final one that the SDF tried to revive with the real Naruto's power he was never Naruto all he had was the form and memories of the real Naruto, he had nothing of his own, he was nothing. The statue reached down and grabbed Cosmos' leg before swinging him about the entire room knocking him against the walls and destroying them before finally letting God off Cosmos' leg so that he flew into a wall section of the wall that was not destroyed leaving a giant imprint in said wall. But before Cosmos could recover the masked man ran up to him and jumped into the air, Shinra Tensai. He cried out making some kind of force emit from nowhere and sent Cosmos flying backwards towards the place where Kuroka and Tamamo still were. Goshujin Sama cried out Tamamo as she charged up a fireball and threw it at the statue. No Tamamo don't, but Kuroka's warning was too late as the statue now focused its attention on the girls, from some protrusions on its back multiple bolts of lightning were shot forth aimed at them. Kaya! cried Tamamo as Kuroka wrapped her own body around Tamamo but the lightning never hit as a cry of extreme pain was heard. Opening their eyes they saw Cosmos laying against the back of the room his color timer was blinking red. Air you girls, okay? Goshujin sama A teary-eyed Tamamo cried out before she ran up and placed her hands on the tip of his finger. I thought I told you to get out of here, but Tamamo shook her head. No, I am not leaving without you Goshujin sama But Cosmos put his hand to his chest and brought out some orb of light before lowering it down to Tamamo who raised her hand to touch it when the light faded Tamamo saw that she was now holding onto the Cosmo pluck. Kuroka get Tamamo out of here safely ill hold off that monster for as long as I can. Kuroka nodded before she grabbed Tamamo who struggled and screamed at Kuroka to let her go but Kuroka's grip was far stronger than Tamamo's. Cosmos, no Naruto you may not be who you are but never forget the bonds that you have made for these are representations of who we are, Kuroka thought before she teleported away with the sobbing Tamamo in tow. With them gone Cosmos stood back up and faced the giant statue, that was indeed touching I shall remember it when they bow at my feet. I won't let you. Moving his hands into the center of his chest Cosmos gather red energy there before finally pushing it out sending it towards the statue. As for the statue it simply opened his mouth and out came out some form of energy that shot forward and clashed with Cosmos own both beams seemed to push each other back and forth for a bit but sadly for Cosmos his beam attack wasn't strong enough and it was pushed entirely back before the statue's attack finally hit Cosmos going through Cosmos entire body, sending Cosmos flying backwards screaming out in pain. Cosmos landed on his back his color timer blinking rapidly and his body was completely still so the statue moved forward and placed his hand on Cosmos chest, chanting strange words soon enough a strange energy came out of Cosmos and entered the statue's center eye which glowed, wait, this power from that body is not complete, it is only a portion of it, but no matter in time the power will fully return and we shall gain our COMLP. As for Cosmos his color timer began to blink even faster before the light in it faded, with the light in his color timer gone the light in Cosmos' eye also faded. The statue stood back up and looked down at the unmoving body of Cosmos for a moment before he knelt down and placed his hand on Cosmos' chest and slowly transferred a small portion of his own power into Cosmos' body. Stepping back the giant statue made a throne before sitting on it while the masked man simply knelt at the statue's feet, watching as the body of Cosmos began to slowly twitch, now rise my herald, for your name given by your master will be Chaos. An explosion of darkness went throughout the room, when it finally died down the red and blue cosmos no longer stood where he laid moments before now stood a giant of similar size but instead of being colored red and blue this giant was colored red and black, its eyes were colored red, its color timer was now no longer light blue instead it was yellow golden and last but not least it had two blue streaks running down its face. 
A rumble could be heard from chaos before he finally let out a loud roar that echoed throughout the empty base while the statue let out a maniacal laugh. This world is now in for a very rude awakening. With Captain Lee a day later during this period Tamamo was at home crying at the loss of K. Naruto while the actual Naruto was just doing normal devil stuff. He was now standing in front of one of the few commanders of the SDF remaining within their command structure. Inspector General Suchiro Sawai was his name and right now he was having a major headache because of the report that Captain Lee just gave. So it seems that such a thing has happened and now it seems as though we have an even more dangerous threat equal or even greater to the same monster that caused the destruction at Shinjuku because of them. Yes sir I should have realized it sooner and however General Sawai put up his hand stopping Captain Lee mid-sentence. Don't blame yourself Captain Lee none of us could have realized what those men were doing. Now we have to be prepared to combat this arch and threat that you stated in your report. Can I count on you to take charge of the JSDF and defend humanity from it? Captain Lee gave a firm salute. Yes sir you can count on me sir. Opening up his desk General Sawai took out a box and handed it over to Captain Lee with his hand stuck out for a handshake as well. Very well then Commander Lee I expect the best from you and the men under your command. Commander Lee took the box and shook General Sawai's hand. Thank you General I will do my best to respond to this new threat. Taking a step back Commander Lee gave a salute before he left the room leaving General Sawai alone looking over the city. It seems as though we can no longer keep the existence of these creatures a secret anymore, thought General Sawai before he thought about the Shinjuku incident 20 years ago during that time he was a pilot for the JASDF, Japanese Air Self-Defense Force. Flashback. Damn it what the hell is going on? A young Sawai asked his co-pilot. Don't know all I know is that something big is happening in Shinjuku. He replied as their leader came over the radio. Alright men listen up we are approaching ground zero so watch your fire and make sure to come back home alive. You get me? We get you sir. All other pilots replied before they arrived at ground zero to see some sort of giant dinosaur thrashing through the city. WH what the hell is that? Is that a dinosaur? One pilot pointed out. It doesn't matter what the hell that monster is, just take it out before it destroys the entire city, ordered their commander making all the other fighters follow his lead descending to the scene below. Down below people were screaming as they ran away while soldiers tried their best to direct the civilians out of the danger zone, help the wounded and those not helping the injured were trying their best to fight off the monster but their weapons did nothing except annoy the monster. The monster gave a loud piercing screech and opened its mouth charging some kind of attack in it but before the monster could fire it off multiple missiles impacted against the skin of the monster making it stop the firing process. Turning around the monster saw the fighters coming in, I've got a lock on, firing. One of the fighters released a missile that impacted against the chest of the monster before flying by the monster to see the damage he had caused. Sir our weapons aren't doing anything except annoying it. The pilot reported as he saw the smoke from the top of the monster where their barrage of missile hit dissipate revealing the undamaged skin of the monster. Damn it this monster has got to have a weak spot, circle around it and open fire on different locations there must be somewhere on this monster where its armor is weaker. Roger. Responded the other pilots before they flew in and began opening fire upon the monster but this time the monster was ready for their attack and started swatting at the air to destroy the planes that had to get close so as to damage it. Soon enough the monster had managed to take down a few planes thankfully all the pilots managed to land on the ground safely, but Sawai looked on in horror as the monster continued its rampage through the city getting closer to the civilians, we have to go in and stall that monster. Then do it Sawai, his co-pilot yelled out, Sawai pressed the trigger releasing a missile that flew and exploded near the monster's mouth angering it greatly, turning around the monster charged up a blast of energy that flew and grazed Sawai's jet. Shit so why that monster hit us bad and we're losing altitude, try to land us somewhere safe. However so why was not going to make it as the monster charged up another blast and was about to open fire upon them. Ah! So why's pilot screamed covering his eyes while so why still tried to land his fighter. However the beam never hit them and went straight over the jet going straight into the sky, as for Sawai a bright light momentarily blinded him and when it faded he saw the monster being raised into the air by a giant that had a reverse dorsal fin on it was some kind of jewel, its skin was colored a mixture of red, blue, silver and it appeared to have a gold band of armor on its chest going around its back. Throwing the monster away the giant took a stance with his hands open, Haya. 
End flashback. The giant's fight against the monster ended with his victory by some kind of beam attack in a plus shape, and the monster was shattered into multiple pieces. It was after this event that the first version of the SDF were formed and using some kind of technology that they reverse engineered from the monster they erased the world's memory of this incident so as not to cause a huge panic, and the cover story of the meteor shower was made up but it seems as though it was all going to be for naught due to the foolishness of the other commanders of the SDF. Back in the elemental nations, the devastated army of the Shinobi Alliance emerged from their fighting to see that the Ghetto Mazo statue disappeared into some kind of portal. The Zetsu army and zombie army were destroyed by their combined efforts so now medics went around healing those that could still be saved while some of the other shinobi went around to make sure that the dead enemies were actually dead. While the leaders of the four villages were now gathered at the Konoha tent to discuss the disappearance of Madara and the Ghetto Mazo statue along with the appearance of that portal. This must be some kind of portal that leads to wherever Madara went, we must follow him to ensure that he does not find the Kyubi's Jinchuriki. Very well then I will send out a team to find Naruto but before Tsunade could continue the Mizugage stopped her. Hokage-sama why should a team from your village be sent to find him especially since your village was the one to banish him in the first place? The Reikage and Tsuchikage agreed with her. That is why we must go. All of us in Konoha realize the terrible mistake that we did to Naruto so we want to apologize for it. Tsunade replied linking her hands together in an attempt to look sad though her thoughts were completely different. She wanted the Konoha team to make contact with Naruto and show how sorry they were about banishing him and how he could come back, being the idiot that Naruto was he would definitely return to the village thinking that he was going to protect those precious to him once there they would place a seal that Jiraiya made before he died and this would ensure that Naruto remained loyal to Konoha no matter what. Very well then Hokage-sama though you may want to warn your team going to be careful about what this other world may have. The Mizukage stated before she left followed by the other cages leaving Tsunade alone in her tent. Once they were gone she began to laugh evilly thinking about how she was going to use Naruto to take over their pathetic villages. The command structure of the JSDF had changed somewhat ever since Commander Lee took command of the JSDF. Now all infantry teams had at least one medic on board and all teams that were on active standby on any day were ordered to have all their gear on at all times in case of anything and they could be ordered out. Right now Commander Lee was in a room with the pilots of Talonflight and a few others, alright I want to thank all of you for being here today. What up sir? Wataru asked as he handed out the files that came from Commander Lee. Due to new circumstances in the coming future I have decided with the support of one of the SDF generals that all of you will be trained in the use of the newest addition to our arsenal. Commander Lee took out a remote and pressed the button on it activating the projector revealing all of the new additions to their arsenal which ranged from new fighter jets a carrier craft that was currently being constructed. As of now all of you will be the pilots of these new jets so all of you will be leaving for training, one of the new pilots was about to ask a question when Commander Lee stopped him. Don't worry about uniforms, all of you will be getting new ones to help with flying these new jets also as of this moment you are no longer Talon Flight or Talon Squadron you will be known as Night Raiders any more questions? All the pilots in the room looked at one another before Wataru. Talon 1, raised his hand. Sir if you don't mind me asking but why are we being renamed and being reinforced? Sai I want lie to all of you over the last few days we messed up big time with our efforts commander Akari and some other generals from high command brought something into our world something that is beyond our comprehension so we have to be ready to defend humanity from it. I understand if any of you wish to leave just hand in your resignation and then ill take care of the rest, all of the pilots looked at one another before they decided to stay. Alright then ill let all of you get to know one another before you go on to training dismissed, yelled out Commander Lee as the pilots filed out of the room and began to mingle with one another. A few days later, Rias was now looking into the sky and there she could see two giant figures holding some kind of enormous beam attack that was emitting from some kind of giant monster back as the attack pushed them down towards earth making their backs burn up as they entered the atmosphere. She noticed that one of the giants was very familiar it had two objects sticking out of its back and it was all silver while the other giant was a mixture of blue, red and gold and from the looks of things each of them were barely holding on by a thread. Don't give up, Sama. Their combined shield began to break down slowly allowing portions of the beam to break through injuring them when suddenly an extra burst of power from the massive beast totally disintegrated the two giants. Their screams of pain went unheard of in the vacuum of space. End. Rias woke up and found herself in her bed beads of sweat were running down her forehead, 
Wiping the sweat away she tied a bathrobe around her body before stepping into the shower to take a quick shower, and as she showered her thoughts were on the dream that she had. I it all seemed so real, she thought as the water ran down her body, once she was done she put on her school uniform and proceeded downstairs where she saw her mother who was an exact copy of Rias if Rias had brown hair having breakfast. Good morning Ka San, greeted Rias as she took a seat and a servant delivered out a plate of food for her. Good morning Rias Chan, you don't look very well, her mother noted, do you want to take your temperature? But Rias rejected the idea, don't worry Ka San I just didn't get a good night's rest I am sure that it will be fine tomorrow. Venalana, Rias mother, nodded her head before the door creaked open to reveal Lord Gremory walking in. Oh good morning to San. Where is Ni San? Sirzex is busy at the moment and he may not be home for a while but I have some important news for you Rias. Rias heart dropped a little at the mention of the news that her father had. Due to current events in the mortal realm we think that it is best for the marriage to be moved up, so me and Lord Fenix decided that at the end of the month after next you and Razor will be married. Rias had a look of horror on her face. B but I thought that we were going to get married when I finished university. That was before all these strange occurrences happened, now your brother has been in more meetings than ever before and we're afraid that something might happen before you can get married. Rias' eyes went wide open before tears started to gather at their corners and she ran out of the house teleporting to the human world before her father or mother could stop her. Venalana Gramary looked to her shocked husband, they knew that Rias didn't like her betrothal to Razor but this took things to a new level, dear just what is going on? Maybe if you explain to Rias why the marriage has been moved up in more detail then we could get her to calm down. Venalana I don't even know what is going on I've been trying to get a hold of Sirzex for the past week but he's been busy all week which is unheard of, in fact the rumor that is going around is that something big has happened in the mortal realm. But you should have discussed it with me before making such a decision. When Rias comes home all three of us are going to have a talk, Venalana declared before leaving the kitchen with just Lord Gramary with his hands in his hair. At school, Naruto, Rainer and Asia were in class studying and the lesson was going really boring for Naruto and many other students. In fact a few of the students had pretty much decided to catch up on some sleep some of them included Rainer and Kai though Asia was wide awake because she was close to failing the class and needed the grade to pass the class and advance to her second year. Naruto turned his head to look out the window which was when he saw something that had him do a double take as he could have sworn that he saw a girl with pink hair standing alongside a silver haired man, another person that had a duck shaped hairstyle and then a weird pale skinned boy but when he looked back they were gone so he just brushed it off as just him being bored out of his mind and turned back to the lesson at hand. This was where he noticed one of his classmates leaning over to him and whispering in a soft voice, Pissed Naruto, Rainer asked me to pass this to you. Accepting the note Naruto took it out and saw what was written on it, Hey Naruto if you're free later then why don't we go to the cafe to get lunch? She asked ending with two black angel wings. Naruto gave a little chuckle before writing his response and asking for it to be passed back to Rainer while he also wrote up another one and had it passed to Asia asking her if she wanted to join them for lunch. When Rainer received her message back she turned behind and nodded her head giving Naruto a smile. When the note reached Asia she was still copying down notes for the class so it took her a while before she finally read the note but when she did she turned behind to Naruto and nodded her head before returning to quickly copying down notes, Naruto thought that Asia was so cute when she smiled. Later on, Naruto, Rainer and Asia were on the way to the cafe when they met a downtrodden Rias and Akano who was trying to console her. Ah Akano chan what's but Naruto was cut off as Rias rushed into the arms of Naruto and hugged him tight surprising everyone. B bucko is everything alright? Naruto asked trying his best to console her Rias just buried her head into Naruto's shoulder. Naruto looked over at Akano for a possible explanation but Akano just had a frown on her face indicating that this problem was a somewhat serious one. After hugging Naruto for a while Rias separated from him and wiped away the tears that she had. Thank you for letting me use your shoulder Naruto. Don't worry about it bucko, replied Naruto as all of them entered the cafe and once they were seated Rias said that today's lunch was on her. Ordering their food they all made small talk as they waited for it though throughout their conversations Rias remained unnaturally silent and even when the food came she remained silent but the look from Akano told the three young members of the orc that they should not bring the matter up. 
So when all was said and done Rias paid the bill for all of them but just as they were about to exit the place the door slammed open hitting Naruto in the face and sending him to the ground holding his nose, hey watch where you're going. He was now looking up in horror at the people that stepped through the door and he was not happy to see them at all. Naruto are you alright? The girls asked as they helped him up, which was when eyes of the people that walked in widened. Naruto. Hey where have you been we've been looking for you for a long time. The one with pink hair said as she reached down to help Naruto but Naruto just very abruptly brushed her hand aside. Don't touch me, he yelled out as he jumped backwards while the newcomers just looked at each other. Geez Doby talk about high strung do you know how long we've been search for you the village has decided to let you back so come on everyone is waiting. The one with the weird duck styled hair replied in a somewhat smug manner that was when Naruto did something so out of character that they still couldn't believe. He actually jumped the duck haired boy and slammed him against the wall outside. Say that again. Come on, I dare you. He yelled out, punching the other guy once for good measure. The people with him were shocked by what he did to their teammate. Didn't you hear what I said, Dobi? I said you could come back to the village. Naruto's eyes narrowed for a moment before he dropped the guy on his butt. I thought so. Tell whoever sent you no thanks. I never want to see you or that place for the rest of my life. He replied before trying to walk away but was stopped by the man with the weird silver hair. Come on Naruto are you going to become like trash because you're leaving your teammates behind especially after all we've done for you. But Naruto quickly turned around and backhanded the man in the face sending him sprawling to the ground. Kakashi Senpei are you alright? The pale boy asked as he went up to help the now named Kakashi. After all you've done for me? Oh thanks for all of that you know the constant hours of my life you wasted making me wait. The stupid lessons that you never taught me oh yeah I have plenty to thank you for Kakashi sensei. He replied in a sarcastic manner while all the people in the cafe were stunned by what this was revealing about Naruto and it made them think just how much they didn't know about him. Then next came the pale faced teen who was about to open his mouth to speak when Naruto stopped him by placing his hand in front of his face. Stop what you're going to say now. Go back and tell those people to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Finally one last person stood in his way and it was the pink haired girl who somehow looked really confident despite the fact that Naruto just decked on of the guys trying to stop him and he was looking pretty pissed off now. Inside the girl's head. Hey hell never hit his dear Sakura Chan after all he loves us right? Cha her mysterious split personality replied. All we need to do is offer him a simple date and hell be like water in our hands then we can get our reward from Tsunade Sama. Back to reality. Sakura shyly hugged herself in a pathetic attempt to look cute but before she could speak Naruto just walked past her surprising her and her companions. Hey Naruto Baka. I was talking to you. She screamed out before pulling her fist back and punching his head. The force of the impact could be heard before Naruto fell to his knees coughing up blood and gripping his head in agony. The girls of the occult research club saw the blood spill from his head and rushed up to help him but Naruto just slumped over in pain and fainted. HMPH serves him right for ignoring me that Baka, now get up. Tsunade Sama wants you back Imid but before Sakura could finish her statement Rias came up and slapped the girl as hard as she could, to the point where Rias could even feel the stinging pain on her hand. How dare you hurt my cute servant, she declared making everyone slowly back away, while the owner of the cafe quickly rushed out with a medical box and began to bandage Naruto's head. That Baka deserves it for ignoring me and how dare you slap me. She screeched out making the people in the cafe cover their ears. I would listen to her hand him over and we won't have any trouble, Kakashi added on before getting hit in the head by a something thrown by Rainer. Naruto is my servant and I won't hand him over to you, Rias stated firmly subtlety allowing a portion of her devil power to flow through her eyes, this small move scared Sakura a bit but not enough to make her back down. Why don't you leave before we call the police on you? Asia added before throwing something at them and getting everyone else riled up to the point where they started throwing trash at the people who hurt Naruto, even though most of them didn't know Naruto on a personal level they at least knew him in passing. The shinobi had to block most of the trash that was heading their way, before the sound of sirens could be heard, shoot this world's authorities are here, Sakura, Sasuke, Sai let's get out of here for now. The others nodded before running away. Once they were gone and the police arrived the entire cafe was in uproar at the disappearance of the jerks that wanted to force Naruto to follow them. As soon as the police arrived they began to take note of the situation and wrote it all down, 
It was here that Naruto awoke feeling the throb in his head but said that he would be okay before stumbling back to school with the assistance of Rainer and Asia since they were in the same class. After school, Rainer and Asia had split off for their respective classes. Rainer had cooking classes whereas Asia had remedial lessons and they weren't done yet so Naruto just went to the clubhouse for a little nap. His head was still ringing from that punch and it felt unreal. When Sakura hit his head it was like being hit with a huge metal block. How was she able to hit so hard? How does she still have the use of chakra? But that is impossible. Suddenly feeling a headache come on he decided to lay back and take a quick nap. A while later, Naruto was shaken awake by Rias who was concerned about his well-being. Naruto-kun are you alright? Maybe I should get Asia here. But Naruto just shook his head, and no it's alright bucko I was just feeling a little tired that all. Rias sighed and began to gently caress Naruto's head, my cute servant, just who were those people and what is their connection to your past? Suddenly a red flash of light lightly lit the room up both Naruto and Rias noticed it as a summon sign, someone had a wish to be granted, well it looks like nap time's over I should get going bucko. Naruto pried himself off of Rias but after taking a few steps he fell to his knees gripping his head in pain, Naruto. Rias came by and helped Naruto up, ah, d don't worry bucko it'll be fine. But Rias did not look convinced, if you are going through then it'll follow you just in case anything happens alright Naruto? Naruto nodded before the two of them stepped into the glyph and teleported to the client's location. Once there they noticed that the room if they could say anything about it was it looked exactly like a stereotypical Japanese house, it even had a samurai armor with swords in the back. Well this feels slightly weird, and where is the client? Naruto moved forward to fix the samurai armor since it had a piece that seemed out of place when suddenly it stood up scaring the life out of him causing him to jump into Rias arms. Just imagine Naruto in Rias arms like how Scooby Doo is in Shaggy's arms. I am the client. But are you the devils that I summoned? She asked before Rias and Naruto looked at each other before she set Naruto down on his feet. Um yeah I am and this is my president, it's nice to meet you the samurai suit gave a little squeak. Oh I am sorry for not introducing myself but I am Susan, she bowed to both Rias and Naruto before going back to the kitchen and coming out with some drinks for the two. Oh Susan-san you don't need to do this, replied Naruto as he accepted the drink and waited for her to sit down. Oh no it's no problem I wouldn't be a good host if I didn't do so. So what did you summon us for? Naruto asked. Um well I was hoping that you could follow me to my college's campus so that I could pick up something. A sweat drop appeared on Naruto's head as he gave a nervous laugh. Ahihihi, you summoned us for that? That was when Susan shook her head vigorously. Yes the darkness scares me. She screamed out loud. I think people are more scared of you due to your armor. Naruto and Rias both thought before they stood up and followed Susan to her college where they picked up her notebook, and returned to her house to accept payment for their job. Um before you go could I ask another favor? Naruto looked at Rias who nodded at Susan. Letting out a grateful sigh she sat down and explained her situation, see Susan was in love with this boy named Hori and wanted to tell him about it but she didn't know how to go about it because she was shy so Naruto and Rias had to throw some suggestions out there for her to use. Oh, why don't you write him a letter? Naruto answered getting Susan to enter a thinking pose before she nodded. Why yes that would be a good idea I am sure that Hori-kun would like that. Turning around Susan went into her room and came out with some parchment and ink, and began to write her letter. Alright, if this is going to Hori-kun then I will pour all of my heart and soul into it. She announced before carefully and gracefully starting to write her letter all the while Naruto and Rias sat back and gave her some tips though if they could look into Rias' eyes at that moment they could see the happiness yet pain in her eyes at the true love Susan had for Hori and how she longed for it. They're all done but how should I give it to him? Oh I know, reaching behind Susan pulled out a bow and arrow with her letter attached at the head, making Naruto jump back. Hey, be careful with that you could kill someone with it. Slowly Susan loosened her grip on it and lowered the bow. So then how should I do it? She asked, well why don't you just pass it off to him in class or something? He responded hoping that she would do just that. Well alright then but will the two of you be there tomorrow with me when he comes to find me? Naruto looked over at Rias who walked over and passed Susan another summoning flyer. Of course we will, she replied before the two of them left. Rias got Naruto back home so that he could rest while she returned to the clubhouse to deal with everyone else. The next day, 
Rias and Naruto were waiting alongside Susan in a very elaborately decorated park. Jis talk about overkill much. So did you deliver the letter Susan-san? Naruto asked getting a nod from said girl. That was when they heard the clanking of what sounded like armor. The noise got closer to the point where a knight with an arrow in his helmet walked out. In his hand he was clutching a letter. Susan. You shot your letter at him. Susan was now nervously poking her fingers together. I am sorry but I got nervous when it came time to give it to him so I used my bow and shot it to him. Oh great he must be pissed that you ruined his knight armor. The knight soon approached them and spoke. Um excuse me but did one of you send me this letter? Susan stood up. I did. I just wanted to tell you how I felt about you Hori Kun. That was when Hori came forward and grasped both of Susan's hand in his own. What you wrote in it was the most beautiful thing I have ever read, and I am glad that you were feeling the same way as I and I am willing to accept your feelings Susan. Oh Hori Kun, Susan. Um just a quick question Hori if you don't mind me asking were you also planning to tell Susan your feelings? Naruto's question he nodded his head. Yes I was planning to do it with my crossbow but then Susan had already sent her letter, a sweat drop appeared on both Naruto and Rias head. Um well moving on why don't we take a picture of you two together? Naruto asked getting a nod from both Hori and Susan, so taking their camera he got ready to take the picture when he felt that something was wrong so he asked Susan if she had another arrow which she did, grabbing it he poked it through her helmet so that it was the opposite of Horus. Alright now it's perfect, say cheese, and he snapped the photo for the two of them to remember. Hey Naruto san you and Rias look very good together so can I get a photo of you two to remember the two of you for helping me? Um sure why not? Naruto replied as he got close to Rias before Susan snapped the photo and walked away with Hori but not before also giving Naruto and Rias a copy of her photo with Hori. Hum I guess they do look good for each other huh don't you agree Bucha? Getting no reply from Rias Naruto turned behind to see Rias looking at something. Bucko, Bucko. Finally getting her attention Rias quickly hid whatever she was looking at behind her. Um yeah what is it Naruto-kun? Well do you want to head back to the clubhouse now or get something to eat cause I think there is a store around here that has some great iced tea. Alright then Naruto lead the way, Rias replied feeling a little parched. A while later, Naruto and Rias were seated outside of a nice looking store drinking their iced tea which Rias had to admit was good but came nowhere near to what Akano prepared. So Bucko what were you looking at just now? Um it was nothing Naruto so don't worry about it. Naruto shrugged his shoulder before continuing to drink his tea when suddenly people began to slowly gather inside of the store. What is going on? Naruto asked standing up to enter the store where he could see people gathering around the TV inside. Oh my god what is that monster? Is it some kind of alien? Standing on his tiptoes Naruto saw that it was Cosmos but he was different colored this time and he was slowly making his way towards a city, quickly rushing out he ran past Rias and into an alleyway. At the SDF base on land, alert alert all available personnel to your vehicles now code red code red. The alarms blared as soldiers filed into their vehicles and were driven off to the suspected location to help with the evacuation of civilians. At the main SDF facility, as for the night raiders they wore their uniforms which consisted of light body armor that went over a blue jumpsuit that was blue and made with special material. Their full uniform is basically Team E, Y, E, S's uniform from Cosmos. Grabbing their helmet they made their way to their new vehicle. Wataru, Talon 1, Yui, Talon 6, and Naoto, Talon 7, went into the center plane which had a blue paint job, Shiori, Talon 4, and Ibuki. Talon 5, went into the cockpit of the jet at the back with a yellow paint job and finally Shin, Talon 2, and Ran, Talon 3, went into the cockpit located at the front of the jet which had a red paint job. Alright Wataru here systems seem alright for SDF Eagle Beta ready to go. Shiori here systems for SDF Eagle Gamma all set, SDF Eagle Alpha ready to go. Alright then raise the Citagon and load the SDF Eagle into the catapult. The operators nodded and went about their work raising the Citagon above the waters of Japan and bringing it up to the surface for all to see. It looks like nothing is a secret anymore. From beneath the waters off of Japan the massive Citagon complex of the SDF was raised up surprising fishermen who were in the waters nearby and when all the water stopped flowing off of it the top of the Citagon split open to reveal the SDF eagle which blasted off from it heading to stop the new threat. Back with Naruto, 
Rias had seen him running into the alleyway and followed him. Once inside she could see him take out something from within his jacket. Naruto just where are you going? Turning around Naruto saw Rias standing there her arms crossed. There is something that I have to take care of Bucko so I think that you should go back to the clubhouse just in case. Naruto what is going on? She firmly asked, taking a sigh Naruto revealed the evil thruster in his hand. Something is wrong with the clone that I fought from before and I have to stop him he is me no matter how you look at it. That was when Rias came forward and hugged Naruto. Jay just be careful all right Naruto. Naruto nodded before the two of them separated, pulling the evil thruster from its sheath Naruto raised it into the air, Nexus. Naruto was covered by the flash of light before it turned into a ball and flew into the air in the direction that he needed to go. Naruto please come back, thought Rias before she ran into the store to see the location of the monster before she returned to the alleyway and teleported to the location just in case. With the SDF Eagle, they had finally arrived to the designated area to see that the target would soon be approaching the outskirts of the city, sir we're here. Alright then attack the monster with all you've got, the codename for the monster would be Chaos Cosmos. Why would it do such a thing after it saved me? Thought ran before Shin shook her out of it. Alright then open fire. The SDF Eagle opened fire with a combined blast that hit the back of Chaos Cosmos sending him stumbling a little forward. Turning around Chaos Cosmos saw the SDF Eagle. Rower. He screamed out firing off a laser blast at the Eagle. Dodge it. Ordered Wataru before Naoto pulled on the joystick getting the SDF Eagle out of harm's way. Alright then split up and open fire on it. Wataru ordered as a button was pressed on each jet. This allowed the SDF Eagle to split into its individual jets, Alpha, Beta and Gamma and began to open fire on Chaos Cosmos their combined attack once again making Chaos Cosmos stumble backwards slightly. Meanwhile tanks and soldiers on the ground opened fire on Chaos Cosmos providing support fire for the Eagles however they did very little damage when compared to what the Eagles were doing. Chaos Cosmos having enough of the annoyances slammed his foot down near the tanks sending them flying backwards or just flipping them over. With that done Chaos Cosmos turned his attention onto the Eagle Fighters which once again opened fire with whatever they had but this time Chaos Cosmos turned into a cloud of darkness and flew at the Eagle Fighters and since he was darkness their blasts went right through him. Don't let that darkness hit you, Wataru told the others as their fighters swerved out of the way of the darkness which missed all of them and reformed into Chaos Cosmos. Gurgra. Chaos Cosmos roared but before he could do anything a ball of light stopped it and out of it came Nexus appearing out of the ball of light and delivered a flying kick past Chaos Cosmos sending him to the ground. Nexus in his blue mode picked himself up and turned around to face Chaos Cosmos. You why are you doing this? He asked but all he got was a roar before Chaos Cosmos charged at Nexus. Stop. Nexus screamed out grabbing onto Chaos Cosmos to stop his charge but it wasn't enough as Chaos Cosmos began to push Nexus back. HQ this is SDF Eagle Beta what are our current orders? Do we shoot both of the giants or? SDF Eagle Beta this is command the second giant that has just entered the combat zone will be dubbed Nexus, your current mission is to back him up, is that understood? Yes sir, they responded. As for Nexus his attempt at reasoning with Cosmos was no use so he now switched onto the offensive but even so it was of little use since Chaos Cosmos was a fast attacker not giving any room for Nexus to fight back. Come on focus. Nexus screamed in his head before he straightened himself out and performed a sky uppercut sending Chaos Cosmos flying backwards crashing into the hillside. But that only phased Chaos Cosmos who instantly picked himself up and charged at Nexus. Nexus bended over and flipped Chaos Cosmos over his body. But just as Chaos Cosmos recovered from the flip Nexus kicked him in the gut sending Chaos Cosmos stumbling backwards. Now open fire. Wataru ordered as the three SDF Eagles opened fire upon Chaos Cosmos effectively sending him to the ground. Nexus now took this chance to run up to the fallen Chaos Cosmos and picking up his legs Nexus whirled him around before he let go and sent Chaos Cosmos flying landing with an enormous crash. The SDF Eagles took this chance and rained down fire upon Chaos Cosmos, covering the area in which he laid in smoke. Gur gur gra! Roared Chaos Cosmos as some kind of dark energy storm began to form around Chaos Cosmos before letting out one enormous roar and blasting back the SDF Eagle fighters and Nexus sending all of them crashing to the ground. Ah! 
The pilots of the SDF Eagles yelled as they went down, certain circuits in their jets getting fried by the powerful release. As for Nexus he just barely managed to recover when suddenly Chaos Cosmos flashed on by and passed by Nexus faster than the normal eye could see but this move was actually Chaos Cosmos slamming its fist against Nexus body before moving out of the way and sending Nexus to the ground. But before Nexus could recover from the knockdown Chaos Cosmos picked him up by the shoulders and threw him in the direction of the now evacuated city, and making Nexus land on the building. As Nexus struggled to get up Chaos Cosmos ran up to Nexus and kneed his head further sending Nexus tumbling backwards into more buildings as Nexus tried to pick himself up while Chaos Cosmos slowly approached him destroying all in his path with his laser blasts but was temporarily halted by the assault from SDF Eagle Beta which had managed to recover enough of its systems to still fly and shoot. Fire! Commanded Wataru as Naoto pressed the trigger once more. The number of times Eagle Beta fired was enough to stumble Chaos Cosmos and give Nexus the chance to prepare his phase feather attack which were fired sending Chaos Cosmos to the ground. But this was becoming too much for Nexus as his color timer began to blink but so did Chaos Cosmos both of them were getting tired from the fighting. Suddenly Chaos Cosmos looked to the sky as if something was speaking out to him turning around Chaos Cosmos became a swarm particles and disappeared into the sky faster than anyone could follow. HQ did you get that? The giant just disappeared, reported Wataru as the SDF Eagle Beta maintained its altitude while Nexus slowly picked itself up looking around at the accidental destruction the fight between the two had caused. All this destruction, why? He asked himself, that was how it is Naruto not all fights are clean all we can do is move on and learn from our mistakes, if only I had more of my power then I can supply you with more abilities. Suddenly within Nexus Bracer flashed red for a second as a new power flooded through his entire body. Naruto stick your palm out and think about the buildings repairing themselves. Alright but what will that accomplish? Following Nexus instructions Naruto stuck his palm out as a sparkle of energy came forth and it covered one of the buildings when the light finally faded the building was now rebuilt surprising everyone who saw. HQ you're not going to believe this but Nexus just repaired one of the damaged buildings. Are you serious SDF Eagle Beta? Dead serious HQ, Wataru replied as Nexus went around repairing the damaged buildings until all of them were repaired, when this was done Nexus lifted his hands into the air and flew off into the air becoming a ball of light in the process, once he was away he found a good place to hide before de transforming back into Naruto and collapsing to the ground unconscious due to the strain on his body. Thankfully he was not found by SDF forces due to Rias finding him first and teleporting Naruto out of the area and back to the clubhouse where Akano, Asia and Rainer had a maelstrom of question about everything that had happened to him. With the SDF a few hours after the incident, the eagle fighters that were taken down by Chaos Cosmos energy attack had been returned to the Citagon for repairs while Commander Lee was right now in front of the press giving reports and answering questions about the incident. So Commander Lee why did this incident occur? At this present time the SDF is unsure of why such has incident has occurred but the public can be assured that we will be fighting the threat at every turn. We also hope that the civilians will cooperate with us during operations or if the monster attacks once more. And why do you say they will attack again Commander Lee? Another reporter asked. This creature is serving a higher power and its goal is to create fear and disorder but you don't need to worry the SDF will be prepared to combat the threat. Finally one reporter asked the important question, and Commander Lee if you don't mind me asking what is the name of the giant that assisted the SDF in the fight today. Commander Lee laced his fingers together trying to think of a full name for the giant, Nexus, his name is Ultraman Nexus Humanity's Defender. With the announcement of the giant's full name the crowd went into an uproar as question about the giant started to be thrown forth at Commander Lee who had already left to ensure that everything at the base went alright. Alright and that ends the first part of the Chaos Cosmos arc, and now you guys can start laughing with me as well. Ha 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 ha. Oh my god the technology of humanity has suddenly jumped so far out that it is nearly impossible to believe, then they named him Ultraman what human actually does that? Oh man that was a good laugh then again if you can't laugh at yourself then who can you laugh at but still for the sake of the story just roll with it for the moment since the SDF is now taking the role of the human defense force from almost every ultra series and will have a role in the events leading up to the finale and the finale itself and if they can't do jack against the monsters then they're kinda useless right? So with the story stuff the night raiders, in name only, where, the team E, Y, E, 
S outfit from Cosmos while piloting the jets from Dyna. Don't worry it won't get confusing. Then there was the foreshadowing. If you've stuck with me ever since Spiral Art Online then foreshadowing should be taken seriously. The school was abuzz with life the day after what the SDF was now dubbing the Chaos Cosmos incident. Kids went around the whole place carrying newspapers that said Ultraman Nexus is humanity's defender but is he really? Or Nexus from Earth or from the stars beyond? Basically every single piece of news was either being run about the SDF and how they were either here to protect us from giant monsters or how they were here to take away our freedom, as for the news about Nexus it was either news about the fight or how this was a sign of the coming apocalypse. As for Naruto he just sat in the corner of the canteen with Shinji for a change looking a little pale, hey come on Naruto what's wrong, you can tell me right? No I just haven't been feeling well, I think I may be coming down with something I don't know. Though in all honestly Naruto was still feeling pain from the fight against Chaos Cosmos and while Asia's healing did help he couldn't help but remember the pain that he felt when he crashed into the buildings, and then there was also the drain of stamina that he felt when he repaired the buildings. That was when Kai came in carrying a magazine, hey guys take a look at this. Naruto and Shinji looked over to the magazine that Kai was carrying. Look here it says that archaeologists recently found the bones of ancient dinosaurs. Kai pointed the various pictures that showed the enormous bones that were being carefully taken out of the ground. Did they name them yet? Naruto asked, well nothing on that yet, but man Naruto you don't look very good I think that we should bring you to the nurse's office. Finally Naruto relented and accepted the help to the nurse's office, once there the nurse checked him over and deduced Naruto with a case of exhaustion so Shinji and Kai returned to class with a note from the nurse telling him that Naruto was currently resting in his office and would return in a while after he got some rest. Once Naruto fell asleep the nurse stepped out for a while which was when Rias stepped in to see her servant lying on the bed, brushing her hand against his head it made him shift in his sleep. Oh Naruto why are these things happening to you? All I want is for you to remain by my side but yet all of these events are happening. There were those people then now your clone has gone evil, I am sorry for what I am about to do Naruto but I don't want to lose you. It was here that Rias decided to use a spell to get to know her servant better, forming a seal on his forehead she combined their consciousness just for this once and fell onto his chest unconscious. Inside of Naruto's mind, Rias woke up and saw that his mind was now full of darkness with the light sound of someone singing. Following the sound of the song she walked upon a red-haired lady sitting on the ground she was the one singing the song and her arms were wrapped around what looked like a translucent version of Naruto, who are you to intrude on my son's mind? Why your son? Rias asked since she had seen Naruto's mother and she did not look like that. Oh yes Naruto has never told anyone that he was adopted, but I am Naruto's real mother Kashina Uzumaki and who are you? If you are here to harm Naruto then I will not let you close to him. I am Naruto's president. Rias Grammary and I mean him no harm, she answered which made Kashina relax a little. Now what are you doing inside my child's mind? Kashina firmly asked holding Naruto close to her. I am sorry I don't mean to intrude but I just want to find out more about Naruto. I see, Kashina made a bed appear and gently placed the translucent Naruto on it before kissing his forehead and making a table appear and inviting Rias to sit with her. Rias sat down, so what do you want to know about Naruto? I want to know everything, Rias responded making Kashina sigh as she laced her fingers together and began her tale from the very beginning. Well it all started many years ago when Naruto was. Still a baby a terrible creature called the Kayubi attacked the village that Naruto originally came from in a desperate attempt to stop the creature Naruto's father who was at that time the village leader summoned forth the Shinigami and asked that it seal the Yang Chakra of the beast within Naruto while sealing the Yin half within himself and in the end the Shinigami took his soul into his stomach but my husband's last act was to seal a portion of my essence within Naruto. And ever since he entered this world I was awakened by the separation of his body from his chakra. Kashina continued telling Rias everything about Naruto and when she was finally done Rias had tears forming at the corner of her eyes, so Kashina stood up and walked over to Naruto's body tears dripping from her eyes. Naruto's body is translucent because the part of the mind that we are in is the part that was blocked off when he stepped into this world. Kashina soon got off topic and hugged Naruto's body close to hers and even though everything that Kashina was saying now was not exactly related to Naruto it tore at Rias heart to hear everything that Kashina was saying as she held Naruto close to her body. Insert Ultraman Tiga series Ost 13 love theme from Tiga here note.
I think the music really enhances the mood in this one scene so it is preferable to play it while reading this part. Oh my boy my precious Naruto, my only wish was to meet you one last time. To protect you from the influence of the Kyubi if it ever overtook you but when I can finally meet you you don't even know that I am here. All your life I saw everything that you went through the stairs. Glares and insults thrown at you and yet I could do nothing to help you but even so you went on living your life trying to make those people see you for who you really were and in the end it was all for nothing as they continued to spit in your face. Oh Naruto you did nothing to deserve this and how I wish you were awake now then I could tell you how proud I am of the person that you've become and to tell you how sorry I am for leaving you in this world alone. My final letter to you just does not tell you how sorry I am, I am sorry Naruto. I am so sorry. She cried hugging Naruto even closer to her body, her tears dripping onto his body but still Naruto continued to sleep unaware of anything happening within his mind, and as time continued to pass Kashina's crying got louder to the point where Rhea started to shed tears at the scene. She never knew that Naruto went through so much pain and suffering when he was younger in that horrid place, culminating in his banishment but he left with his honor intact and never looked back leaving his world to escape from the horrors that he had seen and then having the best time of his life up until he entered Kuo, where he was once again dragged into events which were now larger than life, oh Naruto. Without a word of warning Naruto began to slowly become more solid as Kashina started to become translucent, no, no please Naruto just stay asleep for a while longer, Ka-san just wants to hold you for a little longer, please. But her cries went unheard as Rias was thrown out of Naruto's mind and she returned to her own body where she awoke with her eyes shooting straight open but before Naruto had fully awakened Rias had already rushed out tears falling from her eyes faster than they had ever been. End song. Naruto had woken up and was feeling better than before so he left the nurse's office and returned to class where he just sat down and began to study. After school, Naruto saw Rias waiting outside of his classroom her face looking sad, bucko what's wrong? This snapped Rias out of her dream as she saw Naruto looking at her, oh nothing is wrong Naruto I was just going to invite you to get something to eat before we start our club events. Sure. Reynare's got remedial lessons with Asia so I guess it should be alright, he responded as the two of them began walking towards somewhere other than the cafe since it was entirely possible that the jerk-offs from his home village were there, though on their way out Akano did catch up to them and followed since she was hungry as well. As they were walking through the nearby shopping districts they spotted some takoyaki and decided to get it, as they waited for their order Naruto noticed that Rias still had that look of sadness he saw from before. Um bucko are you sure you are okay? He asked, Rias looked up and forced herself to crack a smile despite all that she learned about Naruto. Yeah I am alright Naruto just thinking about nightmares that I have been having recently. Oh well I find that if we don't think about them then we get over it faster he replied before going up to collect his order, when he went up Akano came by and looked Rias straight in the eye. Bucko you know something that you're not telling Naruto right? Rias had to look away unable to look at Akano while Akino's eyes widened and she had to cover her mouth in shock. Bucko did you look into his mind? Akano asked a little anger in her tone unbelieving that Rias would do such a thing but sadly it was true as Rias nodded tears bursting forth from her eyes. It is true and how I wish I could go back in time so that I didn't find out all that about Naruto. She sobbed while Akino's eyes softened and she came round to give Rias a hug to comfort her as the tears fell from her eyes. Soon enough Rias calmed herself down and thanked Akino for lending her shoulder so that Rias could cry on it. Bucko what exactly did you see in Naruto's mind? Everything, she said before out of a sudden the crowd parted ways to allow two boys fighting to come through. Rias saw that one of them was Naruto as for the other one it was a boy from Naruto's past he had messy brown hair and a giant dog trailed behind him. The feral looking boy threw Naruto against the wall and started gasping, well looks like you've gained some skill huh? But you're still the loser that I knew back from the academy with that stupid grin on your face and always having that need for attention. And you're still the same arrogant jackass from the academy I guess time really doesn't change anything does it Kiba? Naruto responded as he tried to fight his way out of Kiba's hold with little effect. Yeah keep talking like that and well see how the village treats you when I get you back. The now named Kiba threatened but before he could do anything to Naruto a hand reached out and grasped his shoulder pulling him off of Naruto before tossing him to the side where he was joined by a girl with long purple hair and lavender eyes. A boy with a high collar jacket wearing sunglasses and a male that was wearing a weird outfit that composed of a green jacket with multiple pockets over a blue jumpsuit. 
Kiba are you okay? The man in the weird outfit asked. Yayumato sensei but who threw me that hard? Looking over Kiba could see two ladies helping Naruto up. Thank you Bucko, thank Naruto as all of them faced the group from Konoha. Naruto Uzumaki, by order of the Godem Hokage Senju Tsunade you are hereby ordered to return to the village if not well take you back using force. Murmurs among the few bystanders remaining began to fly out. Why are these people doing this? Is that boy a runaway? Still they should NT force him back if he doesn't want to. Never, I am not going back to the village. You people threw me out of that place so like I told Sakura and her group tell that old bad to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. He threw back his tone laced with venom. Then you leave us no choice. Yamato was about to walk forward and grab Naruto when suddenly Rias stood in front of him defiantly not allowing Yamato by. Lady will you please move you are interfering in business that does not concern you? Yamato asked politely but Rias still stood firm. No I will not move as you have no right to be ordering my cute servant anywhere. Rias retorted allowing a little bit of her devil energy to come forth and scare Yamato and his companions while Akano was also doing the same but on a much more fearful level. Yamato sensei we can take these girls no problem. Kiba bragged but got a stern look from Yamato. You know what happened the last time they tried that, the authorities of this world were called in and if we're not careful then we might get arrested and thrown in jail. Yamato turned back to Naruto and tried to give a smile. Naruto perhaps you should return to the village once there then you'll understand why we did so. Not all of us hate you but if you continue like this then the council will have no choice but to submit a report to the daimyo, and if we do that then there will be no going back, he will most likely send forth his army to come and get you, bluffed Yamato thinking that Naruto was an idiot according to the old reports about him. But Naruto didn't buy it he walked past Rias and got close to Yamato's face so as to emphasize his point, there is nothing that I want to say to you neither is there anything that I want to hear from all of you, you banished me so now you will learn to face the consequences, snapped Naruto before he walked back grabbing both Rias and Akino's hand but before they got very far Yamato yelled out something that made Naruto stop in his tracks. Don't you want to know about your parents Naruto? If you go back well give you all the information we have on them and some of it may shock and surprise you. Yamato let the moment sink in hoping that Naruto would bite the bait. But before he could Rias and Akano stopped him, Naruto snap out of it, don't believe anything they say if they've lied to you all their life do you really think they'll stop now? Yamato's eyes narrowed before he jumped at Rias his arm secretly hiding a small kanai, girl you talk too much. However before the knife could hit Rias stepped in front of Yamato and blocked the kanai with his own arm. His hair currently shadowed his entire face. When the kanai entered Naruto's arm Yamato was surprised that Naruto didn't even flinch but before he could pull the small kanai out Naruto pulled his fist back and punched him straight in the gut. You you've played my feelings long enough. He screamed out before jumping into the air and kicking Yamato in the chest sending him tumbling back towards his companions the kanai also following him meaning that Naruto now had blood running down his arm. I swear by the blood on my hands if you ever come near me again I will not hesitate anymore. Yamato could see that Naruto's eye flashed a dangerous color of blood red before they turned back to his normal blue eyes. When the people saw the blood dripping onto the ground they quickly called for the police. Damn it I should NT have done that thought Yamato as he quickly hid the kanai but now they could at least track Naruto down wherever he went. Kiba, Hanada, Shino were leaving now, ordered Yamato. What? Why Yamato sensei? We can take them on, however they were cut off by the sound of a siren coming by, making the shinobi turn tail and ran out of the area before the police could arrive, which they just so happened to momentarily afterwards. It was here that the police officers decided to try their best to patch up Naruto's arm with a medical box that the store owner had as well as taking down statements from the bystanders. After taking the statements they turned in the reports to their superiors who then turned it in to the SDF command since they were working on a case such as this. Once that was concerning weird people in weird outfits breaking into people's houses as well as the people wearing outfits harassing people about the location of some kid. So right now Commander Lee was reading through the reports as he sat with section leaders of the ground forces, so it seems as if these people are searching for something or rather someone. Commander Lee what are you suggesting? From today onwards we'll have some soldiers from the Citigon go into the city with non-lethal gear and patrol the area so I want a list of people from each of your sections, it is preferable to pick people who have marksmanship skills in case they meet any of the perpetrators, 
The section leaders nodded before they left and in came the people from the air division of the Citigon. All right, so what is the current status of the Ardese? Well, currently the Ardese is still being constructed, but it should be done in about three months, maybe even shorter, Commander Lee nodded. What if the weapon systems were not installed? How much would the time be shortened? Well, if the weapon systems are not loaded, then the time would be cut down to about two months, maybe shorter. We can't be too sure about that. All right, then what about the SDF wings? Have they been transferred over to the selected JASDF bases, along with the pilot gear and instructors? Yes, sir, they have been and the SDF Eagle's repairs are nearly done and thankfully the armor on the SDF Eagle Beta was able to stave off most of the impact, if not it would take another day to repair them all to operational status. All right, then keep me posted on the situation, Repla 9 Ed Commander Lee as he ended the meeting and everyone filed out to do their duties. While Commander Lee headed towards an elevator that led to the deeper parts of the Citigon, once there he inserted a special key card that was given to him by General Sawai and out came a key pad which he inserted a code into and the door before him opened to reveal a walkway. Walking inside the lights slowly turned on to reveal a giant chest piece, looks like we'll have to keep a watch on you now that we're on the surface if Chaos Cosmos gets his hand on this and delivers it to his master, the world will be in a lot of trouble. Looking back he remembered the first time he saw what they managed to get off of the chest piece. The world may not be ready for what laid beyond the stars but they still had time, they had to have time to prepare for everything after all that was the secondary objective of the SDF to protect the earth itself after all the one, no relation to the one from Ultraman the next movie, had seen it all, memories of traveling through space then encountering monsters of the same size, there were also the memories of how it was defeated by the giant. Sighing Commander Lee walked over to the console and looked through the memories of the monster that it came from but the most prominent figure was what he would now name the very first Ultraman that arrived on Earth but could he really label it in the same league as these Ultras? It seemed so different than Cosmos or Nexus yet they seemed so familiar. Cosmos. Why are you doing these things? Commander Lee remembered how Cosmos had stood in that giant thing's path but then the scene of Chaos Cosmos beating up Nexus and blasting the city to bits. Why? Back with Naruto. Naruto, Rias and Akano had arrived back at the clubhouse where everyone else was waiting but Asia noticed Naruto's hand, ah oh, Naruto-kun your hand. Naruto looked down at it, oh don't worry it's just a scratch, he laughed out before being being pulled to the sofa by Rias who took off his bandages to reveal the wound that was starting to heal slightly due to his devil power. Who did this to you? Asked Rainer as Asia came up to it and began to heal the wound which slowly began to disappear leaving nothing but new skin and Rainer's question going unanswered. Thank you Asia, thanked Naruto as he checked his arm over. It was no problem Naruto-kun. Now Rias sat down on the sofa, Naruto can you come over here for a minute? Naruto nodded and walked over to her, what's up Bushu? Rias slowly brought his head down onto her lap such a movement made Asia and Rainer blush as they haven't even done such a thing to Naruto yet, don't move alright Naruto? I am unlocking some of your sealed power so just fall to sleep for a while as I perform the unsealing. Naruto nodded, closed his eye and placed his right hand on his chest while Rias placed her own hand over his and soon a blue glow appeared on his hand as his sacred gear came forth. As Rias did this tears began to fall down onto Naruto's face when she thought about Kashina and how this was another chance for her to hold Naruto in her arms, only to have him torn from her hands without him ever knowing she was there. Bushu, Akino thought remembering how she had been before, Rias truly had a lot on her shoulder at the moment. When it was finally done Rias tried to wipe away all the tears from her face remembering how Kashina was as Naruto took control of his mind once more in the end she managed just fine which was when Naruto woke up. They're all done Naruto-kun, Rias replied trying her best to give him a smile, I've just released the seal on one of the pawns that I used to bring you back, you should be feeling stronger now. Naruto stood up and flexed his sacred gear, it does feel weird. I don't know Bushu it's like the power is trying to come through but something is stopping it. That can't be possible, TCH looks like he'll have to look into it, this has never happened before, Rias growled out biting her thumb as she began to pass out duties to everyone. But before Naruto left on his job Rias asked him to stay behind for a minute and once everyone was gone, Naruto-kun, what do you think of your parents? I mean the ones that those people were talking about. Naruto gave a very natural smile before he walked over to the window and looked at the moon above, 
Well Bushu I don't really know about my father so I don't really care about him but, my mother on the other hand I wish I could meet her then I could tell her how much I love her and that I am happy to have been her child. With that said Rias allowed Naruto to leave as she sat down in her chair and cried, Kashina Uzumaki if you can hear Naruto then the world is truly a cruel place to you and your child. With Naruto, he was already done with his job when suddenly he received a call from Asia, Naruto. Help, someone is chasing me, I-K-Y-A-H-H-H-H. Asia, Asia, screamed Naruto into the phone but got nothing until a certain someone suddenly picked up her phone. Hey Naruto remember me, Kiba, Naruto spat out, what have you done with Asia? The girl oh don't worry about her we've got her safe and sound come to the park at the Junko district of your town, fictional place not related to any actual place in Japan I think, but hurry if not my hand might slip and this girl's face her may just have something extra added. If you hurt her then it'll kill yo. However Naruto was cut off by the phone being crushed, Naruto quickly switched his phone to a map and looked for the district once he located it he ran in the direction. Don't worry Asia I am coming but this time we're going to fight on my side of the field. With Asia, she was currently tied up gagged and hanging from a tree while Kiba his pet dog, Hanada, Yamato and Shina waited around for Naruto. Ne Kiba-kun do you think Naruto's really going to come? Yeah Akamaru says that this girl has his scent all over her so just relax besides we can beat him this time. Since this time there aren't any of those pesky bystanders we can go all out boasted Kiba as he patted Akamaru on the head. Soon enough Kiba grew impatient and looked over at Asia, well well looks like time's up girly id hate to do this to such a pretty girl but blame Naruto for this, he took out a kunai and approached Asia who struggled as tears formed in the corner of her eyes. Naruto, however before the kunai could touch her face it was cut off at the handle by the appearance of a crouching Naruto holding Asia in his normal hand while his other hand seemed to be holding onto what looked like a disc made of blue energy. Quickly performing a spinning kick he knocked Kiba off of his feet and landing him on the ground face down, once he was down Naruto cut the ropes off of Asia and removed her gag, Asia are you alright? Asia nodded, thank you Naruto-kun. As for Naruto he stood back up and closed his fist cutting off energy to the disc. Asia teleport out of here, this is my fight I don't want you to hurt. Asia hesitantly nodded she wanted to stay and help Naruto with her healing powers but she was afraid that she would be a hindrance to him as they fought so she relented and teleported out of the area and back to the clubhouse. Play the Magia of Madoka Magica here. With Asia gone Naruto raised his hand and flexed his sacred gear while Kiba could only laugh. You think that you can fight us just cause you got a flashy gauntlet. I don't think that I can fight you I know that I can fight you now that no one is watching. Focusing on his hand he formed a ball of energy similar to his Rasengan and using his other hand he made a come at me sign. Kiba just grinned as he got onto Akamaru. Alright Akamaru. Gatsuga. He and Akamaru formed a whirlwind that spiraled towards Naruto but Naruto just put his ball of energy forward and he willed it to become a shield which it did and Kiba's Gatsuga smashed against it. The force of the impact blowing Naruto's back as well as making parts of the ground beneath him crack but he still stood not moving an inch. When Kiba's Gatsuga finally stopped and he had to jump back Naruto charged forward and delivered a super powered punch with his sacred gear that was now covered with the energy, the punch that drained part of the energy bar on his sacred gear and sent Kiba spiraling off to parts unknown. Yamato stepped up and used a Mokudan Jutsu to tie Naruto up who struggled to get out of the wood but it kept growing until it finally encased him in it, good now he can't use the Kyubi's power to do anything. But within the shell Naruto concentrated and forced the energy on his sacred gear outwards in a way that destroyed the wood holding Naruto in place and calmly stepping out of the wooden shell he charged forward and punched Yamato in the gut with his normal hand before forming a ball of energy in his sacred gear hand and pushed it into Yamato's stomach sending him up into the air, before gravity kicked in and Yamato landed unceremoniously on the ground. Shino step up and released bugs in Naruto's direction. Pointing his entire hand at Shino, each fingertip released a string of energy that went after the bugs disintegrating all that they touched while also refilling Naruto's burst bar, the official name of the bar on Naruto's sacred gear, since they were also damaging the strings when they touched when it looked as if something was coming together Naruto closed his sacred gear effectively pulling all the strings together and killing most of Shino's insects. After losing too many bugs Shino called all of them back and fell back as the strings returned to Naruto's hand, 
Hinata now stepped up to bat and took a Jukun stance as for Naruto he took the fighting pose that he used when he was Nexus. Circling around each other Hinata decided to make the first move but Naruto used his right hand to block the strike which meant that Hinata's strike could not get through it. Deciding to go for a low strike Hinata quickly ducked down and tried knocking Naruto off of his feet but Naruto saw this and jumped into the air forming a ball of energy and slamming it against her back, sending her flying forward. Getting up Naruto saw that Hinata stood back up and faced him along with Shin, Yamato and Kiba so now he was surrounded. End song. But a red glow appeared around Naruto revealing themselves to be Rias and the rest of her peerage. Kiba had his sword drawn as he calmly stepped forward and placed his sword on the ground. Rainer also formed a light spear and brought it down facing them. Kaneko flexed her gloves. Akino had lightning crackling in her hands looking at the shinobi with emotionless eyes while Rias stepped in front of Naruto. Naruto are you alright? Naruto nodded as the shinobi slowly began to back off feeling the power that was rolling forth from the people. Yamato sensei, what should we do? Yamato had to grit his teeth. The amount of power rolling off of these people now was downright scary, could he take the risk that his jutsus could stop them? No it was better to fall back and come back later, Kiba, Hanada, Shino were getting out of here. Quickly performing a hand sign they got out of the area, leaving just the devils who relaxed. Bushu do you think they've realized their lesson? Kiba asked sheathing his blade. No I don't think so, the next time they may not be so lenient. Rias replied as they all teleported back to the clubhouse where they saw Sona and her peerage watching TV. Sona what are you doing here? Sona pointed at the television which showed Chaos Cosmos attacking a city while a news reported gave the scoop. Chaos Cosmos has now began to approach the small town of Sarah which is still in the process of evacuation. SDF ground forces are doing their best to stall Chaos Cosmos but without proper support it is of no use. The scene shifted to a shaky camera of men opening fire onto Chaos Cosmos but it did nothing as Chaos Cosmos continued to approach the city before it switched back to the news reporter. If Ultraman Nexus can hear us please help the people need help. The news continued to run but Naruto noticed someone in the back. Yumal san And from the looks of things she was holding onto a baby. Turning his back to everyone Naruto quickly ran outside where there was space and held the evil thruster in his right hands with his sacred gear out. Nexus, Bushu says that I am stronger now, so please give me the power to protect those in need. Nexus, Naruto screamed as the light covered him just as everyone in the clubhouse rushed outside to see him transform. Naruto please be careful, Rias held her hands close to her heart and if she could pray then she most probably would have. With Chaos Cosmos vs SDF, Play Ultraman Dina and Ultraman Tiga Warriors of the Star of Light Ost 03 Super Guts 1. Chaos Cosmos is approaching the first defensive line nothing we're doing is stopping him. Ah, screamed the soldiers as they were about to be stepped on however the combined attack of the SDF Eagle managed to stop Chaos Cosmos momentarily. SDF ground forces this as the SDF Eagle will hold Chaos Cosmos off so get your men out of there. Wataru screamed into his headset as they split up the SDF Eagle into the individual jets to avoid one of Chaos Cosmos beam attacks and flew around Chaos Cosmos opening fire on him in an attempt to draw him away from the city. Chaos Cosmos gave a pained grunt before he crossed his arms and threw up a slash of energy that nearly hit SDF Eagle Gamma, Ibuki watch yourself. Roger, responded Ibuki as he pressed the trigger and released a missile that headed straight for Chaos Cosmos impacting against his chest and throwing up a mist that drenched Chaos Cosmos freezing him temporarily in place. All right the bomb worked. Ibuki cried out but he was too early as the ice soon cracked and shattered due to Chaos Cosmos giving a loud roar. Shit the bomb didn't work at all. Calm down and continue firing. The three eagles fired off one more combined barrage at Chaos Cosmos who suddenly threw up a barrier that deflected the blasts from the eagles to the buildings on the ground. What? Chaos Cosmos can throw up barriers as well. He's never done that before. Night Raider's change of plan it looks like well have to hit Chaos Cosmos from behind or somewhere where he can't block it so watch yourselves. Roger. They responded as they flew around Chaos Cosmos looking for an opening but just couldn't find one. Sadly for them Eagle Beta got clipped in the front and went down in smoke thankfully Ibuki and Shiori crash landed safely but not before cursing. Damn it not again. 
As Ibuki struggled in trying to keep Eagle Gamma steady hoping that they could crash properly while Shiori went about pressing multiple buttons seeing if secondary thrusts could kick in and to make matters worse Eagle Beta went down momentarily afterwards leaving only Eagle Alpha in the air. Sorry Shin. Ran looks like it's up to you too. Shin and Ran watched as Eagle Beta went down into the town below before they took off into the air, making Chaos Cosmos follow right behind them. The remaining night raiders on the ground gathered after they got out of their downed jets watched as Chaos Cosmos fired beam after beam at Eagle Alpha. Ran, Shin Chaos Cosmos is right behind you be careful. Wataru yelled into his headset as the remaining night raiders just watched knowing that they couldn't do anything to help. Eagle Alpha continued to dodge fire from Chaos Cosmos unable to make a turn about to hit him, damn it. Cursed Shin. All right Ran hold on tight I am going to try flying over Chaos Cosmos as he follows us. Ran's eyes shot open. No don't. But Shin wasn't listening as he performed the move and managed to get behind Chaos Cosmos firing off some shots into his back stunning Chaos Cosmos for the moment. As they flew back towards the ground Chaos Cosmos suddenly appeared in front of them attempting to grab and crush the pesky jet, oh shit we can't dodge this. End song. However they didn't have to as Nexus emerged from below their fighter and punched Chaos Cosmos sending the both of them to the ground, Nexus. On the ground the rest of the Night Raiders saw Chaos Cosmos crash land on the ground as Nexus descended to the ground. Nexus. Alright he came to help. Ultraman Nexus has arrived on the scene. He came to help. The newscaster reported while Rias and company watched and those close to Naruto hoped that he would be okay. Back to the fight. Nexus in his strong mode kinda late but the blue mode is now called strong mode, descended to the ground and faced Chaos Cosmos who roared and allowed the darkness to build up around him. Then from within the darkness a pair of red eyes appeared as the darkness around Chaos Cosmos was blown away to reveal Chaos Cosmos but his dorsal fin had now reversed again and the color scheme on his body changed to red, black and silver, essentially he is now Chaos Cosmos Calamity. No way Chaos Cosmos changed modes exclaimed Nexus as Chaos Cosmos charged up a disc and fired it at Nexus who couldn't dodge out of the way and was hit by the disc face getting thrown backwards in the process but Nexus stood back up ready to defend his old hometown even if it cost him his life. Play Ultraman Nexus Ost 19 Nexus Dash. Nexus took his standard fighting pose circling Chaos Cosmos before Chaos Cosmos gave a roar and charged forward. Nexus switched his stance and moved forward interlacing his arm with Chaos Cosmos and flipped him over but it failed and Chaos Cosmos landed on his feet, however Nexus was able to sneak in a kick that sent Chaos Cosmos flying flying backwards, when he stopped he fell to the ground and grasped his stomach but stood back up nonetheless and went at it again. Chaos Cosmos ran up to Nexus and tried to deliver a kick to the side but Nexus caught it and held Chaos Cosmos leg there, wow my my power feels so much stronger. But Chaos Cosmos had other plans in store for Nexus as he charged up a beam attack and threw it right in Nexus' face, sending him reeling backwards in pain and shock. When Nexus finally picked himself up it was already too late as Chaos Cosmos approached him, picking him up by the neck Chaos Cosmos tightened his grip on it, fortunately for Nexus Eagle Alpha flew in and shot one of the arms holding Nexus up. Pulling it back it back in pain Nexus managed to grab Chaos Cosmos' other hand and pulled it away from his neck before proceeding to charge energy in his free hand and punched Chaos Cosmos in the gut, but it wasn't enough to phase Chaos Cosmos as he brought his legs up to kick Nexus. But Nexus managed to block them with his arm before punching him in the chest sending Chaos Cosmos backwards. End song. When Chaos Cosmos picked himself up he looked over and saw that he had a free shot at the people so he charged up one and fired which released multiple blasts, Nexus saw it and jumped in front of the shot using his body as a shield and getting struck in their place. Landing in a heap on the ground Nexus slowly tried to take his fighting stance again but the pain from all those beam attacks was excruciating and it brought him to his knees gasping for breath, ha, ha, add on to the fact that his color timer also started to blink red. He was losing focus when something finally caught his attention, Nexus. 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 Turning back he saw all the people there cheering him on. Inside Eagle Alpha, Nexus. You can do it. With the other members of the Night Raiders, go Nexus. Don't give up. Play Aoi Kajitsu here. That's right. Everyone is depending on me. I I can't lose. Nexus slowly stood back up and took his fighting pose to the cheer of everyone. 
Chaos Cosmos crossed his hands before firing off one line of beam. Calamity Shot Nexus saw it coming and pushed his hands forward forming a barrier between him and the beam. This was also when Chaos Cosmos finally spoke but it was in a very distorted voice, Die. Nexus. The beam hit the barrier as the ground beneath Nexus began to crack from the pressure also pushing Nexus back slightly but he managed to steal himself and slowly pushed back the beam as the people cheered him on. Feeling the power within him build up Nexus released it all in one explosion of light, Shia. The power of Nexus forced back Chaos Cosmos Calamity Shot as well temporarily blinding all who were looking on at the fight. When the light around Nexus faded everyone could see that he remained the same color, blue, but the silver parts, in strong mode the silver parts resembled Junus red but now they resembled Junus blue, on his body had changed and he now sported something that looked like a blue, red and white bracer on his right hand. While the power within me it feels immense, my bracer I wonder. Nexus thought about it hard before an energy sword formed out of the bracer. This thing resembles my sacred gear that must mean that the power Bushu released within me has finally worked itself out. By now Chaos Cosmos had picked himself up and charged at Nexus. Nexus saw this and ran at Chaos Cosmos when the people thought that they would collide Nexus lowered his body and allowed the inertia to carry him forth knocking Chaos Cosmos off his feet and flipping him over so that he landed on his back. As for Nexus he came to a stop by spinning his legs around stood up calmly retaking his fighting stance. Chaos Cosmos picked himself up and bounded at Nexus with Nexus doing the same and this fight soon made the both of them take off into the sky. Chaos Cosmos threw a punch but Nexus just blocked it before returning the favor and punching Chaos Cosmos through a cloud. From the cloud one blast emerged but it quickly escalated as the single blast split into so many blasts all aimed at Nexus so Nexus quickly shot off into the air flipping backwards, dodging left, dodging right all in an effort to get through the various attack that tried to hit him and when that failed he resorted to blocking some of them with his forearm while destroying others with the use of his energy blade. But there were so many smaller blasts remaining that Nexus had to counter with his own attack which took the form of a large V-shaped beam, broad phase feather blast, firing them off as he went through the barrage of beam attacks from Chaos Cosmos his broad phase feathers hunted down Chaos Cosmos own, ultimately it ended with a 360 degree attack from his energy blade that caused a multitude of explosions that lit up the sky like fireworks. Below the people could see the acceleration of speed from the ultras due to the way it just tore the clouds apart and the destruction of attack caused a light show in the sky above, not even the eagle alpha could keep up with the speed at which they were going at but all of them knew that nexus wasn't going to give up. When the blasts were taken care off chaos cosmos shot after nexus and began to try his best to land a hit on nexus with fast jabs aimed at his head but both of them were currently evenly matched in speed so nexus was able to dodge all of them. Flipping backwards in mid-air Nexus brought his arms back stopping the inertia in the middle of the air and aimed a kick downwards hitting Chaos Cosmos as the both of them descended to the ground below where Chaos Cosmos landed with an enormous quake that shook the whole town and the surrounding area. Nexus flipped off of Chaos Cosmos, alright this is enough. We're finishing this. Bringing his hand over his bracer. It slowly glowed indicating the grow of energy within it as the blade from his bracer grew longer and punching forward Nexus released a beam attack which was a spiral of red and light blue that struck Chaos Cosmos in the chest just as he was standing up. Pushing forward Nexus forced all the energy that he had into the attack and it ultimately vaporized Chaos Cosmos who fell backwards dissipating into nothing but particles of darkness ending the threat of Chaos Cosmos. End Song Below on the ground people cheered loudly at the defeat of Chaos Cosmos but Nexus had other thoughts, Cosmos hopefully you can rest in peace now, I am sorry for what I did to you. Yeah Nexus. The people cheered, Eagle Alpha flew by Nexus so ran and Shin inside the Alpha gave him the thumbs up, while on the ground the Night Raiders gave the thumbs up as well and seeing the SDF personnel do it the civilians followed suit. With his eyesight Nexus saw the thumbs up that everyone was giving and returned the favor by giving them the thumbs up as well before raising his hands into the air and flying off transforming into a ball of light in the process, Shaw. With Nexus, after flying off he landed at the back of the clubhouse he did transformed back into Naruto but instead of the evil thruster appearing in his hand whenever he did so he found that the evil thruster had now combined with his sacred gear. It looks kinda like the night brace when Mebius has it though instead of the gold parts they are white here, the blue jewel on the top of his hand had what looked like a fire inside of it, while the stone on his new bracer also glowed with a flame-like light. 
Nexus, what is going on? Why has the Evil Thruster changed? Our powers are coming together Naruto so we are more powerful than ever before, you truly are amazing Naruto, Naruto had to laugh at Nexus comment. No Nexus it's because of us both that we can fight and protect the people, but now that our powers have merged how do I transform? I believe if you move your left hand over the jewel on the bracer it should activate it, then by doing the same thing you did with the evil thruster you should be able to transform, Naruto nodded as he willed his sacred gear to disappear. Naruto, turning around he saw Rias and her peerage run out while Sona stayed to the shadow smirking. You certainly have an interesting servant Rias, deep within though she felt saddened that Cosmos had been destroyed. Rias surprisingly dove into Naruto's arm making Rainer and Asia jealous while Akino simply raised an eyebrow, Bushu are you? I am glad that you're fine Naruto, but as soon as she said that and let go of Naruto, he collapsed to the ground unconscious. Naruto. Checking Naruto over they found that his body was extremely weak, a side effect of the fighting so they sent him home where Asia sat healing him with her sacred gear while Rainer and Akino did their best to help as well. Rias looked on and wondered. Naruto was never this weak even after fighting that SDF monster could it be that he and Nexus are, no it's impossible such a thing is impossible. Well I think that this is as good as any place to end it for now. So there are probably a lot of dry patches here but honestly I am kinda running out of ideas for how to fill the chapter so maybe you guys could recommend something that you want to read. So this was the first appearance of Kashina, what about Minato you ask? Well I don't care Kashina is more awesome and I am going with it but if you really want a reason then when the SDF stole the energy from Naruto they also stole Minato so technically Minato was in Cosmos body but sadly Cosmos got his life stolen so Minato is now stuck in the void somewhere. Right before I forget just so you guys know what to expect there should be about two more filler chapters, one is specifically for Akino while the other one will be to gather allies for the finale it'll give you more details as we get closer but just know the Razor arc is going to be starting soon. She had closed herself off to everyone including Kuroka after coming home from the incident, Kuroka came by every day to check on Tamamo but every day she was locked in her room holding the Cosmo pluck close to her chest sobbing. One day when Kuroka came over she saw Tamamo sitting in the living room, Ah Tamamo, Kuroka didn't know what else to say at this point, it seemed as though nothing she said could help heal the hole in her heart. Kuroka was about to come over and give Tamamo some food when suddenly Tamamo stood up anger burning in her eyes as she threw a fireball at Kuroka who had to throw up a shield to protect herself when the fire faded Kuroka saw Tamamo, tears running down her face. It's all your fault, it's all your fault Goshujin sama is gone. If you didn't show him where the base was then he would still be here. She screamed throwing fireballs and raising fire pillars all of it aimed at Kuroka. While this was happening bystanders were watching the raging Tamamo attack Kuroka all while wondering what was going on. They hadn't seen Naruto and Tamamo walking together for a while. Inside Kuroka she was also feeling pain. She knew that it was partly her fault that Naruto hasn't come back yet and she was willing to take responsibilities for her actions but she wanted to rescue Naruto first. This was also when Tamamo broke down and unleashed a firestorm that circled around her, what is going on? Kuroka asked she had never seen this kind of fire magic before. Kuroka-san you have to stop Tamamo-chan she's entering the final phase of Akitsun's depression. B but I've never seen one this serious before, an elder cried out. Akitsun depression what's that? Kuroka asked shielding herself from the heat which was when she noticed the Cosmo pluck lying on the ground, Tamamo must have dropped it in her rage. Tamamo's sadness is destroying her from the inside out. If you don't stop her she will eventually destroy herself. Kuroka's eyes widened when she heard that and from within the firestorm she could hear the sobbing from Tamamo. Using her magic she formed a water shield and pushed herself into the middle of the firestorm where Tamamo was. The heat inside the firestorm was really intense each step Kuroka took increased the amount of magical energy that she needed to maintain the shield and keep her from being burnt to a crisp but she continued to push on to save Tamamo. Once inside she could see Tamamo she was in a fetal position parts of her were already burning away, go away. I don't want to see you. I just want Goshujin sama with me again. Tamamo I understand your pain. A long time ago I did something terrible and it caused the one person I care for an immense amount of pain to the point where she cut off most of her emotions and ever since that day I've always regretted what I've done, and I realize the pain that I've caused you but she pulled out the Cosmo pluck to show it to Tamamo. 
Naruto needs your help to wake up from the darkness first and I realize that I can't do it alone so please don't do this think of Naruto. He wouldn't want you to be like this. Tamamo seeing the Cosmo pluck reached out and grasped it suddenly feeling a sense of warmth that she never realized before. Don't worry Tamamo as long as you have this I am here for you, a voice that resembled Naruto told her as some kind of apparition of him appeared and wrapped her in a hug. Grabbing the Cosmo pluck Tamamo held it close to her chest as tears fell down her face while the firestorm around Tamamo died down. When the firestorm was all gone Kuroka collapsed to her knees exhausted from the use of so much magical power. When she walked over to Tamamo she saw that Tamamo had fallen asleep holding the Cosmo pluck close to her, the last of her tears falling from her eyes. So picking up Tamamo she brought her home and laid her on the bed. Don't worry Tamamo well save Naruto I promise. With that thought Kuroka left Tamamo's room and found a place to sleep in the living room with a spare futon that Tamamo had. Flash forward to the day after the end of the last chapter. It was sunny with a couple of clouds the next day when Naruto finally woke up and boy was he feeling the weight on his chest and his pillow felt softer than he ever realized. Ah, uh, that fight must have taken more out of me than I realized. He tried to pick himself up but found that they were really heavy shifting his body around a bit. His eyes went wide when he saw the weight that was on his chest and what he was snuggling into. Asia had fallen asleep on his right arm. Akino had fallen asleep on his chest. Rainer had fallen asleep on his left arm and last but not least Rias had somehow managed to fall asleep near his head. And just like the last time Rias was naked but this time Akino, Asia and Rainer were also naked which just made this moment even more awkward, comfortable for Naruto. Thankfully he was still dressed if not this moment would have made him rise. So Naruto is this what humans call Opai Heaven? Nexus asked from within Naruto's mind. Really don't need that right now. Raged Naruto inside his mind of course. So can I take that as a yes? Naruto. Time to get up. Sophia called out from the bottom of the stairs. Upon hearing this Naruto tried to escape the grasp of the girls but when he moved, all of them simultaneously increased their grip on the body part that they were holding onto so that meant that Naruto's head was being pulled closer to Rias' breasts. Akino tightened her grip on his chest which meant that he breasts were being pushed into his chest and as for Asia and Rainer they pulled Naruto's arms into their chest. Footsteps were soon heard coming up the stairs. Naruto if you don't get up soon you're going to be late for school. This goes the same for you as well Asia Chan, Rainer Chan. The door to his room slowly opened as Sora saw what was going on inside and her eyes widened. Ah. Just make sure to use protection Naruto. She yelled as she quickly closed the door and went downstairs. Jin. Jin. Naruto is doing it. Really. Did you tell him to use protection? Naruto's mouth was left open which was when all the girls woke up rubbing the sleep from their eyes which was when Rainer and Asia noticed that they were naked. Ah. Why are we naked? The both of them screeched covering themselves with their arms since a blanket was nowhere in sight. But both of their cries were quickly silenced by Akino coming and hugging them. Ah oh, what's wrong Asia Chan? Rainer Chan wasn't it good that we got to sleep with Naruto Kun in the nude? Looking down they saw that Naruto's head was being snuggled by Rias breasts and both girls blushed. We slept with Naruto Kun in the nude. But wait we still had our clothes when we fell asleep so who took them off? Rainer asked looking at Asia who had the unknown look on her face before turning to Akino who was beaming with happiness. Should have guessed, thought Rainer as she got off the bed with Asia and began to search for their clothes in the pile that must have contained hers, Asia and Akino's while Akino proceeded to wake up Rias who didn't want to and snuggled even closer to Naruto. Now his face was planted directly in her magnificent breasts which made Akino a little jealous, but Akino managed to rectify this problem by grabbing Naruto from Rias and hug him into her breasts which made both Asia and Rainer look down at their own busts which were slightly smaller in Rainer's case and were much bigger than Asia's. Akino's move also woke Rias up and she saw all the chaos unfold before her. Each of the girl were trying to steal Naruto for themselves and it just landed him in the middle of Akino, Asia, Rainer and Rias' breasts. Rias was there just for fun when she snuggled up to him it made her feel warm and she wanted to experience that feeling again. This must be what humans call Opai heaven right Naruto. Naruto, are you alright? Nexus asked once again trying to affirm his suspicion but he didn't get a response as Naruto had already fainted, blood running out of his nose as the girls continued to fight over him. Little bit later, 
Rias and part of her peerage had stopped fighting over Naruto long enough to get dressed and they were now in their respective classes, though all of them were late for the same reasons. Man Naruto I thought that you weren't going to make it to the field trip today, what happened? Naruto had to turn around and cover his nose to stop the blood from coming out as he remembered the events that took place in the morning. Hey Naruto are you alright? Kai asked making Naruto give him the thumbs up. Yeah it'll be fine just give me a second. Pinching the bridge of his nose for a few seconds he turned back to Kai when he thought that he was fine. Well I um had some trouble at home but don't worry about it. Everything was taken care of, Naruto replied with a laugh as the teacher in charge of the field trip came in. Alright class now we're going to see the new exhibit at the museum with the seniors, also make sure to do the assignment attached to this trip, there will be extra credit attached to the assignment for those that need it, the teacher announced as they made their way to the buses where they were split into the two buses. Naruto, Rainer and Asia were on one bus with a couple of other students from their class, when they boarded the bus they saw that Rias and Akino were also on the bus. Akino waved for Naruto and the two girls to sit with them at the very back so Naruto was now stuck in between Akino and Rainer on one side while Asia and Rias were on the other side on the way to the museum Naruto began to doze off and he unknowingly laid his head on Rias' shoulder when Rias saw this she ran her hand across Naruto's hair. And as Naruto slept he dreamed that Chaos Cosmos returned one final time in the middle of the city and began to wreck the city which got him to wake up holding his hand to his chest, that dream, it seemed so real but I destroyed Chaos Cosmos didn't I? Nexus could Chaos Cosmos still be alive? It is plausible so be careful Naruto. When they finally reached the museum Naruto apologized to Rias for falling asleep on her shoulder but Rias just patted his head, don't worry about it Naruto I liked it as well so it's alright. Getting off the bus Naruto and the rest of the first years gathered with their teacher as they were led through the museum to see the new exhibit. Welcome to our new exhibit as you can see these are all ancient earth artifacts some of which were donated by the SDF now come on let's take a look at the most important piece of our new exhibit. The guide led them down the hallways where the exhibits were and it led to a giant slab of stone which had carvings in it. Here is the piece that the SDF so graciously donated to us. Looking up at the giant slab of stone they could see that it had carvings of some kind of giant monster and it had a carving of a giant fighting it. Now as you can see this stone depicts what we suspect to be Ultraman Nexus fighting some kind of ancient monster. We're not too sure about the origin of the statue but the carvings is ages old. Now then your teachers say that all of you have permission to explore the new exhibit so long as you all come back in two hours. Now go on and have fun exploring everything here. As soon as the guide was done with her announcement everyone separated into their own groups to look through the exhibits. Whereas Naruto stayed where the giant slab was, paying attention to all the details of the stone but he was stopped by Rias and her peerage who pulled him away. Looking back at the slab one more time he finally realized something, that giant isn't Nexus and it's not Cosmos either. Going through the various exhibits they found more broken statues. Carvings and all that some of them resembled the giant from the giant slab but one of the ones that was more damaged seemed to resemble Cosmos as well it wasn't until they happened upon another slab carving that depicted a giant fighting alongside other monsters to stop one and the weird thing was this one looked like Cosmos, which just affirmed Naruto's suspicion about Cosmos now the only mystery left to solve was who was the other giant in the enormous slab of stone. After school. Naruto was working in the cafe while Asia was there doing homework in case any troublemakers all Konoha Shinobi decided to stop by and try anything, and this time Naruto was manning the cash register and getting everyone's order. This was also when a man that looked about 20 years old with black hair with the front colored white wearing a suit stepped in and approached the counter. Ah hello there I've heard from people that this place is the best place to get some buns is that right? Ah well I don't really know how to answer that since I work here. Naruto replied getting a chuckle out of the man. Ahahaha don't worry about it it'll be the judge of that, can I have one of your best buns and I would also like a drink to go with that if you please. Sure what drink would you like, Naruto asked. Surprise me, the man exclaimed as he handed Naruto a big note and told them to keep the change before he took a seat in the cafe and was served his drink which he took some sips out of wanting to wait until his buns got here and then enjoy the both of them at the same time. When his buns finally came he picked one up and took a whiff of them, and from the smell he could tell that they were going to be delicious, when he took his first bite time for him seemed to stop for a moment as a single tear fell from his face, th this bun is delicious. 
The man quickly finished his bun before going up to the counter and placed a bunch of notes on it. I want all of the buns that I just had. A few minutes later the man was on his way out of the cafe with all the buns that the man wanted. Just as the man was about to open the door Akino opened it and passed by him. Hey Naruto-kun. So that is Barakil's child huh? She's certainly grown up. The man thought as he continued on his way. Oh hey Akino. Sorry but it seems like it'll be a little late to the meeting so um could you tell Bushu. But instead Akino opted to stay and wait with Asia while Naruto went to the kitchen to make more buns for service. When he was finally done with it, he told his boss that the buns were all ready and he should take them out when they were needed, but before Naruto could leave he had to take out the trash, so he packed it up and stepped outside lifting the trash bag into the container before walking back to the door but just as he was about to touch the knob it suddenly went further away from him, huh? What's going on? Naruto ran up to the door knob but it just continued to move further away from him just as he was about to touch it, no it can't be, this is a genjutsu. Outside of Naruto's mind the light from his eyes faded as he fell to the floor the after effects of Hinata's Juken strikes taking effect, while Kurenai and Kakashi stepped out into the open, few good job Kurenai, maybe now we can get Naruto back to the village where he belongs. Hinata did you make sure that the points you hit were the ones that would disable Naruto? Hinata nodded before Kakashi moved over and picked him up. Now let's get back home, this place is starting to get to me. Kurenai and Hinata nodded before they jumped off into the direction of the portal and by the time Asia and Akino came out to check on him there was very little trace of Naruto's energy left. By now the three shinobi had to stop for a while to cast a genjutsu on them to hide them from the citizens of this world, but by now Naruto had already woken up, oi. Tem let me go but before Naruto could continue they slapped a piece of tape over his mouth. Naruto tired to move but his limbs were just too heavy to move so even if he could summon forth his sacred gear he couldn't do anything to cut the rope binding him. Suddenly Kakashi stopped in mid-movement when he felt something behind him. Quickly spinning around he saw a weird girl with a pair of cat ears and a very low-cut dress, oh it's just what this world calls a cosplayer. Kakashi slowly relaxed as he walked up to the lady. Hey there lady don't mind us we're just a couple of cosplayers and our friend tied up over there is just part of our act. Kakashi ended with a simple laugh hoping that the lady would buy it but apparently the lady now got really interested in them, oh really so what are you all cosplaying as? Kakashi had to look at both Hinata and Kurenai as the both of them shrugged while Naruto looked at the lady with cat ears and prayed that she could possible stall them until the effects of the Juken strikes ended, um well we're all cosplaying as plain clothes shinobi. Uh huh, then I guess he'll just leave you all to be, the lady stepped through him but at the last moment she reached down and grabbed Naruto before jumping up the walls onto the rooftop. Go after her, but before they could fire rain down on them from above making the shinobi roll onto the street in an attempt to dodge the flame, they saw a girl with a pair of fox ears and tail jump away in the direction of the cat-eared lady. They wanted to go after her but their jumping out of the alleyway along with the sound of explosions caught the attention of everyone in within a few meters and this included a couple of Sidagan soldiers patrolling the area as per their orders. Hey look, that guy over there is dressed like the one that's been reportedly breaking into houses. The Sidagan soldiers ran down the street while the shinobi cursed their luck and made their way down the alleyway in an attempt to escape from them. Shit they're running. Fireteam 2 to 4 this is Fireteam 2 to 1 we eyes on suspected targets and they're headed in the direction of your patrol stop them. The squad leader reported as they chased after the shinobi occasionally jumping out of the way when they pushed some civilians to the ground, their boots shuffled against the ground. Fireteam 2 to 1 we've got it. Well cut them off at location 6 to 1. Alright well meet you there 2 to 1 out. The Sidagan soldiers finally had a clear shot as they turned a corner and the shinobi were running down a straight alleyway so they fired their guns but missed as the shinobi went left and escaped the bullets. The soldiers continued to chase the shinobi down the path that they took and it was here that they met up with Fireteam 2 to 4 and together both fireteams chased down the shinobi, when they finally thought they caught up to them at a dead end the shinobi ran up a wall escaping the Sidagan soldiers. Damn it, what the hell was that? The leader of both fire teams cursed as all of them slowed down to catch their breaths and report their situation in. Base this as fire team 2 to 1 and 2 to 4 we found some suspected target but, we lost them. How did you lose them? You guys went down a dead end right? They somehow managed to run up the wall before we could get a clear shot, one of them sighed. 
Alright then give us your location and we'll send a chopper to check the area out. Maybe they'll be sticking around for a while. In the meantime return to your patrol maybe you can find other suspects. The operator replied as both fire teams went back to their patrol routes. With Naruto. After being freed by the cat-eared lady and the fox-eared lady whom he remembered was called Tamamo. Thank you for helping me, both of you and if I remember correctly you are Tamamo right? Tamamo nodded her head. And you are. Naruto pointed to the other lady and she felt familiar. I am Kuroka and we need your help. Naruto nodded as the three of them teleported to Tamamo's hut where they explained why they needed their help. In the end Tamamo was asked to leave the room since she didn't know about Cosmos being turned evil or his physical body being temporarily destroyed. I agree with you Kuroka-san. Cosmos isn't himself and I believe that he is still inside of the body but asleep. He's not evil that much I am willing to bet but the hard part come in how do we get Cosmos back to normal. Well Tamamo has his transformation device so maybe it has something to do with that. Naruto nodded his head as the both of them left the room and saw Tamamo playing around with some strange device so walking up to her Naruto sat down in front of her. Tamamo Kuroka tells me that you have the transformation device is that right? Tamamo nodded and passed it to him to take a look. Tamamo I am going to need to borrow this to save Cosmos is that all right? Tamamo nodded sadly but Naruto promised her that he would return it when everything was done. Once Naruto had the Cosmo pluck he ran outside where he saw Kuroka waiting for him. All right Kuroka-san I've got the Cosmo pluck but now could you send me back to the city? All right, Kuroka formed a seal around Naruto and when he opened his eyes he found himself near his school so he quickly ran back to the school where Rias was raging at the fact that he got captured by the shinobi so he had to quickly defuse the situation by explaining that he managed to escape from them thanks to the help of some SDF soldiers which was kinda true, and as he explained all of this he thought that he saw Kaneko eyeing him for some strange reason. After the meeting, Naruto was about to walk back home with Rainer in Asia when Kaneko called out to him. Naruto-san can I ask you something? Naruto asked Rainer and Asia to go first as he went back to talk to Kaneko, so what did you want to ask Kaneko? Just how did you escape from those people who were after you? Well I told Rias Bushu that the soldiers from the SDF saw them and helped me out, Naruto replied but Kaneko wasn't exactly buying it nonetheless she decided to drop the matter for now however she left Naruto with a small piece of advice. Just be careful Naruto. That woman is very dangerous and associating with her can lead to dangerous situations, Kaneko walked by Naruto whose eyes were wide open. Just what did she mean by that? Thought Naruto as he watched Kaneko walk away. That night, Naruto laid in his bed looking at the Cosmo Pluck and talking with Nexus in his mind, so now comes the big question Nexus how do I get Chaos Cosmos back to normal? I I am not so sure Naruto. Cosmos seems very similar to me but he is still a totally different being than me and I don't know the full extent of his powers. Hiding the Cosmo pluck under his pillow Naruto grabbed his blanket and fell asleep, well when the time comes maybe something will help us figure it out. Naruto's dreams. He was now floating in some kind of space and he was watching over a very old village as it was slowly being destroyed by some monster. The warriors from the village tried their best to fight against the monster but it was all useless as their arrows did nothing to the monster. And when all seemed hopeless a giant of light appeared before them and it was one that Naruto recognized, that is Cosmos. He watched as Cosmos tried his best to calm down the giant monster but failed so he changed to his corona mode and destroyed the creature but before he flew off Cosmos transformed back into his luna mode and helped the villagers by repairing their buildings and putting out fires caused by the monster before he flew off into the sky. End dream. A couple of days later. The next few days had passed without much worry, and it seemed like your average days as a devil where Naruto, Rainer in Asia went to school studied and when school was over they attended their occult club meetings before going home. And as for Naruto the dream that he had prompted him to visit the museum one last time to get a look at the carvings one last time, this time he made sure to snap plenty of pictures of the carvings before he headed home and looked through all of them with interest sorting them out into the ones that resembled Cosmos and the ones that resembled the other giant. When Saturday came around Naruto and Rias were alone in the clubhouse Naruto was helping out Rias for the moment because Akino got summoned by someone. In the afternoon they received a letter saying that there was a monster with a low energy signature was located in their area so they decided to investigate the area to find out what monster was in Rias territory, 
but just in case they made a call to the rest of her peerage telling them to teleport to the area if they were done with their duties. Once in the area Naruto and Rias went through the area trying to find the energy signature but couldn't and as they were walking past a bush which was when Naruto noticed something sticking out of them, and they looked like a pair of fox ears. Leaving Rias side Naruto approached the bush but before he could react a pair of arms pulled him into the bush where he found Tomomo hiding covering his mouth, shish. When Tomomo guessed that Rias had walked away she let go of Naruto's mouth who spoke to her in an angry but soft tone, Tomomo-san what are doing? I I just wanted some news, did you manage to help Goshujin sama She asked with teary ears. Well I haven't been able to locate him yet so I am not so no I haven't been able to help him yet, Naruto replied making Tomomo's ears droop down in sadness. Oh I I see, but once you find him could you however before she could continue she felt a hand on her shoulder and it wasn't Naruto's. So you thought that you could steal my servant from me? Slowly turning around Tomomo and Naruto saw Rias right behind them. The sudden sight of her made Tomomo jump into the air a little while Naruto turned around and pushed himself against the bush. Bushu, yelled Naruto, now explain what you were doing to my servant. However Naruto moved up and sat next to her. No Bushu don't blame her everything was my fault you see I, I have to help her get Cosmos under control. Rias looked at Naruto with widened eyes. Naruto, you saw what Cosmos did, and you think that you can help him. Naruto nodded. Yes I know that Cosmos isn't truly dead he is inside of that body I just have to find some way to get to him, he isn't evil deep down Bushu you have to understand. Rias gaze softened as she turned away. How sure are you about this Naruto? I am definitely sure, Naruto reaffirmed making Rias nod her head. As all three of them stood up suddenly a wave of air went by them blinding them for a moment. When they were able to see again they saw that Chaos Cosmos had landed in the city with a loud explosion throwing up rubble into the area and in his hand he was carrying some kind of pillar. Tomomo's eyes widened when she saw Chaos Cosmos thinking that it was Cosmos, Goshujin sama She cried out as she ran up to him happy that she could finally see him again. Tomomo don't, Naruto yelled out but it was too late as Tomomo had already run off, and he was being held back by Rias. Bushu let me go I have to stop them. Rias eyes softened. Just promise me that you will be alright Naruto-kun and make sure no one sees you transform. Naruto promised before Rias let go of his hand and he chased after Tomomo. Within the city Sidagan patrols were guiding civilians towards the shelters while they called into the Sidagan about what was happening. As for Chaos Cosmos he headed towards the giant clock tower that stood in the center of town and while the people were running in the direction of the shelter Tomomo pushed through them to get to her loved one. Seeing him head towards the clock tower made Tomomo run up the walls of the clock tower heading to the roof so that she could get his attention, Naruto saw this and had no choice but to summon forth his sacred gear and began scaling the clock tower. When Tomomo finally reached the top when she noticed that something was wrong with Cosmos, Goshujin sama What is wrong? Chaos Cosmos saw Tomomo standing there and moved his face closer to inspect her. Tomomo reached up and touched his face before going close to it and lying against it, my Goshujin sama Suddenly Chaos Cosmos pulled back and began screaming in pain using one hand to hold his head, Tomomo. Get away from there. This got Tomomo's attention as when she turned back Chaos Cosmos' fist was raised in the air and about to come down onto the tower so Naruto dived forward and caught Tomomo as the two of them free fall towards the ground, hold on tight. Yelled Naruto as he pointed his sacred gear at the ground. Please work, please work, please work. With enough concentration he made a shield pointed downwards as the air caught on it slowing their descent down but not enough. So Naruto completely solidified his shield blocking people from seeing his devil wings sprout but he wasn't very proficient in using his devil wings so he crash landed in a pile with Tomomo. Ao didn't really think that would work but it did, commented Naruto as he stood up and ran in the direction of Chaos Cosmos not realizing that he dropped the Cosmo pluck with Tomomo who was crying. Goshujin sama what happened to you? She cried before noticing the Cosmo pluck on the ground so moving to pick it up she ran after Naruto hoping to pass it over to him. Play Nexus Ost 45 Final Fight. 
As for Naruto he was running in the direction Chaos Cosmos was but had to stop for a moment since Chaos Cosmos placed the pillar in the clock tower which then began to spew up unnatural black clouds of something so yelling as loud as he could while also using his hands to amplify his voice, Cosmos. I know you are in there. Wake up this isn't you. Chaos Cosmos with his duty done suddenly turned around and fired off a small bolt at Naruto who brought up a shield to protect himself but it still sent him flying backwards landing on the ground a little bit of blood coming down his head, d damn it Cosmos. Standing up Naruto reached into his jacket but found that the Cosmo pluck was gone so left with no choice he placed his left hand on his new evil bracer before pulling back making the jewel on it grow bright with power before raising it into the air yelling, Nexus. In a flash of bright light that covered Naruto he transformed into Nexus, though unbeknownst to him someone had managed to catch a video of him transforming but in very low quality due to the distance they were at. Nexus flipped and landed in the city transforming into his new form, which at the moment resembles Junus Blue exactly, with his transformation it also caught the attention of Chaos Cosmos who brought his hand down to reveal some kind of claw. No way his abilities have increased again. Chaos Cosmos gave a loud growl and punched the ground making some kind of barrier form around the two ultras and throwing the area further into the unnatural darkness that now encompassed this area. Nexus turned to look around as the barrier formed around him and looked back at Chaos Cosmos who laughed evilly before firing off multiple arcs of energy at Naruto forcing him to bring up his barrier blocking the arcs of energy but before Nexus could counterattack Chaos Cosmos dashed up to him and held his claw at Nexus shoulder a glow emitting from the claw. Nexus did his best to hold on to it but Chaos Cosmos overpowered him and slashed downwards with the claw igniting sparks against Nexus body sending him falling back, adding on to it Chaos Cosmos fired off a giant ball of energy that sailed through the air and impacted against Nexus. This attack sent Nexus sailing into the air before landing on some buildings which were thankfully empty most in part to the soldiers from the Sitagon. As Nexus picked himself up he brought out his sword and charged at Chaos Cosmos who dodged by sidestepping then counter-attacked by jabbing the claw straight into Nexus' abdomen piercing it making Nexus cry out in pain. Nexus continued to cry out with pain as Chaos Cosmos continued jabbing into Nexus before finally picking Nexus up and performing a suplex on him using the building as extra points to deliver pain unto Nexus. As the buildings crumbled away Nexus was left sprawling on the ground and as he struggled to pick himself up feeling weaker than before, no way could it be that he is draining my energy. Nexus picked himself up and took his fighting stance but fell back to the ground, no, it's this barrier it's also sapping my power, b but I can't give up everyone is depending on me. Nexus fired off multiple arcs of energy from his hands before standing up and running at Chaos Cosmos diving at the last minute and tackling Chaos Cosmos to the ground. Rarg. End song. Outside the barrier. The three SDF eagles had arrived on the scene and they saw the barrier encompassing part of the city in utter darkness. Command are you getting a look at this? Yes we are eagle beta it seems as though the two ultras are fighting inside should we proceed inside the cloud to provide support for Nexus. Negative maintain your position we don't know what's going on in there. For all we know you could end up being a nuisance to Nexus. Command replied as the pilots inside their respective jets kept their fingers on the trigger. Soon the barrier faded to reveal Chaos Cosmos standing triumphant over Nexus but this time Nexus' eyes were slightly darkened out and the color from his color timer was extremely faint. No way. Nexus he he. Nexus lost. Ran said out loud. Newscopters that were in the area closed up on Nexus to show the viewers his state. This made Akino, Asia Rainer and Rius cover their mouths. N Naruto can't be dead he just can't. Asia screamed out but was calmed down by Akino. No Naruto isn't gone yet, there is still light in his color timer. Naruto please stand up, thought Rias as she held her hands together along with the other girls. As the eagles opened fire on Chaos Cosmos who left Nexus body laying there, Nexus finger twitched for a moment before the bigger jewel just below his color timer gave a beep and Nexus shakingly stood back up but from the looks of things Nexus was barely conscious at this point. Chaos Cosmos simply laughed at Nexus' attempt to continue fighting and walked up to Nexus, gripping his throat Chaos Cosmos threw him to the side where Nexus laid there sprawled out his face was pointed towards the ground as he tried to pick himself up but continued to fall back down. On the ground Tomomo had seen everything since she was encompassed in the darkness that Chaos Cosmos created, Goshujin-sama, please come back to me. 
Chaos Cosmos was now swatting at the air in the hope that he could hit the eagles as they maneuvered around his strikes. Tamamo suddenly imagined she heard her Naruto call out to her, Tamamo, help. Goshujin sama B but how? Feeling a presence behind her she allowed it to move her body. Grasping the Cosmo pluck in one hand her other hand hovered over the tip of the pluck and she allowed energy from her to flow to it mixing in with the residual energy from the pluck before she raised it into the air yelling, Cosmos. From within the pluck a bright light was shot into the sky and headed for Nexus Color Timer when it touched Nexus Color Timer he glowed golden for a few seconds before disintegrating into a golden dust. Everyone was surprised when that happened but soon something unexpected happened. Play Cosmos Op Spirit. The golden dust that Nexus disintegrated into soon gathered in a whirlpool slowly bit by bit it formed a golden giant that resembled Cosmos Luna Mode that slowly stood up from the kneeling position and turned to face Chaos Cosmos. Command Nexus just shifted his form. He became a giant made of gold light. The golden giant took the crane-style stance of his arms in T-shape before holding one arm out forward and the other near his head. Haya, he cried out in what sounded like a mixture between the grunts of Cosmos and Nexus. This is the real form that Cosmos takes when he appears. He can win this fight now. Ran commented as the other pilots gawked at the giant of golden light. Chaos Cosmos had to cover his eyes as the light that the golden Cosmos was giving off was too bright. The darkness around them also dispersed by the golden Cosmos who pushed his arms out sending out a wave of golden energy that destroyed it all. Th the darkness it's gone. Cosmos destroyed it in one shot. The golden cosmos now shifted his stance so that his hands were in front of his color timer as white energy that gave off a feeling of calm and peace gathered there. Chaos cosmos saw it and was about to move forward so as to stop cosmos but something inside of him was stopping him as he had to struggle just to take a step forward. Inside chaos cosmos, the other Naruto was slowly waking up when the light that the golden cosmos gave off touched the entire area and he remembered the time that he spent with Tamamo even if it was very short he loved her and nothing was going to change that. Then more memories flashed by, memories of him saving people from giant monsters then helping the people out before finally going to sleep when they no longer needed him. These memories there, mine, I I am not just Naruto, I am me I may have his shape and body but these memories that I have with Tamamo, they're mine and no one can ever take them away from me. He cried out tears falling from his eyes. Slowly Naruto opened his eyes to see vision of Tamamo crying for him then a bright light suddenly appeared in front of him he wanted to reach out for it but the darkness around him stopped him soon the bright light faded to reveal the spirit of Tamamo, she had come to help she was reaching out to grab his hand. The darkness that Naruto was swimming around in lashed out at her hand but she simply batted them away before reaching her hand out crying out, Goshujin sama grab my hand. Tamamo, the darkness it's stopping me, I I can't. Naruto cried out tears flowing from his eyes as he desperately reached for it. Don't worry Goshujin sama I am here for you now and I am not letting go ever again. Using all of his strength Naruto's hand burst from the darkness. He grabbed Tamamo's hand while she slowly pulled him out of the darkness that inhibited his body before carrying him out of it. Meanwhile outside, the golden cosmos pushed the energy forward releasing it as light particles that headed towards chaos cosmos who by now completely stopped moving as he just allowed the energy to hit his entire body, his hand continued to reach out to the golden cosmos as if he was sending him a message only the two of them could understand. Soon the color patterns on chaos cosmos began to change from black and red to gold, blue and red, the red eyes of Chaos Cosmos also started to fade away revealing Cosmos light colored ones and last but not least the blinking amber light in Chaos Cosmos color timer slowly started to fade away to reveal a blinking red one. The darkness within Chaos Cosmos was soon expelled as it went away to unknown parts while the body of Cosmos fell to the ground unmoving for the moment. The golden Cosmos stepped up to Cosmos body and pointing two fingers at his forehead while holding his hand over Cosmos color timer it transferred the rest of his power over to Cosmos bringing his color timer's color back to green while the golden light from the golden Cosmos faded to reveal Nexus standing there with his hand sticking out for Cosmos. Cosmos nodded before it grasped Nexus hand and stood up, so Cosmos how do we destroy that pillar? Simple by shooting it. Nexus nodded as he decided to try something new bringing his bracer to his core, it flashed for a quick second before an energy bow appeared and attached itself to his bracer, once there Nexus stuck his hand with the bow out while pulling back on an imaginary string. 
As for Cosmos his arms were placed at the opposite shoulders where orange energy began to gather, bringing them about in a circular motion stopping at a semicircle before seamlessly moving his hand so that his right fist was up in the air where all the energy was before while he used his left hand to balance it out before taking one step forward so that his front leg was bended. The eagle pilots saw what was going on and told each other to focus their fire on the pillar. Together all three forces fired with Nexus releasing an energy wave similar to the shape of the bow, Cosmos released a straight beam that mixed in with Nexus' own and the eagles fired all they had at the pillar destroying it at the base and watched as the tower crumbled in on itself. End song. With the threat gone both Nexus and Cosmos turned to city and began to repair it with their beams, when it was all done they stood up and faced one another before shaking each other's hand. Once done they turned into balls of light flying off to a safe place so that they could transform back to their human forms picking up Tomomo along the way. With both Naruto's, they touched down in the wooded parts where Tomomo lived and transformed back to their human forms, where both K, Naruto and Tomomo got on their knees, thank you for helping, freeing me. Don't worry about it I guess I understand what you were going through, it isn't easy but you had Tomomo here and she never gave up on you so don't cut yourself short. This was when Kuroka burst forth from the house and accidentally hugged you, Naruto unintentionally pushing his face into her bosom. Kuroka-san, wrong Naruto, gasped you, Naruto before Kuroka realized her mistake and unceremoniously dropped him on his butt and got close to the other Naruto. But this time she looked at him with serious eyes and gave him a very simple hug, Naruto, I am sorry for all the trouble that I caused you I hope that you can find it in yourself to forgive me. K. Naruto returned her hug, I accept your apology Kuroka, I guess some things were better left buried. Kuroka smiled naturally before it turned to one that just screamed trouble, so does this mean that I can stay at your house go shu jin sama nya? This angered Tamamo who pulled Kuroka away from K. Naruto as the two of them began to squabble about him. Both Naruto's also took this time to exchange info about how to contact one another by setting up a mental connection between their transformation devices. Once this was done the words that Kaneko spoke to Naruto hit him and he turned to Kuroka, Kuroka-san do you perhaps know someone called Kaneko? Kuroka's eyes widened when she heard that, and instantly the squabbling between Kuroka and Tamamo stopped completely. Kuroka walked forward and beckoned you, Naruto to follow her when they were all alone Kuroka explained her story about their relationship, see Kuroka and Kaneko are actually sisters and the both of them are actually a rare species of Nekomata called Nekosho after losing their parents the both of them were taken in by a high class devil who reincarnated Kuroka into his bishop. But there was a problem, her master wanted to harm Kaneko so Kuroka had no choice but to kill her master and she's been on the run ever since only recently stopping and settling down in Tamamo's village since it was a nice place to live and for K. Naruto as well. Naruto nodded his head understandably and gave up what he knew about Kaneko now to Kuroka which wasn't much but Kuroka appreciated it nonetheless and before Naruto returned to Rias he left Kuroka with some words, you should patch things up with your sister, she's the only family that you have and in the end family is kinda the people that you depend on the most right. With, you, Naruto. He had teleported outside of the school and made his way back to the clubhouse where upon entering he was immediately called to bow in front of Rias who showed him a very out of focus of him transforming but all he could do was nervously laugh and rub the back of his head before being punished with organizing client lists which went from first time users to regulars and handing out flyers for a week making his mouth agape. As Rainier, Asia and Akino comforted Rias couldn't help but crack a smile all the business with Chaos Cosmos was over and maybe their lives as devils could return to a semi-normal state. With Commander Lee, he was now standing in front of another crowd of news reporters who wanted his comment on the video of Nexus transformation as well as the name of the giant that Nexus freed. All right then ladies and gentlemen to answer your questions. The video of Nexus transforming is too blurry for us to tell anything so at this moment we cannot say who the person is but if Nexus is watching this then please come forward the SDF would like to work with you to prevent future attacks like the Chaos Cosmos incident. And as for your second question the second giant is called Cosmos and he is Earth's second protector, news reporters looked around at each other not sure whether he was telling the truth or not. And what about the new bones that have been discovered will the SDF be providing escort for it as it is being transferred? I have no comment about that at the moment, no further questions, Commander Lee replied as he walked away while the reporters wrote down things in their notepads and continued to ask questions hoping that Commander Lee would stop and answer them.
with K. Naruto. He was relaxing in the bath that Tamamo had prepared for him and when he came out Tamamo jumped through the door and snuggled into his arms her outfit now had changed, I don't know how to explain it but she is now wearing her fate extra CCC outfit. Tamamo, what are you wearing? Does Goshujin sama like it? She asked with a blush on her face. Well yeah it looks good but why the change? Suddenly Kuroka came into the room. Oh my is Tamamo jealous that I may perhaps steal Goshujin sama away nya? Tamamo cutely pouted before dragging K. Naruto to their room for bed but just before they were about to sleep Kuroka also teleported into the room to sleep with Naruto. Let's just say that K. Naruto didn't get much sleep at all. Well Naruto it's official it looks like you've got a fever, Sophia commented as she took out the thermometer out from Naruto's mouth and removed her hand from his forehead before stepping out of the room and returning a few moments later with a wet towel, fever medicine and a glass of water. See this is what you get for going around dressed in that silly get up your manager wanted you to wear to promote a new mascot, she lectured as she placed the towel on his head while Naruto flashback to the actual events that took place that day. Flashback Asia had arrived at the cafe wanting to spend some time studying with Naruto but when she entered the cafe she didn't see Naruto working so she asked the person at the counter where he was, oh Naruto he should be outside just take a look around and you should find him. Asia nodded before she went outside to find no one except a weird iguana suit sitting down not moving, so she returned to the cashier who led her outside by now the iguana suit had stood up again and began giving out flyers for the cafe. That's Naruto, the cashier pointed at the iguana suit before going back to his job. Asia walked up to the suit and tapped his shoulder making the suit turn around, ah Asia Chan. Sorry I didn't see you there the suit makes it kind of hard to see. Why are you in the suit Naruto-kun? Asia asked. Well the boss wanted to try to make a mascot for our store as well as new bun designs that he wanted to try out and I drew the short end of the stick ending up in the suit. You're a little early but I should be done soon so just go inside and wait for a little bit then it'll be out. Naruto replied as he continued to hand out flyers to the people walking by some were snickering at his predicament. Asia nodded before she went in took a seat and ordered a drink before she started studying by herself for a moment. Soon she saw Naruto in his iguana suit walk back into the store and proceeded towards the back where sighs of relief could be heard. Naruto soon stepped out red-faced and took a seat next to Asia, so you ready to start Asia? Asia nodded as the two of them began studying soon enough they were joined by Rainer who had finished her class before they received a call from Rias asking them to come to the clubhouse something about gaining familiars. When they arrived at the clubhouse they saw that Rias was having an argument with Sona who also wanted to gain familiars for her peerages, in the end they decided to have a tennis match to determine the winner but that failed and just provided the boys at the school with a free show since it ended with a draw. The next best option was to hold a game of dodgeball to determine who would get the chance to get their familiars first, as an encouragement before the match Naruto decided to make a special bun just for the moment to provide the energy boost that they would need to win. Unfortunately for him he was taken out of the game almost immediately when he hesitated for a moment giving Sona's entire peerage the chance to pelt him with balls and while he managed to dodge out of the path of some balls one of them struck him in the head followed by the second one that struck him in his special place before he dropped to the ground holding his special place in agony. Ah, uhh, cried Naruto as he rolled about on the ground temporarily stopping the game for the moment. Naruto-kun are you alright? Rainer asked before Naruto gave them the thumbs up pushing Asia's hand away when she tried to heal his special place. When he was feeling better he went over to the side and watched as Rias and everyone else won the game for Naruto's bun. When they met the familiar master called Satoshi he introduced various familiars to the three new members of the orc but in the end only Asia managed to get a very special sprite dragon called Raido which was a mixture of the last two syllabus from Naruto's name combined with the fact that the dragon could shoot lightning rai. But before they could leave, the entire party was ambushed by a group of slimes. Be careful, slimes dissolve clothing, Satoshi decided to mention but it was too late as the slimes threw themselves onto the girls and began to eat at their clothes. Kiba and Naruto drew their respective weapons to destroy them but the slimes also attached themselves to their heads leaving them stumbling about. Kiba wildly swinging his sword while Naruto kept trying to grab onto the slime but it simply squeezed through his evil brace. Not being able to see caused Naruto to trip over a rock knocking him over along with three other people, 
When they landed Naruto felt like both of his hands were holding onto something soft and proceeded to squeeze it getting two different moans. Oh my Naruto-kun if you wanted to touch them all you had to do was ask, one of the voices replied. Why would Naruto want to do that? He doesn't even like them big. The other voice replied. A hey, Akano, Rainer. Naruto cried out jumping up and doing his best to tear the slime from his head but just kept slipping through his fingers making it impossible to hold onto. Naruto-san, you are a hentai for falling onto Rainer-san, Akano-san and Bushu, Kaneko flatly stated making Naruto realize the third person he fell on and while this was happening Akano and Rainer were arguing about Naruto's preferences while Asia stood by cradling Raito wishing that she was bigger. Bushu, I am sorry. He quickly apologized but Rias made him stand up as she used a spell to destroy all the slimes freeing everyone from the slimes. Clapping her hands Rias thanked Satoshi before teleporting them back to the clubhouse. End flashback. Then running in the rain after coming back from school, I don't like nagging at you Naruto but you are not invincible, Sophia commented making Naruto nod as he flashed back to why he ran outside in the first place. Flashback. Wow it seems like it might be raining the whole day. Rainer noted as she Asia and Naruto plopped down on the sofa just a few days after the whole familiar incident, and Asia even had Raito out since both of Naruto's parents were out working on the weekends and Naruto had just suffered through another day inside the iguana suit. Over the few days they quickly found out that Raito didn't like Naruto very much as every time he was out and Naruto was near Asia, he would always shock him, so now Asia was playing with Raito as Rainer flipped through the various channels for anything interesting that was on. But their time was stopped when Naruto received a call, Hello, oh hey Bushu what's up? Naruto nodded his head for a while before he put it down and raced upstairs changing into clothes so that he could go out. Naruto what's wrong? Rainer asked as Naruto placed his shoes on. Akino is missing, Bushu has been trying to call her for a while and she didn't answer her phone, she even went to her house and no one was there. This isn't like Akino so I am going out to look for her you girls can stay here just in case she comes by well keep in touch by phone, he replied flashing them his phone before dashing out the door leaving Asia, Rainer and to a lesser extent Raito wondering what was going to happen. Running through the rain Naruto headed towards the cafe, thinking that maybe Akino had gone there for a snack but when he got there he waved at the person in the suit hiding from the rain before bursting into the room quickly scanning he found that Akino wasn't there at all. Cursing Naruto left the cafe making people wonder what that was about, while Naruto continued to run through the rain, Akino-chan where are you? He ran through the entire mall but she wasn't there, he ran to the train station but she wasn't there either, running past the river bank that was by school he remembered that this was the place he came to when Rias told him that he was a devil he noticed someone seated by the river bank wearing the girl's Kuo uniform and this person was rubbing tears out of her eyes. Akino Naruto ran towards her and upon getting closer he could hear sobs coming from her so he took off his hoodie before draping it around Akino's body. When Akino felt the hoodie touch her cold body she turned around to see Naruto standing over her, Akino, what's wrong you can tell me. Akino shed a few tears before jumping into Naruto's arms hugging him as her tears fell from her face, shush, don't worry Akino I am here for you comforted Naruto as he returned her hug and allowed her to cry patting her back to calm her down at the same time. Soon Naruto carried Akino home through the rain while she wore his hoodie to keep herself dry. When they finally reached his house Naruto allowed Akino to go dry off first before he did, thankfully Rainer was nice enough to lend her some of her clothing since she said that she wanted to stay for the weekends. Seeing such a sad look on Akino's face made the three of them worried about her so they allowed her to stay for the weekends bunking in Naruto's room while Naruto slept on the floor allowing Akino to take the bed. End flashback. Alright then Naruto will you be alright alone at home? Sophia asked making Naruto weakly nod his head as he pulled on his blanket bringing it closer to himself. Well just in case he'll make sure to call home when you wake up to take your medicine alright Naruto. Make sure you when you wake up drink plenty of water and take your medicine on time, it'll set the alarm for you just in case you oversleep so you just rest alright sweetie, Naruto once again nodded as he tried to fall asleep while Sophia placed a kiss on the top of his head before stepping outside to see Rainer, Asia and Akino. Well girls it looks like you'll have to tell your teacher that Naruto won't be able to come in today, he's running a fever, 
Both Asia and Rainer gave the evil eye to Akino who looked down knowing that Naruto was sick because he went out searching for her. Okay but can we say goodbye before we leave? Rainer asked. Sophia nodded to their request before she realized that she was going to be late for work and had to rush off. The three girls entered the room to see that Naruto had fallen asleep already, so Asia and Rainer said a silent goodbye before leaving the room while Akino stepped forward and kissed Naruto's forehead. Naruto-kun I am sorry that you're got sick for me. As she turned to leave she heard Naruto mumble in a very soft voice as he was turning over to his side, don't worry Akino-chan I am here for you so you don't need to worry. Smiling Akino approached Naruto and fixed the cloth on his head before she left Naruto's room and joined the two girls downstairs before heading off to school. Time skip with Akino. Akino was now in her home study time and since she had done all of her work beforehand, which was when Rias walked up to her looking a little angry, Akino what happened last weekend. Akino looked away not being able to look at Rias, I don't want to talk about it Bushu, I just needed to get away for a while. Rias noticed the look on her face and decided to change the subject, so I heard from Asia and Rainer that Naruto is sick today, is he doing alright? Hi Bushu Naruto is just running a fever, Akino replied. Well then maybe we should go and check if he is alright. Rias got Akino to follow her as they went to the clubhouse and teleported to Naruto's house. At Naruto's house, Rias and Akino appeared in the place and went upstairs to check on Naruto. Once there they went upstairs to find Naruto still sleeping. Taking the towel off of his head Rias got it wet again and checked Naruto temperature feeling that his temperature was still very high. So placing the towel on his forehead she reached over and checked the time. TCH it isn't time for Naruto to take his medication yet but his temperature seems very hot. Walking downstairs she saw Akino standing by the stove in the kitchen. Akino what are you doing? Oh I am just cooking some chicken soup for Naruto-kun to have when he wakes up. He's sick and I don't want anything to happen to Naruto if he tries to cook something and he faints halfway. Rias nodded as she put on an apron to help Akino prepare the chicken noodle soup. When it was done Akino went upstairs to check on Naruto while Rias finished up the soup. Entering the room she took the towel off of Naruto's forehead and washed it in cold water before returning to Naruto and checking his temperature. Hum this is strange his temperature has not seemed to go down at all. His fever must be a strong one. She thought before kissing his forehead and placing the towel on his forehead before going downstairs to see Rias wiping her hands. So Akino are you ready to go? Akino nodded as the two of them teleported back to the clubhouse and returned just in time for their next class. Time skip a little later with Naruto. His alarm going off made Naruto wake up he groaned before he sat up on his bed the towel falling off of his head, pushing on the button to silent the clock before he got out of bed, using the walls as he support he made his way downstairs. Once there he saw the medicine on the table with a note, don't forget to reset the alarm just in case Rainer and Asia come home late, mom. Naruto smiled a little bit before the smell of something delicious entered his nose, approaching the microwave he found a bowl along with a message for him, eat this and think of us Naruto kun Rias and Akino. Naruto cracked a smile as he decided to eat something before getting his medicine, as he waited for the noodles to heat up he was starting to feel a little chilly so he dug into the room by the door and pulled out his scarf wrapping it around his neck just as the microwave was done heating the soup up. Taking it out Naruto settled down and quietly ate it surprised by the flavor of everything. Once he was done he took his medicine and brought a glass of water upstairs where he reset his alarm and went back to sleep but he was woken from his sleep by loud knocking at his door. Using his pillow he drowned out the noise of the door when suddenly a loud crash that sounded like the door getting broke down got him out of the bed. Using the walls as support he tried to bring forth his sacred gear since that was the closet thing to a weapon he had but the weight it added onto his arms made him fall to the ground which the intruder apparently heard as Naruto's vision began to blur. The last thing he remembered before blacking out from the strain on his body was a gruff looking man with a beard and black hair along with a muscular body, so you are the one Azazel talked about, the one who made the delicious buns that destroyed his and Akino's taste buds. Time skip. After school the entire orc decided to visit Naruto and check on how he was doing, when they reached the his house they found that the door was broken down, making the members crowd around the door before Kiba took the lead and led them them through the house. Kaneko went through he first floor before they proceeded upstairs to find Naruto's room empty the alarm going off, search the house find any trace of Naruto. 
Kaneko try your best to repair the door and make sure that Naruto's parents don't come into the house. Everyone nodded before going about their duties to look for any clues as to who may have kidnapped Naruto. Akino was looking around when she saw it. It was a black feather lying on the floor quickly picking it up she tried her best to hide it but Rainer and Rhea spotted her. Grabbing her hand they pulled it back to reveal her holding a black feather, making all three of them widen their eyes, T that is. It's a feather from the wings of a fallen angel, answered Rias who looked at Akino expecting an answer but Akino just couldn't and tears fell from her eyes. All right Bushu I'll tell you everything, Akino replied as she started her explanation. Over the weekends she ran away from her home because her father visited her, and in the end the topic switched over to her mother unable to take it Akino ran away from her home and stayed by the river bank until Naruto found her. Akino you do realize what this means right? Akino's eyes widened when she realized what happened, a fallen angel had kidnapped a devil and if this wasn't handled carefully then it could turn bad for both sides. Please Bushu give me a chance and I can fix things by getting Naruto back, Rias had to sigh before giving Akino permission to go after Naruto. Alright Akino I'll let you handle this and Rainer Rias turned to Rainer who nodded, go with Akino as backup and get Naruto back but be careful both of you and try your best to be quick I, I have a feeling that Naruto's fever isn't normal so he may be in danger as well. Both of them nodded before Akino used some sort of magic to trace the magic on the feather to the headquarters for the business district of the town. Walking in they could see one man scolding another, Barakil. What were you thinking of kidnapping the boy? B but you said that the other man face palmed himself sobbing could be heard. I know what I said but you didn't need to take it seriously I was just joking about it, suddenly turning to the two figures that just entered the building. A Azazel Sama, squeaked out Rainer but Akino steeled herself and calmly approached Azazel. Ah Akino Chan it's been a while since I've seen you and look at you. You've grown into quite the woman, Azazel complimented trying to lighten the mood but Akino right now was not in the mood to joke around. Azazel Sama I am afraid that I am not here to joke around, where is Naruto kun? Azazel nodded as he opened the door into the building and gestured to Akino, Rainer and Barakil to follow him. Rainer and Akino followed him but remained cautious in case of anything. Walking through the facility they came upon what looked like a lab before coming to something that looked like a medical facility, there they could see Naruto lying in one of the beds hooked up to a heart monitor, had a mask that was supplying him with oxygen and he was bandaged up as well. Naruto-kun, cried Rainer and Akino as they ran up to him and looked at Azazel and Barakil wanting an answer for what happened to him. Azazel sighed as he told them what happened. It all started when he made a joke about Naruto's ability to make delicious buns to Barakil and since Barakil didn't take it too well he went after Naruto which led to the both of them fighting, or rather it was just Barakil beating up Naruto since he wasn't able to fight due to the influence of the medication and thankfully Azazel was able to stop Barakil from delivering the final blow to Naruto. Once they got him to this facility, they checked him over and found out that he had an advanced case of slime sickness which was an incredibly rare sickness to receive. The symptoms of a slime sickness were very similar to a human fever in which the person's temperature would rise up but all similarities stopped there as if it wasn't taken care of then there was a chance that the person could become a slime but Naruto's case was way too fast as usually the process took a while but apparently Naruto had been exposed to high amount of heat and water. Thankfully the fallen angel's medical facility had the medicine they needed to take care of such a sickness as part of Naruto's structure was beginning to turn into slime but there was nothing to worry as they injected him with the medication before his body became a slime so now all they needed to do was wait for him to recover from his injuries and wake up. Both Akino and Rainer nodded before Azazel called Rainer out for the moment to have a private discussion while Azazel also got Barakil to shoo leaving Akino alone with Naruto. With Rainer and Azazel. They were standing outside the room and Rainer was shaking a little in her knees wondering what her precious leader wanted to talk about to her. So Rainer Chan you've become a devil have you? Rainer hesitantly nodded. And you and that boy have something special don't you? Rainer blushed when Azazel said that affirming his suspicions. Well it pains me to see you go but if you truly love him and were willing to sacrifice that much for him then maybe there can be hope for even better relationships among the three races huh? What happened to Kalawarner? Donaseek I thought you were just supposed to observe him and not kill him. That is correct but Kalawarner had other plans and she forced me to do it. Azazel could see the pain in Rainer's eyes and he apologized for bringing up those painful memories. 
Sorry for bringing that up but why don't we celebrate by having a drink for you being a fallen fallen angel. Rainair had to laugh at his antics still she accepted his invitation since she was hoping to get something for Naruto. With Akino, she called Rias and told her part of what happened and now Naruto was safe but he may need a few days to recover from the slime sickness. She also informed Rias that they should not attempt to teleport to their location. Once she hung up she poured herself a glass of water and sat down lacing her hands with Naruto's as she slowly drank her water while the sound of beeps were going off in the room. A Ak Akino. Akino quickly shot up to see that Naruto had weakly opened his eyes. Naruto kun. Akino grasped Naruto's hand and held it close to her face. I am so glad that you're okay. Naruto brought his other hand about and slipped something into Akino's hand. Taking his hand off of hers she saw that he handed her a damaged locket. Opening it she saw a small picture of a younger her in the arms of Barakil who was also holding onto her mother. Why your father still loves you Akino even after all those years of you hating him. Akino threw the locket to the side before walking out but not before she turned to Naruto. That man is no father of mine. That was what she said before she left the room. Naruto closed his eyes and nearly feel asleep again but he managed to stay conscious long enough to retrieve the locket from the corner of the room before returning to his bed and falling asleep again. Hours later, Akino and Rainer had left the building trusting Azazel enough to watch over Naruto until he was well and fit to move on his own again. In the middle of the night when Naruto was feeling much better he was hungry and wanted something to eat so he was about to get out of bed to go and get something before he noticed the food on a table by the side with a note from Rainer, just in case, Rainer. Naruto took the food and started to eat which was when the door to the room opened, in stepped the man from the cafe, why you you're that man from the other day. The man simply laughed, yeah let me introduce myself, I am Azazel current leader of the fallen angels. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard Azazel say that but he made no move to protect himself which made Azazel raise an eyebrow. Oh you're not going to defend yourself from the terrible fallen angel that wants to get rid of you and destroy all devils before taking over the world. Silence reigned in the room for a moment before the two of them burst into laughter. Wiping a tear away Azazel pulled a chair up and sat next to Naruto who calmed down and continued eating his meal. Well now that you're awake Naruto I would like to apologize on behalf of Barakil. Barakil. Azazel nodded. Yes he attacked you because of a joke I told him. So Barakil san isn't the joking type as he. Azazel had to laugh. Look at you Naruto just a few hours ago you were going to become a slime and now you're cracking jokes like nothing had ever happened. Naruto paused in his laughter when Azazel said that he may have turned into a slime. But don't worry Naruto you're going to be safe thanks to the medicine that we injected in you so just relax. Naruto nodded as he continued to eat his food. You know Naruto I am surprised by you. Hum why is that Azazel Sama? Well most of the time when devils hear of fallen angels they usually jump to defend yourself is it because of Rainer? Naruto nodded his head before he stopped for the moment. Azazel Sama if you don't mind me asking why does Akino hate her father? Azazel sighed as he brushed his hand through his hair. I knew that you were going to ask that and before I tell you I want to know what are you going to do once you know. Azazel looked into Naruto's eye to make sure that he wasn't lying. I I want to help the both of them through it. I've seen the pain in Akino's eyes and when I fought Barakil before I thought I saw the pain that Akino had as well and this he opened the locket to reveal the loving family picture of Akino her father and mother, tells me that it wasn't always like that I want to help Akino. And why do you want to do so? If you don't mind me asking Naruto. Well in all honesty I don't have parents I was adopted into my family so for most of my life I've lived as an orphan and I've seen Akino she is holding on to a lot of pain and I want to help her as a friend. Naruto proclaimed getting a chuckle out of Azazel. Very well then Naruto I'll tell you the entire story as I play my own part in this tale. Naruto nodded as he listened to what Azazel had to say. Well a time ago. Barakil's and Akino's relationship was very much like a daughter and father's was supposed to be but that all changed when one day I called Barakil back to base leaving just Akino and her mother Shuri alone at their home. I wished that I could change what happened that day I truly do. Azazel looked down and bad memories came up. Shuri was originally a Miko from a very well-known shrine and so her marriage with Barakil wasn't taken very well with them. 
They thought that she had been brainwashed by Barakil and so they sent assassins after Barakil to get her back they were defeated by Barakil but some still held a grudge against him and on the day that I called him back people who were against Barakil was sent to their home and it was there that Shuri was killed in defending Akino, and ever since that day Akino has hated us for the death of Shuri, Azazel had to wipe a tear away from his eyes. I I see, it must have been tough for Akino, Azazel nodded. Yes but thankfully Rias was there for her, now why don't we get you some fresh air? Azazel asked standing up and heading towards the door making Naruto follow him as well. Outside, both Naruto and Azazel had a cup of coffee in their hands, so Azazel-san why do the three races hate each other? Azazel eyes widened before he laughed, I don't know how to explain that Naruto you'll have to find the answer for yourself as it isn't black and white but I guess you could say that we're just like you humans in fact everything has flaws no matter how much we don't want to admit it. I guess so, Naruto replied before he headed back to the medical bay with Azazel to get some rest. Time skip, Naruto had been discharged from the fallen angel's medical bay and went back home but Azazel did say that he could visit whenever he wanted. So now Azazel was working in his lab when he got a message saying that Naruto was here to see him, sure let him in, Azazel replied as he continued working on his new project. The door to his lab opened, hey there Naruto how is your day going? But when Azazel turned behind he saw not Naruto but rather it was a man with a swirl mask in robes and a giant fan on his back, who are you? I am a servant of the Jubi and my master says that your death will allow him to take over this world much easier and since I was using the boy's image they will blame the devils and war between you two will ensure devastation, the mysterious man drew the fan and charged at Azazel who made a light spear to defend himself. Outside at the main desk, Naruto along with Akino and Rainer walked into the office, oh Naruto I thought that you just went in. Huh, suddenly the wall behind them crashed open as Azazel was thrown backwards into Naruto. Ow, oh right could you please lock down the building. His secretary nodded as the shutters behind the girls closed while Naruto helped Azazel up and the masked man stepped out into the open. Akino and Rainer prepared for battle throwing spells at the man however their attacks simply passed through the man who just waltzed up to Naruto and grasped his neck. My master will be able to use your power but before anything else could be said Barakil jumped out and slashed at the man tearing off a bit of his clothes and dropping Naruto in the process. The man looked at his torn sleeve with interest before turning his attention back onto the crowd before him, such nuisances will be taken care of, Shinra Tensai. His move blew everyone backwards knocking their senses about, the masked man now walked up to Azazel and pointed a sword at Azazel, now die. However before the blade could enter Azazel's heart Naruto used his sacred gear and wrapped a beam-like whip around the blade, now get him. Barakil. Akino and Rainer jumped him aiming their attacks to kill but their attacks just went through him again, damn. They cursed as the man suddenly shifted position knocking Barakil into a wall, slamming Rainer into the ground and kneeing Naruto in the gut before coming up to Akino and grasping her neck tightly. Maybe I should start with you first, using his feet he flipped up the light spear on the ground belonging to Barakil and thrust it forward. Akino closed her eyes waiting for the impact but it never came as Barakil stood by her side he was holding onto the blade of the light spear. I failed my family once and I will not let it happen again. Barakil declared bringing his other hand down and delivering a chop to the masked mons wrist making him drop the light spear. The masked man cursed before he brought he called his sword to his side and stabbed Barakil in the gut, you have given me far too much trouble so now see your greatest fear. The masked man casted Tsukuyomi on him but in the process he unknowingly also caught Akino in it. Within the Tsukuyomi world, Barakil was crying out as he was held in place and watched as Shuri was killed before his eyes over and over again, him perhaps we should add to the pain. The masked man made another manifestation of Akino appear besides Shuri and Barakil had to watch as the both of them were killed. Akino stood by and saw everything she heard Barakil cry out in despair as he begged the masked man to let them go and take him instead. She wanted to block out the cries of Barakil but it was too loud and watching her mother get killed before her eyes was too much and she transformed into her priestess of thunder form but this time she radiated pure hatred. Die, she commanded bringing down black lightning onto the masked man breaking his Tsukuyomi on the both of them. Outside. The masked man was suddenly thrown back as Akino walked in front of him hatred in her eyes and it also radiated off of her form, 
The masked man stunned by what had happened was unable to pick himself up when suddenly Akino jumped forward and brought her feet down on the monk's body and began to lay the beat down on him. Barakil san are you alright? Naruto asked making Barakil nod his head before he looked and saw Akino beating down on the masked man. Akino. He cried out but was stopped by Naruto. Hey Barakil san wait what is going on with Akino? She's entered her berserker mode if we don't stop her she could turn her attention on us and view us as a threat. Naruto nodded when suddenly the masked man retreated and Akino turned her attention on them. Naruto quickly transform and force your energy outwards. Nexus told him making Naruto nod and transformed, forcing his energy out he made the area that he, Barakil and Akino were in light up and it engulfed them entirely. When the light faded they saw they were in a completely different place but Akino didn't care she charged at Nexus pushing him back backwards. Akino, stop it this isn't you, Nexus argued trying to get to her back to earth but Akino wasn't listening as she easily lifted Nexus off the ground and tossed him crashing to the side when Nexus picked himself up he had to roll out of the way as Akino brought thunder down on him. Damn it with the lightning Akino is keeping me at a distance, wait. Stopping mid-roll Nexus made a shield above him and held his position. Barakil San ill hold her attention on me she doesn't seem to target you so you'll just have to get her to calm down, Barakil nodded and carefully approached Akino. Akino hearing her name being called Akino turned to see Barakil approach her and Barakil could see that there were tears in her eyes. T2 San, she cried out stopping the torrent of lighting and turning back into her normal priestess of thunder mode and collapsing into the arms of her father. In the distance, Nexus was in a smoking crater on the verge of unconsciousness the area around them was slowly starting to fade away but before Nexus fainted he could have sworn he saw a woman that looked like an older version of Akino and she seemed to be talking to both Akino and Barakil. Thanks for watching.